Hello, Internet. Good morning and welcome to the final day three of senior photography with Kirk Volklain right here on Creative Live. My name is Lorraine Lobdell. I will be your host today along with Kathy J. How are you, darling? Good morning. I am doing great, darling. What's going on, sugar? <laughs> um, I like talking like with a little bit of Southern drawl this week I with like Kirk. I love it. It's really fun. <laughs> it's, really, it's been such a great week. It's been so much fun. Energy. We've just had such a great time here, and we're just so glad that you are all joining us right now. Day three. I can't day believe we're on day three already. It's gone like How does a that happen? And I. Yeah. Yeah. Kirk's energy has just been cruising. We've had an amazing in-studio audience and we've had so much fun in the chat rooms with all of you too absolutely all right so obviously we are having a little a bit of pre-show right now while we're testing our audio we have about eight more minutes of that pre-show while we're doing so those of you who are already in the chat rooms because you guys have been so fantastic all week if you could right now just give us a shout out let us know where you're joining us from around the world and let us know if you can see us and hear us clearly while we test everything out right now that's right. And while we are, while you're telling us where you're joining us from, I will be checking the live tab first. We're going to introduce our studio and studio audience for you. Um, we have an amazing group of five students. Part of the magic is getting the right chemistry of the right people at the right time. And this is one of those groups that's just bringing it this week. Um, so if you all could tell us where you're joining us from again, where we can find you online and what you're most excited about day three, maybe who ironed your clothes this morning. <laughs> and while, you, while you're doing that, I'm gonna go check the intertube. Awesome. All right. I'll see you in a minute, Kathy right. Okay, uh, my name is Paulo Girdal. I'm originally from Brazil, and I live in Fort Lauderdale since like uh, 1999. This experience first is Amazing. If, if one day you have a chance to make a video and be part of Create Live, it's, it's an amazing experience. I met so many f great people here. Uh, we decided like, to share a room. In this case, I was talking earlier here that we decided to share a room because it would be a little cheaper. And, uh, and, and today, yesterday, we, I, I was complaining that, like, uh, gosh, he got ready and didn't even wake me up. And, and today, like, uh, he asked, you want to iron your clothes? So he ironed my clothes. Like, I was so cool of him. Like, best, best, best <laughs> roommate ever. Okay? Yeah, but uh, if you want awesome. to find me on Facebook, uh, just go to Paolo Photography. Like, in Facebook, Paolo Photography, that's my, my Facebook. And uh, today, what I expect from Kirk is like a, not, nothing less than the last today. It was amazing already today. And today, you're going to see how everything's come together. Is, is amazing. Do not get out of your seat because it is cool. That's awesome. Thank you so much, Paulo. Um, my name is Leroy Tatami uh, from Tatami Design and Photography. You can find us on Facebook at uh, Tatami Design and Photography or Seniors by Tatami Design and Photography. Uh, we're also on Instagram with Tatami DMP. Feel free to follow us. Uh, um, thank you for the shout out. You know, I'm not opening up a dry cleaner, so don't expect me to <laughs> iron everybody's clothes. Just, you know. Um, today is just going to be an awesome day. Like, workflow is something that I really feel like I struggle with. My wife's starting to let the reins go a little bit, so she lets me do a little more editing. So hopefully after today, she'll let the reins go a little bit more, and I'll be able to do a lot more editing. I'm looking forward to it. Don't you dare get out of your seat. You better keep your eyes glued on that computer screen the whole time because you don't want to miss a thing. Fantastic. Good morning, Kim. Hi, I'm Kim Griffin. I'm from Bel Air, Maryland. I um, have had a wonderful time here. The whole staff here at Creative Live has been wonderful. They've made everything great. Um, my fellow students have been wonderful, had a great time, have learned so much. Um, I can be found at flawlessphotos.net. I'm also on Facebook, and photos is F-O-T-O-S. Had to be a little different. Um, Today is really important to me about workflow. Don't leave your seat and then rewatch it again once or twice. Everybody's in for a blast today. That's awesome. And I'm Monica from Family Affair Photography based in Tacoma, Washington. And um, we're found at familyaffairphotography.com and on Facebook, Family Affair Photography. And for today, I'm looking forward to the workflow. I had seen one little clip um, that Kirk had done once before on how to do skin tones and I realized I sent him an unedited photo so I didn't use his practice but 
it cut my editing time down considerably with that one little tip. So if that one little tip can do cut down your time, I can imagine what he's going to be showing us will get me home or get me off the computer faster, which I really want. Fantastic. So I'm, to that. I'm Russell Hay, uh, originally from Houma, Louisiana. Um, I currently live here in Seattle. Um, and uh, you can find me online, Facebook, Russell Hay Photography, uh, and also on Twitter at Russell Hay. Um, the thing that I'm looking forward to today is I did a shoot last night and I edited three photos that took me way longer than they probably should have. Um, and so I'm just looking, uh, like um, Monica said, for a way to speed that up. Um, and granted, I was watching TV while doing it. That's fine. But um, being able to do that fast um, and get through way more photos than three in an evening. I like that. I like that you're setting a goal for yourself and already <laughs> applying everything you're learning every evening while you go back and wait for the, coming back to class the next day. It's so cool. All right, Kathy J. In addition to these fabulous people here in our in studio audience, who else is joining us out there in the internet world? Oh, we've got people joining us in places that I'm jealous that you are, like the Cayman Islands. I really? Would, I would be oh. down with being there right now. So enjoy your day there. Thank you for joining us. Good evening, Webby Boy in Belgium. Hello, Photographics Miami in Miami. I would also be down with being in South Beach right now. Um, R. Hellman 71 says hi from Nashville, Tennessee. Mrs. Tadme, a shout out from Lake Charles, Louisiana. And we've got Tanya Pick joining us from Bowling Green. And Apocalypse, hello in Dublin. Happy evening there, too, I'm guessing. So many more. Uh, Chris Walden from Nixon, Missouri. C. Goose from San Antonio, Texas. And Goalie Mom 95 is ready, set, and go in South Florida. That is awesome. We love having a huge global community. Keep continuing to let us know where you're joining us for, throughout the day because we will be sure to give you a shout out whenever we can. Right now, I want to take a moment to bring up one of the students so you guys can get to know them a little bit better. And so, Monica, I asked you a little while ago if you wouldn't mind jumping on up this morning and letting me ask you a couple questions on the air. Sure. Cool. All right, so this is the second time you have been to Creative Live, and you are yes. kind of a local to the Seattle area, mm -hmm. and you have a familyaffair.com. That's your photography business. Correct. How long have you been a photographer? Um, about 10 years now, actually. Excellent. So it's been a while, but and it kind of accident. <laughs> what is your most favorite thing about photography? Oh, wow. Um, just the emotion of the day you know, for weddings, because that's mostly what we do. So um, just the emotion, you know, the father's speeches and the tears and the hugs and all that stuff. The real and, life yeah. moments. That's and I fabulous. just really want to get into seniors too, because of yeah. their excitement and zest for life. So being, um, so you have watched Creative Life for how long? Probably about a year and a half. Okay, and so you've been watching and learning along the journey, Definitely. and I'm sure you've been able to apply a lot of those things from all of different classes to your own photography business. What has it been like to be actually here in the in-studio audience learning from Kirk firsthand? Has it given you a different edge and a different learning capacity that you're able to apply to your business? Being here um, versus online, it just, well, of course, you get the full attention of the instructor, or the instructor has his full attention. It feels like on you, even though it's not. I mean, we've got the whole audience here. Mm -hmm. um, it's just the energy here is 10 times what you get on the, the internet. I mean, if the internet feels like high energy there, it's nothing like what you're getting here. Cool. I mean, it's just. You, you get it more, well, absorb you, more. And you are part of that energy too because you've been so fantastic. This is the second time you've been here. I know the first time you were here with um, Clay Blackmore a few okay. months or a few weeks ago and you he had you guys assisting, crawling on the ground, holding, <laughs> holding reflectors. Light, lighter, yeah. And again with Kirk, you also were holding up uh, backdrops yesterday. You guys were doing all sorts of work. So having that hands on, you guys were bringing the energy and that are such a big part of this. So we're glad that you submitted a video. And is it hard to submit a video? Tell everybody out there how no, hard it is. No, not at all. Just get a video. Um, my daughter did my first one with me. She held the video, a little uh, flip cam. 
held it up for me. I did my little spiel. Um, this video that we did for Kirk, my husband kind of scripted one for me, which was kind of, we had a little fun with it. Um, but no, it's, it's very easy. Just tell them why you want to be here and show a little of your personality. All right, that's it. We just want to know who you are, why you want to be here, and what class you're interested in participating in. Yep, and it's really easy. Thank you. So glad and you're worth part. It. <laughs> so glad you're part of this experience. And again, thank you for coming up and, thank and being you, a part Lorette. of this. Of course, sweetheart. <laughs> <laughs> all right, you guys. So it is 9 a.m. Pacific time, and for all of these, all, all of those of you joining us from around the world, we just want to say welcome. And if this is your first time joining, or maybe you are a regular at Creative Live and have been watching for a year and a half like Monica here. We just want to say thank you for continuing to be a part of our community. But right now it is time to get started with day three. It's the final day of Kirk Volklain's uh, senior photography class. And so what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to take you on a very quick tutorial of how to watch today's class, how to ask questions and chat, and how to purchase the course videos. Of course, there's only one place to watch Creative Live, and that's creativelive.com slash live. No matter what you are doing right now, or if it's on a different time zone tonight, you can take Kirk along with you and continue learning because our feed works on your iPad, iPhone, and all Android smart devices. All right, so anywhere on our website, you can watch Creative Live live during the live event. How to do that is just click on the watch green, uh, the green watch button, which is on the top left hand corner of anywhere on our website. When you click, or, and when you click that, you'll see a drop down menu of different classes that you can watch and just select the class that you would like to watch. Of course, you're here to watch senior photography, so I highly recommend clicking on that. Below the video feed, you can choose to purchase the course at any time. During the live event, it is $99. However, at the end of the live event today, it goes up to $149. On the left-hand side, underneath the video, you will see a green button to participate in the global uh, community live and also ask your questions to Kirk via Kathy J and I. And how you do that is just click the um, chat live with class participants button. And when you do that, that's going to open a new browser window with three tabs across the top. And we're going to take a quick look at those. The first one is the Creative Live chat room. And this is a chat room for all of you out there to talk about everything on topic to what we're learning today. You guys all have a wealth of knowledge. So those of you who have been here all three days of this class can share with others what they missed out on the first two days if they're just joining in on the third day. And so we just really encourage you to help each other and learn along the journey. The second tab is the Creative Cues chat room. This is the chat room specifically just for questions for Kirk today. We're asking for on-topic questions. Kathy J and I will grab those questions through our off-screen chat moderators who are working behind the scenes, and we will throw those out to Kirk as soon as we can throughout the day. There's no need to ask your questions more than once because we see your questions, they're in a queue, and we will get to them as soon as we can. And the last tab right there you're going to see is the Creative Lounge. Hello, loungers. This is a really fun chat room for all off-topic conversations. This is where you can get to know your community, share each other's portfolios, and encourage each other throughout your photographic journeys. You can even talk about all things Southern and all things about bacon. I couldn't help talking about bacon again. <laughs> there is also one other, or a couple other ways you can interact with your community online here, and that is through our Facebook page, uh, which is facebook.com slash creative live. Again, our off-screen chat moderators are grabbing questions and moderating the, there, so when they see a question that you post there, they will be sure to throw it over to Kathy J and I to ask Kirk. You can also ask questions via Twitter throughout the day. Just be sure to use the hashtag Kirk Live. All right, for those of you out there who are new, just joining us for the first time, how Creative Live works is that we air this broadcast free live to around the world, and we try to reach as many people as possible during that time. We know a lot of you are not able to watch the entire thing um, straight through. You might have to go to work, or you have errands to run, or you might even be living in a different time zone. For those of you who this fits your lifestyle, we have a rebroadcast at the end of the live event so that you are able to watch and participate as well. 
Uh, at any time you choose to purchase the course, you can get all three days of the course materials for $149. And you can have access to all three days at any time in the future with that. However, during the live event, if you purchase it while we are actually airing live, which ends at the end of today, which is 9 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, it is $99. So we highly encourage you to grab that deal before the price goes up at the end. All right, next we're gonna take a look at the course page. And when you go to the course page there, you'll see lots of different options. The first option is to enroll for free. Enrolling allows you to have all the latest news and updates on this course, including when the rebroadcast starts. To the left of that enroll button, you'll see a buy button. You can also purchase the course for the live event price of $99 straight from the course page. And a little bit further down the page, you'll see bonus materials that are included with the purchase of the course. And Kirk is giving away his Photoshop actions that he'll be working on today, in addition to an amazing walkthrough uh, video of how to actually retouch senior portraits. So those are amazing bonuses that are included with the purchase of this course. And below that, you will see all the course videos. We have it sectioned out into bite-sized chunks so you can uh, relearn along the journey as much as you want at your own pace. There's a couple ways you can do that. You can download the videos in low res or HD format, or you can also stream live from the Creative Live website. That makes it really easy for everyone out there. All right, everybody, that is it for the tutorial. And it is my pleasure to welcome back for day three to the Creative Live studio, Kirk McLean. High five. Appreciate it. Yes, Thank welcome you very, very back. Much. I appreciate it. Again, I appreciate being here on the third day. Thank you all for sticking it out with me, coming all the way back to this event. Um, we are going to have a lot of fun today, okay? I have, let me think, all kinds of fun stuff to talk about and to do. First of all, right off the bat, we are going to just review really fast what's going to happen today as far as the, the whole workflow scene. The other thing is I want to add something to the list. We kind of signed out last night and said, think about it. If you can come up with something, it has been asked multiple times. So I'm going to put it on the list, and that is proofs on the list. So because the, pr the making of those proofs happens in this stage. I did not bring a proof book with me, but I will show you what the images look like. And then you're going to get it. You're going to say, oh, I see what he means when he says proofs. So that's something I wanted to add there. And so since y'all are chatting it up right now online, if there's something else as I go through this list that y'all want to add, I got room for maybe two or three spots. If y'all want to throw some things on the list, I will be happy to throw those things on the list. The things, you know, we're going to saturation. When you look at my images, you look at this one on the wall here, and you look at the one of the, the senior boy underneath the water, and some of the images that you've seen me po uh, post on the keynotes. People tell me all the time how colorful my images are. Well, you know, how do you do that, Kirk? Well, we're going to talk about that. Um, how long does it take you to retouch? This was something that when we were uh, at dinner last night, y'all kept asking that. Huh? Well, how long? It takes me so long. Russell tipped on it today. I watched TV and did three images. Well, how many images did I shoot yesterday? Did y'all add it up? It was around, I don't know. It was, well, there was six and six, and then there was the third girl, and it was some on the roof. And so I don't know. It was 20-something images. Oh, yeah. Well, I, I, Russell, got up this morning before I came here and retouched all of them. <laughs> so they're, they're all done. But I'm going to show you how I did that. Um, Someone asked about retouching and what do you do with high key. I think that also reminds me of some of the images you might be seeing on my Facebook page, um, or you may see them also on my website, kvphoto.com, where the, the images is white, 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 white. The subject is white, 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 white. And then there's just a little hint of detail in that. It's usually a headshot. And so I get that question a lot. How do you do it? Well, we're going to show you. Um, my settings for uploading and for printing, we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about what happens when it's too grainy. How come when I'm sending stuff to the lab or whatever, having it print, it seemed to be too grainy. And eyes. This to me is very, very critical to the whole process, showing exactly how I retouch eyes and what I do. 
Um, it's a little trick, a little secret, if you will, about that. It, many times, if you want to know what a photographer did, how they lit the scene, zoom in on the eyes. Because it'll show you, a lot of times, you can see the photographer in the eyes mm -hmm. if it's done really good. Well, the problem with that little trick that I just told you about is that in my case, most all of the time, the eyes are re retouched and enhanced, and sometimes I move the catch light around and all kinds of things, so you really can't do that with my stuff. I get people who email me and, and message me and go, well, look, I was looking at the eyes, and I noticed you always have the box or the light here. It's like, well, the problem is that that could have been fake, you know, but I want it to look real, but it could have been fake. Um, anyway, so we're going to talk about that. Um, we're going to talk about um, the best print vendors uh, online. Uh, excuse me, my ordering, ordering catalog that I showed y'all uh, was that, yes, the first day I showed it to you and how I actually make one of those, uh, what the parts for the customer. And then oh, I just added that to the list, proofs, okay? Um, before, you want to add some stuff now or? We did have a, um, someone asked about like formatting for Facebook and social media. Does that fit in workflow? Oh, that's sort of gonna happen mm. about, about, let me think, right here. Okay. I think. Yeah. Exporting settings. Oh, yeah. yeah. Set yeah. right on. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Monica, wow. Okay. Sorry. I, you mentioned <laughs> Bridge, so, and I use Lightroom. So, Bridge versus, yeah, did you buddy. have that? Or were we are, you gonna I don't even have to that? write it down. It's one of my key points we're going to talk oh, about today. Oh, is it? Today. Okay, because yes, I'm real interested in Bridge. You were going to teach us how to do our own, write our own actions? Yes, don't even have to write it down. We're going to, we're going oh, to, we're going to go okay. through the whole action palette and really, really, really hopefully talk about actions. Great. Mm -hmm. Paolo? Yes, we're talking about some detail, like uh, when on your, and I see it in your website, uh, when on your prints or proofs or album, when does your logo come up? It's, like it's, a, because you, you, you have your logo, as a, uh, I, I saw in one of your advertisements, as your signature. It's something mm -hmm. that, like, you know what, you don't want me taking out of my logo from your print. It's my signature, mm -hmm. almost like a, some a famous painter. Uh -huh. So when do you put or when you don't put or this kind of stuff? Um, I, will, I will just answer that right now. Okay. Um, the, the advertisement, the senior brochure that I showed on the fir first day, I made a comment about that, yeah. about how the KV is proof that it is a real Kirk Vauclain print, okay? And that is, mm -hmm. that is a way of me handling the, well, I don't want that KV on the bottom uh, of, of, my, of my wallets. It's kind of like, you know, going into a department store and saying, you know, I want a Nike shoe, but I don't want that check on the side. It, it doesn't work like that. Nike doesn't sell shoes without the check on the side. It's what they do, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's the same thing. And so my way of handling that was to say, well, if you want an authentic Kirk Vauclain print, it's got to have that little KV on it. And it only happens on the wallets. I don't do that on any of the larger prints or 8 by 10s 5 by 7s anything like that. However, anything that you hang on the wall, except for 11 by 14s so 16 by 20 and larger, I actually physically hand sign. And I do that, and that's the next question the internet's asking right now, is what do you sign your print with? Okay, well, all mm -hmm. I did, you go to Office Depot uh, um, and Office Max or any one of those office -y type stores, and they make a Sharpie gold. There's a Sharpie gold pen, and I bought that, and boom, it signs prints really nice-like, and it's in gold. And they make a silver one, too, if you prefer the silver color. So. A couple technique questions, like sharpening, if you could talk about, throw okay. that in. Um, also, how long you spend on each image. Okay. How long? Yep. We yep. got that already. All right. And major retouching, like uh, changing uh, shape of arms and body mm -hmm. weight. That's what we'll call that liquify. Oh, yeah. All right. Good. Uh, watermark logos. Uh, how do I do it is the question, or why? Or Will you be covering that in terms of exporting settings? No, I, I mean, typically what I do with my watermark type thing, like if I'm putting something on Facebook, or, or maybe if I'm making a sticky album, or mm -hmm. Animoto, or one of those types of things, and it needs to have my watermark on it, I, here's the deal with that. I, I am kind of not anti-watermark, I understand why it's done. But there, it's only time I do that is if it's, I'm, I'm throwing a teaser out there, you know, like I'm, 
I'm putting one image on Facebook, well, it's going to have that watermark on it, okay? But it's not going to go across the face or anything silly like that. But the way I make it, I just, when we talk about creating an action, that'll, you'll get it. You'll, you'll kind of say, oh, well, I can make that part of an action and then just include that as part of my workflow is running the action at some stage. Perfect. So, yeah, it's kind of going to be, it's not going to be talked about specifically, but around the block. Yeah. Okay, sounds good. And good. We're, getting, we're getting a lot of questions. One characteristic, I think, of your work is the just amazing color. Some mm -hmm. people want to know right here. how you are the color. Yep, there you go. Okay, so we're going to be covering sure. that. One second. Got it? Um, yeah, and just a, a reminder to everyone who's asking about packaging, we talked about that in detail on day one. Um, Kirk had a really great overview of packaging versus a la carte and his specific way of clustering images. So uh, you want to check out day one for that. All right, good deal. Paolo, another question? It's just about the, the, word, the word workflow for me is like a, uh, are you going to talk about, uh, I know that you're going to show step by step what you do, but like uh, for who is learning or is starting now, uh, what is your suggestion for, because normally you automate yourself to do the same step over and over yes. and over. So you, if you do the skinning first, then you, you sharpen your eyes. Yes. You never sharpen your eyes before your skin. You always automate yourself to do step well, by step. I'm gonna show you what you need to do to force yourself to work. Step by step. A step by step by step system. Okay. Yes, definitely we're talking about cool. that. Okay, so another thing I thought we would do is just for a moment uh, review yesterday just as a little bit. And so one of the things we talk, talked about was all of the different equipment that I used and why I used that equipment. Um, another thing we did was talk, talk about was hitting the five points of the face with light. Those five points of the face was the forehead, down the nose, the cheeks, and the chin. And I don't know if you remember that, but I, I said that if, if the face is turned to the right, my right, then the main light is going to be on the right. Wherever the nose goes, that's typically where that main light is going to be. If I pose them where, my, where the, uh, my face is turned to the left, my left, then the main light is going to be on this side. And, and I kind of look at that. If the subject is, is laying down and the nose is more upward, then that is where that main light is going to come from, more upward. So, you know, I'm, I'm doing things like that. Now, the second I do all make all those rules, I hope you saw me yesterday break them. And, and that's one of the things. A um, uh, bunch of friends of mine get together all the time and we talk about that concept that, you know, you almost have to know the rules, be proficient at the rules, and then you get to break the rules. So don't break the rules because you don't know the rules. Break the rules because you know what you're doing. And as a result, that is what adds these images, these interesting images that break the rules and at the same time work. So that was a little bit as far as light hitting the face. We talked about the Tuesday rule, and it's, it's one of my favorites. I'll come back all the way to the front so you can see what I'm talking about. If a subject is straight on, on the scene, and it's boring to look at because all, everything that they have two of, two feet, two knees, hips, uh, elbows, shoulders, hands, eyes, they're all across the board on the same plane. But to make it more interesting, you could bend one knee, which then causes the hip to shift. Now the, the knees are at a different angle, then you could cause the shoulders to shift. You could put one hand high, one hand low, tip the head one way. Now, of course, that's not good for guy poses, but that's good for girl poses. And we did talk about that as far as guy poses and girl poses. Guys always need to look masculine. That means the head needs to tip towards the shoulder that is the farthest from the camera. Whereas a girl can go both ways. A girl can be masculine or a girl can be feminine, which is where the head tips to the shoulder that's the closest to the camera. And so we talked a little bit about that. Toosie rule, studio photography. We, we talked about that yesterday, about the right way to light someone and the wrong way to light someone. And I showed some right techniques and some wrong techniques, and we had a good time doing that. We went on the roof and did natural light photography. And I, I, would, may, I, would, I would like to say that the roof images are surprisingly very good. I just did not expect them to come out looking that good, and they really are kind of cool stuff. Um, I didn't shoot a whole lot up there because in real life, I would not have shot a whole bunch up there. It would have been maybe two or three images, but the ones that I did, pretty slick. You're going to see them here in a little while. Uh, probably during the second segment, we're going to start showing the images from yesterday. Anyway, and then we talked about underwater photography, like you see the guy there. Um, 
One of the little tricks I threw at everybody because I don't want to see you get in debt. I do not want to see you run out there and hock the world up so that you can do underwater photography and then in your area figure out, oops, it's not selling, was that maybe to get an inexpensive camera, a little point and shoot type camera that is already underwater capable. If you do a couple of images like that with some models or your kids or, or something, Put them out there, see if it's interesting, see if people want it. If they do, maybe you could upgrade and get maybe like a Canon G series camera with a housing. Get a little bit better images. If it starts paying for itself, it starts being something that more and more people want, they're coming in, they're wanting wall portraits, okay. Then let's move up to the Canon uh, SLR type camera uh, with a housing that you purchase, whether whether that's, uh, there's a ton of them, Icolite, Aquatech, there's a, just a bunch of housings out there. Get that housing, but you know, that's gonna be expensive. I'm just, I don't want you to be shocked when you start looking in that and shopping it, but don't, don't just dive in unless Bill, Bill, my buddy Bill Gates, do it. Get the good one, he can afford it, okay? But if you're like a regular Joe Blow photographer, okay, then, then you know, one step at a time. Baby steps, man, baby steps. All right, so those were some of the things that we talked about yesterday, a bit of a review. As a reminder, the reason I wanted to review all that was because, again, I'm not gonna go all the way back to the first day, but the first day was marketing, okay? We had to have that in place. We had to get people in the door before we could ever take their picture, before we ever could light them, before we ever could pose them, before we could ever do all this stuff. Once we get them coming in, now we can do all the magic that we did and learned yesterday. And I think what we did yesterday is extremely important. Do not misunderstand what I'm about to show you today. Today is fun, don't get me wrong. I love what happens today as much, as much as what I did yesterday. As much as I love taking the picture, I absolutely love doing the retouching. In fact, it's sort of like two guys that live inside of me. There's the retouching guy, and, and there's, the, there's the photography guy. And while, it's so funny, y'all, while I'm photographing, the retouching guy's going, hurry up, H hurry up, I wanna, go I wanna go make this pretty, hurry up. And then while I'm retouching, the photographer's going, hurry up, we got another customer, come on, hurry up. And so, <laughs> they, these two guys are fighting, and anyway, it's just ugly, you wouldn't wanna see it, it's ugly. So yeah, once you have, once you have the marketing in place, and now you have customers coming in the door, now you gotta do something with all this stuff. You've gotta have some workflow. You've got to move them through the system so as to produce awesome images, okay? And this to me represents at least 40, maybe 45% of why my stuff looks the way it does. And I'm sure somebody out there in the internet world, because it, it, I experience it every time, they are probably somewhere saying, well, I saw what Kirk did yesterday and that's nothing special. And it's not. It's, it's just, it's regular photography. What you're about to see can happen today, that's when it gets special. So I, I, don't, I don't really care who takes the picture in the world, I don't care how fantastic a photographer they are. And I believe me, I am all about getting it on the chip. The better the exposure, the better the final product. The better the focus, the better the final product. The better the pose, the better the final product. Better, 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 better across the, word, across the world. But once you have the image on the chip, I don't care who you are, I can make it better in Photoshop. You can always be better. And, and that be better is what we're talking about today. That is workflow. And workflow, looked it up on Wikipedia, it said workflow consists of a sequence of connected steps where each step follows without delay or gap and ends just before the next step begins. It is a representation of a sequence of processes through which a piece of work passes from Initiation to completion, okay? So that's the entire process. Would you like to see it happen? Yes. yes. I assumed you did. Okay, watch the little dude on the left. That is straight out of the camera. 
And it's happening before your eyes. And just like that, he has been workflowed. Okay. End of class. And that's it. That's the class. It's just that simple. Yes, that's how fast I am. It's magic. <laughs> All you have to do is purchase this little device. Yes. <laughs> okay. I'm sure if you purchase the cores, they will. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Y'all do know I'm teasing. Okay. Want to see it again? Awesome. Watch the girl on the right. Straight out of the camera. And there she goes. Done. Cool? Very cool. All right. So what you just looked at was before and then after. OK? So I know, you're, you know you can't visualize that too good, but let me see if I can help you visualize that a little bit better. Here we go. There it is. Guy on the left is straight off the camera. Guy on the right is the finished part. OK? And then the girl, same thing. Girl on the left, straight off the camera. And look, that's, in my opinion, the one on the left, that's, that's pretty good photography. Good exposure, nice light in the eyes, um, you know, interesting pose. Now some, somebody out there says, oh, I right now, well, I prefer the one on the left. That's OK. That's, we talked about it yesterday. That's artistic expression. I prefer the one on the right. My customers mostly prefer the one on the right. I've noticed, um, I've had people send me messages. I've had people send me texts. I've had people, photographers mostly, send me uh, comments, emails, that type of thing that say, Kirk, your stuff is just looks so fake. And I'm, I'm sure it's being said right now in the chat rooms. Well, I don't know. His stuff is so fake looking. You know what? I'm not a doctor, OK? I am not a medical photographer. It is not my job to reproduce reality. That is not what I do. I do not photograph reality. I am not a reality photographer. I <laughs> am a fantasy photographer. That's what I do. I photograph people the way they think they look, not the way they really look. And we sort of alluded to that yesterday. People look in the mirror and they brush their teeth. They don't look at themselves. They look at their teeth. They comb their hair. They're looking at their hair. Rarely, when you look at yourself, do you look at yourself in a mirror. OK? But you take an image, and it's all little on a, on a page, and you go, wow, do I really look like that? Yep, this is what you really look like. But you don't think you look like that. That's my job. That's the psychology of talking to the customer, having a conversation. Um, it's happened to me. I think I alluded to that on, on one day, the last couple of days, where I said that the customer comes in, and you're asking them about their favorite thing. And what do you love about yourself? I love my blue eyes. Then you open it up in Photoshop and realize they got green eyes. I, has, I can't tell you how many times that's happened. Well, the fantasy is she has blue eyes. She may think she has blue eyes, but she don't. When, she, when I'm done, you think she has blue eyes? Yes. Absolutely. Again, it, I'm not a real, reality photographer. I am a fantasy. My job is to create the fantasy, present the fantasy. They go, wow, I look like that? OK, stop. I hate to revert back to the first day, but now what happens? Money starts floating out their pocket and into mine. That's what happens, because they can't help but buy it. Does that make sense? OK, mm -hmm. so I just wanted to kind of touch on that. And I, I know you're going to, again, they're going to think I'm going off topic, but I'm not. And Photoshop day, the third day, is very jump around in my mind. It's, you're going to kind of get an internal picture of how Kirk thinks. I mean, it's bouncing all over the place inside there, especially when it comes to Photoshop. But if you are out there doing seniors on a regular basis, you're going to notice that high school seniors, especially the girls, are, are, and especially the, the pretty girls, are you going to show them the image on the back of the camera, 
and they're going to say, I hate it. And, and you're going to say, oh, okay, no, no problem. I can take another one. But before I do, what do you hate? And she's going to say, I don't know. And you're going to say, well, is it your hair? No. Well, is it your smiles because you didn't smile? No. Well, is it the pose? You, you think the pose is, you know, it's too silly? No. Well, well what is it? And she's going to say, I don't know. And you're going to say, well, okay, uh, well, I could, I could take another one and another one and, and another one, but unless I know what to do, I just don't like me. I'm just, I'm just, I just don't like me. I'm just, I just don't like me. Okay, that is your cue to stop right there and say, especially if you have the time, take that image into Photoshop and say, let me show you something. And, and take out a little line right here. That little funky piece of skin that everybody has somewhere on their face. Make that go away. Okay? For her. And, and in the course of doing that, take and flip the image. Okay? Just, you know, you don't have to tell her what you're doing. Just whoop, flip that image real fast. And say, oh, what about, oh, I just found this one. Do you like this one? 90 plus percent of the time, they're going to say, oh, Oh, I like that one. Do you know why? Because that's what they, they see themselves. You do not ever look at yourself without seeing yourself in reverse. When you look in the mirror, you're reversed. You look at yourself on your phone and you do one of these. <laughs> Pictures, you know that picture you see all the time? It's reverse until it shows up. You, you, you understand? You only see yourself in reverse. Sean, our little guy yesterday, had one eye big, one eye small. Did y'all catch it? Do you see it? One eye big, one eye small. When he's going to see his pictures, to him, it's going to be backwards because he sees that, but he sees it in a mirror. Do you know how crazy the human mind is and has the ability to just instantly tell that your, this side of your face is skinnier than that side of your face? And instantly look at somebody and say, oh, 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 his nose kind of does this a little bit. And as a result, you can look at someone and within the flash of an eye, an eye blank, your brain goes, I can't do that to y'all. Pretty, ugly, ugly, pretty, pretty, ugly, 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 pretty. You know, you can, you can walk, you can look inside of a, um, a restaurant and go, well, there's a pretty girl, ugly girl, ugly, pretty, 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 ugly, uh, uh, just, just that, just like that. And what is that? You ever stopped and asked yourself, well, how? We all got the same parts, eyes, nose, mouth, hair, you know? We, we all got the same parts. How come someone is pretty, someone is not pretty? What is it? Symmetry. symmetry. It's all symmetry. It's the distance from here to here. It's the distance from here to here. It's the width of the nose, the skinniness of the nose, the crookedness of a nose. It's one eye big, one eye small. It's this, it's this. It's this big forehead. It's this little forehead. And the list goes on and on and on. I saw a thing on, on the Discovery Channel a while back about beautiful people, okay? And, and interestingly, they did all kinds of measurements of beautiful people. And what did they find? They all got the same numbers. I'm talking about this number, and this number, and this number, and, and this number, and this number, and this number, and this number. They all had the same numbers. Same, male, female, old, it, it didn't matter. Same number. What, is, what power do we have as a professional photographer? Someone has a crooked nose, put the light over here, straightens it right out. Or do it in the computer, straighten that nose up. Okay, so I photographed a guy last week, had big old things right here, huh? jowls, okay? And I just whoosh, pushed that right in, show you how to do that in a little while. And he loved it, loved it. I always like to tell the story about the guy I went on vacation with one time, a buddy of mine. I, me and him hung out forever. I photographed his daughter practically the day she was born. We go on vacation. While we're on vacation together, been knowing the family my entire life. He has heard every story I have ever told, every one of them. And his daughter is a little overweight. 
a little. Not a lot, just a little bit. And her arms are part of the overweight. I mean, it's what happens, doggone it. You get a little overweight, the arms get a little big. She comes out to do this picture on the beach, and she has this dress totally sleeveless. And I thought, whoa, okay, well, I'll fix it in Photoshop. And I did. Shrunk up every one of those arms, made them all look nice. When they got the book of proofs and looked through it, they go, oh, baby, look at this. Oh, look at this. These are fantastic. You see? I told you you didn't have big arms. <laughs> and I thought, they know what I'm capable of. They know. They've seen me do it. Like, you're going to see me do it today. And yet, they still didn't believe I did it to <laughs> their child. It's what we do as humans. We, we don't want to look at ourselves and go, man, I look, look how big I am. Oh, my God. Look at that nose I've got. Oh, my goodness. Do, do my lips really go cockeyed like that? Oh, uh, you don't want to know that. So when you see an image and it looks like you, but it's looking good, you go, ooh, how much do I owe you? <laughs> fantasy photography, okay? Fantasy. That's what we do. It's a fantasy. Cool? Moving on. So workflow. Here's what I want you to do. Let's call it a homework assignment, a personal homework assignment. The entire world, I want you to go out and I want you to make a detailed list of every step in your, photo, in your workflow process. Here's what I mean when I say a detailed list. The very first thing I want you to write down if you're going to write it down on a pad, this is how I did it. The first time I ever did this, it was a, it was a legal, yellow, legal pad. And on the, the first line was, take the picture. And, and a, a buddy of mine at H&H &H Color Lab said, you know, Kirk, better than a legal pad is a pack of sticky notes. OK? And I said, why is that? He said, because if you take a pack of sticky notes and you make yourself notes on them, so we're going to put take the picture. Take, pick. And then what, if you take that sticky note and you stick it somewhere where you got to see it every day. So say, just for the sake of pretending, this is a wall in our studio right here. And this wall is a wall we have to walk past every day. OK? And we have to walk past it, and, and we have to see this every day. So after you take the picture, I'm going to throw it out to my studio audience. You've taken the picture. Click. What is the next thing, next logical step? I want to give you a demonstration of what I mean about detail. What would you, what's the next logical step? Upload the picture. Uh-uh. Oh, wait, look at the, make sure it looks right. Uh-uh. No, you've already looked at the back of the camera. Huh? Well, if you're taking more than one picture. No, no. We're just going to take one picture. Click. Oh, now. Now, what is the next thing you got to do? Turn off the camera. OK, I like that. Yeah. Turn off camera. Good. What's the next thing we got to do? Take the card out. Go Take on. card out. Take card out. This is how crazy I want you to get. Mm. OK, now the card is in your hand. What are you going to do next? Plug the card in the computer. Plug card in computer. Boy, I'm using acronyms. Is that OK? <laughs> Plug card in computer. What's the next uh, thing we're going to do? Turn hopefully on your, your computer's uh, on. The program that's going to do the editing on that, if it's... No. Uh, no? No. Upload the photos. You're going get to get the images off the card, right? Right. Off card. Great. OK, well, we don't have to keep doing this. Mm -hmm. I think y'all yeah. start to get the idea. Right now, I'm going to stop right there, because remember yesterday I talked to you about... And anyway, you continue, continue. Let, let me do this, at least. Continue, 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 continue. Next thing, next thing. Customer comes in, sell the cup, picture of the cup, send the images to the lab, da, 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 right? We're going to send them. And now put money in bank. Right there. Boom. Make a deposit. There's our last thing. So we need to go from take the picture to put the money in the bank. That's how detailed I want you to make it. And I want you to do it with sticky notes. And there's a reason, I, and I want you to do the sticky notes somewhere where it's going to be a place, maybe it's down a hall, that leads to the studio. 
uh, camera room. Maybe it's uh, on your refrigerator if it's, a, if it's a home studio, something you got to look at every day. Maybe it's this bedroom wall that when you wake up in the morning, boom, this is what you see every day, every day, okay? And there's a reason I want you to do that because I want you to think about this process every day and there's got to be a way, got to be a way to start taking sticky notes off the wall. Because every time you pull a sticky note off the wall, you're speeding up your workflow. So right now, however it is, if it involves watching TV and working three images, write that out, okay? Write the whole thing out. Put it on the wall. Now, I told you yesterday that I have a Wi-Fi transmitter, right? right. That Wi-Fi transmitter allows me, whenever I go click, it automatically sends it to the computer and puts it in the right place. Look what I get to do. Turn off the camera, take the card out, put the card in the computer, offload the card. All right. Nice. Hope you're getting this on camera because it's my favorite thing to do. Swish. Right there. It's in the hole. Okay. <laughs> hole in one. Nice. All right. <laughs> That's what I get to do. And as you find things like that in your workflow, because you're going to write it all the way out, write it all the way out, all the way, detailed, ridiculous details, it's going to show you, hmm, I didn't realize that I have to walk all the way down this hall, turn here, move that basket, go through here, back up into here to put my card over here, then have to walk way over here, I know it's dumb, and then go over here to offload. Once it's offloaded, I have to go all the way back, all the way back, over here, go into this thing, get the card, take the card, walk it all the way, all the way over to the card. You see where I'm going with this? And I'm, I know I'm making this up, oh, but this what if, wait a minute, how come I don't put that over here? Right. You realize I could just do this, I could just go right here, sit down, plug the thing in, and start doing it? Whoa, that would save me a step. And that is what this homework assignment is going to do for you. Okay. It's going to force you to look at it more, what is that word, analytically? You know, I mean, this is how it goes, step by step by step by step. Is that helpful? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is that helpful over there? Yes. Excellent. Everyone's like, it's genius. And I, I love this. I've seen people mapping out the workflow before, but the fact that you can maximize your efficiency by taking the post-its off and then that physical sensation of throwing, throwing it, it out. Yeah. It, makes it, all good. Like, it gets good after a while. Yeah. Because you like, you'll sit there and look at the wall. <laughs> Got to be away. It's got to be inside. Yeah. And then, and this is another mind-blowing moment when you got a big hole right here, big right. hole, and you get to take all of these and move them up. Ooh, oh, that's I feel awesome. so good. <laughs> yeah. You are speaking to the type A personalities <laughs> I know, like, I can't it's wait. the list and post-it note list for all of us. It's yeah. beautiful. I can see post-it note sales going through the roof right now. It's like Home Depot is going to be like, what happened? What did we do? <laughs> I think you might need some Kirk Boclain branded post-its now. Maybe <laughs> so. Oh, I'm just not thinking, am I? <laughs> All right, so just to kind of give you an idea of what I'm talking about, here you go. Take the picture. That's something we cannot, we're never going to take that post-it note off the wall unless, unless Canon develops the mind chip. Nice. Huh? Yeah, we're working on that, right? So you go, let me shoot your picture. You got it? Oh, is it beautiful or what? <laughs> hey, don't laugh. Don't laugh. Hey, this, is so, this really is funny. They on the internet, they was like, I love Kirk's stories. Okay, here's a true story. Big group of guys, kind of like this, we get together and we all shoot in the breeze about the future right. of photography. I do this with people all the time. We'll be at a convention or something. We all get in a big circle and have a couple of beers and, and, and talk about, what do you think? Where's it going? What are we going to do? And we're all in this group, and I, this is in the film days, and I said, you know, I see, I foresee one day we'll like fax our negatives to the lab and the lab will like get this fax and then from the fax they'll print the prints but the negative is useless, you know, because I've got it at home, the original, but now they have like a fax but that's just as good as the original and they'll crumple up the fax and throw it away and they'll just send me the prints. Sound familiar? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And everybody in the group went, oh, ho, 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 ho. Kirk, you're so stupid. 
I saw that coming, buddy. And I didn't know it was going to be called digital and the internet and all this other stuff, but that's what we do. I mean, it ain't faxing, but it's what we do. It's the exact concept. So anyway, yeah, that's just so nice. funny. So hey, that's yet another little homework assignment for you to go do. Find some people you're comfortable with, some, pe some friends. Get together, get in a little group, and say, OK, how do we make this world better, this photography world that we live in? And you know, brainstorm that thing out. It's just a very powerful thing. That's why I have been hanging with you guys for three. Y'all think I'm just a good guy. No, I'm ripping off your brains. I'm totally, I'm like taking all them ideas y'all spewing away, and I'm going to use all that stuff. It is what we do. We are reinventors. That's what photographers are. So after you take the picture, which you're never probably ever going to take that off the wall, right. you got, I Wi-Fi them, like I just said, to the computer. That's what I do. After they're in the computer, they are opening up. The raw files are opening up right now in Bridge and they are being rendered so that I can then begin to do stuff to them. After that, I go back in and start taking the picture again. Let me explain that to you. Senior girl, she just has two outfits, let's just say. Red dress, blue dress. I take pictures in the red dress. Clickety, clickety, click, six shots. Those six shots set shot into the computer they have been rendered into Bridge, okay? And they're in a hot folder. I then leave the studio. Thanks, Mom. Let me know when she comes out with the blue dress. I then leave, walk over to the main computer where my main computer sits, and there her six images are, already opened up in Bridge, looking at me. I can, using my presets, again, we're going to do this. So it isn't like you, you got to send messages and say, well, yeah, show us that, show us that. Because it, it's going to happen in the next segment. I take those six images as they come in. I move them into her hot folder. And what I mean by that, her folder, it has her name on it. I renumber them, her name, dash one through six. I then do something to every one of the images, whether that's a slight exposure tweak or maybe it's a little bit of a vignette, or maybe it's turning it into black and white or brown tone, or you know, maybe it's like color adjustment or whatever. I, I do something to it in Bridge at this point. Then I highlight all those images and I start, start the raw conversion. It starts being converted into a JPEG, a full res, saved at quality 12, sRGB JPEG which is what my lab wants, OK? And once I hit the button for it to start converting, I leave the computer. I go back into the camera room. Interestingly, it takes about that long for the customer to change into the next outfit. And then I start taking pictures again. So do you see that for my personal workflow, my system, I am able to literally begin working files while I'm shooting the images. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Are we following? Yeah. So that sometimes I have photographers say, Kirk, you shoot raw? I, I shoot JPEG because it just takes me too long. Well, when you, when you just physically shoot something in JPEG, it's already compressed in the JPEG format. So if you do some sort of an adjustment, like an exposure adjustment, or a color adjustment, or maybe add a little vignette, or whatever you do to that image at this point, you are literally trashing the image. You're destroying pixels. They have to, the system has to throw away pixels. It has to you know, do things like that to cause that effect. So in a raw, in a raw format, the, the software sort of shifts pixels around. You're not trashing it, you're just shifting them around. And so then, as a result, what you end up with is a much cleaner, better, more perfect file. I do convert them to JPEG because it's easier to upload. And you know, people are right now on the internet saying, yeah, but a JPEG, you know, I, I'd rather use TIFF. And that's OK. If you rather use it because it does destroys less, and you're absolutely correct. But you know, I mostly open an image once or twice. It, the, the destruction is extremely minimal at this point, and it saves me hard drive space. It saves me upload time, and so the you have to do this. Everything in photography, everything that we do is all a big juggling act. It's balance. 
It's balance. When do I go home? When do I stay? When do I play with my family? When do I? It's all just balance. It's all a constant balancing act. Well, the same thing is with this. Sure, TIFF would be better, but there would be, dis there would be certain consequences of saving it as a TIFF file. In your world, you may like that. Those consequences may not bother you. So in which case, do it. So make sense? Go ahead, Russell. So um, when you render them to, to JPEG, do you then after you're done with the sale or whatever, do you get rid of the raw file? No, no never get rid of the raw file. Okay. Since you asked it, I'll just go ahead and address it right now. That's part of my archival process. We take all of just the raw files and burn that to a CD, DVD, whatever, okay? We then burn only the JPEGs or the developed, you know, the, the, the images that have been rendered in, and enhanced onto a separate CD, DVD. Okay, why two different ones? Well, what if, what if I put it all on one and that CD got scratched? They're gone. Whereas by having it in two locations, even though it's two different formats, the raw file CD could get scratched, but I still got the ones that they've seen. The, that one could get scratched and I could always go back to the raw and reprocess. See what I'm getting at? Not to me, since we're going there as far as archival, um, I, I am a freak about archival, okay? I have the main hard drive where I do all my work. I have a little carbon copy thing that happens that then writes everything from the main hard drive onto another hard drive, okay? Uh, at night, Time Machine takes the entire computer and burns that to a Drobo. At the entire computer, every night, every night. Well, so we got the one hard drive, the backup hard drive, and then the backup hard drive then writes to a Drobo that the entire network can look at. So, I mean, at any given time, my stuff is in one, two, three, that's four places, plus the CD, plus the other CD. So, uh, technically, I'm in six places, seven, f five, six, six places, right? So, is that overkill? Uh-huh. Yes, it's overkill. But you know what? It's, I sleep real good at night because of that. <laughs> and I just can't bear the thought of something getting lost. I've heard too many stories and it just, it hurts my feelings. Okay. Does that help? Does that yeah. answer? Good, Absolutely. Pablo? Yeah, uh, you said, look, okay, you shot this, the, the six pictures, the client go change her, her clothes and uh, you come to your computer, it's already upload, okay, and, uh, but then is your, the raw files, they're uploaded and you go one by one and, and, and fix, okay, the brightness here needs to be a little more, or the sharpener here, the yes. shadows. So you do all these tweaks before you come back to the circle, or no, it's just? <laughs> the main thing I'm doing in Bridge at this point, the main thing is exposure. The, the, there is some sharpening going on, but it's preset. Uh -huh. There is actually some vignetting going on, but again, that's preset. Sometimes I tweak it, but mostly it stays the same. There is, um, there's all sorts of things going on when it comes in. But then I make little minor adjustments. And I'm going to show you those minor adjustments. One by one. Yes. Exposure, contrast, a little bit of uh, blah, blah, blah. Um, saturation, all these different things that I do. I'm going to show you that in the next segment. And then you export. Then I export it. And the then I, once I export it, that's good. That's good. Hello, brings us to here. The, I go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Now the customer leaves. And what I have in my hands are all the images. They have perfect color. They have perfect exposure. They have perfect sharpness, a little bit of a vignette on them. Uh, some of them are converted into black and white or blue tones or brown tones or whatever the case may be. But they're all, at this point, I could literally send that off to the lab and have proofs made and a, a lot of customers would be very, very happy. There's a lot of photographers on the planet. At this very moment in time, you could literally just send that off and be ecstatic. But what I want to do is I want to now take it to yet another level, okay? If there is sort of like, not to pick on you, Paolo, but I'm looking at you right now, you have these little things underneath your eyes. I would take that off, okay? That might be because you was up too late last night or something, okay? I'm looking at Kim. Kim's got a little thing going on right here, a little brownness going on right here. I would fix that, okay? Looking at, look, I got this little bump right here, this little bump right here bothering me, this little line right here. I would take that off. Russell got a little piece of hair hanging right here. I'd either... You know, I have to take that off. It's bugging me. And so anything that bugs me, I'm then going to, at this point, do all kinds of stuff. I already talked about that. We go back and forth, back and forth. I am going to do all kinds of stuff to the images 
in Photoshop. I might add a little texture. You remember the little guy that we just show, I showed you? He was just up on the screen. He was, had that texture that, was, that showed up on the background. The girl, did you notice that a piece of her dress showed in the original, but then the dress went away? That's because I, I whited out that dress. You know, all sorts of things like that. Anything and everything that I could do to the image to make it perfect, I'm going to do at this point. Now, inside my computer, I'm going to point out to you, when y'all are looking inside my computer here in the next segment, I'm going to point out to you my best, best friend. And that is, in the upper right-hand corner, the clock. It's my best friend when I'm done. But at the moment that I'm retouching, at the moment that I hang out in Photoshop, me and that timer fight constantly. I look at the clock. It says, right now it says 11.56, okay? And I'm, I'm looking at it, oh, 11.56. And I'm, doing, and I'm going, there. it will not, oh no, oh no, it will not change to 11.57 before I am done with this. I can tell you that right now because there's a, oh, okay, 11.57, but Okay, I'm now, okay, and finished and saved, but the next one, it will not change. I am so sorry. And me and the clock fight back and forth, back and forth like that, constantly. And my objective is three minutes or less per file, per file, boom, 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 fast as I can, fast as I can. At this point, time is money. And, and so, yes, there was uh, this morning and after I was about, after I'd retouched about 20 of the images, I guess. I think I had three or four left. I can't remember exactly when it was. It was, um, it was a little after, it was a little after 7.30, I think, whenever I was getting to that point. And I, and I suddenly realized, I'm like, hey, the TV's not on. And I popped the TV on, and the last ones took me longer. No offense, I'm not messing with you. But, yeah, because I'd be like, mm -hmm, I'm looking at the clock, and the dude would say something on TV, and I'd be like... <laughs> And I'd go, oh, oh, the clock's winning. The clock's winning. And so that is what I do. Me and the clock, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Okay? So from Photoshop, I'm doing all sorts of actions. I catch myself doing something over and <coughs> over and over and over again. I'm making an action of it. Okay? There's some scripting things that I do. And then after I do all that stuff to it, there it is. Sometimes I post it to social media. I also then upload it to H&H &H Color Lab for printing. And so that's the entire sequence, basically, without all the many details in between. That is my workflow. Cool? We following? Yeah, I, we had a quick question on um, how your workflow might change when you're on location. So if that can Beautiful be an overarching question. question. Beautiful yes. question. The bulk. The bulk of the stuff that I do is done in my studio and in the backyard. My network dude, who is a good friend of mine, I do his family pictures. Um, he just had a golf tournament last weekend. I was in his little golf tournament. and So we're good friends. We hang out together. It's, it's, you know, we're buddies. But he is a, a network guy. He owns a, a computer business. that I actually buy my internet access from him. Well. Whenever I started all this Wi-Fi business, I had one of his tech guys come over, and I said, I want to light up this area. Anywhere, if I'm standing on my property, I want internet access. Because if I have internet access, then I'm, I'm in my network. And if I'm in my network, then when my camera goes click, it's going into my main computer. So no matter where I am on my property, Okay, I'm lit up. Much like Creative Live is lit up wherever you go. Okay, it's the same concept. Y'all you know how to do that. Many people do not know how to do that. Well, if you do not know how to do that, do like I did. Call your network guy up, let him get you some fancy antennas and, and a nice kicking system and, and light up your area. Okay, now, if I have to get in a car and drive over there, I lose connectivity. It goes away. Now, the cool thing about the way that Canon Wi-Fi unit works is it just queues up the stuff, because everything has to be written to the card first before it's ever transmitted Wi-Fi. It will not transmit ever until it first hits the card, so it's kind of a backup system, okay? 
Now, it just simply queues it up, queues it up, queues it up, and says, okay, well, as soon as I get back to the network, this is what needs to be done. I drive onto the property, she goes inside to start changing clothes, and my camera pin picked up and starts sending. Okay? And if she's taking a good time, a, a little while changing clothes, let's say we're changing at my studio, then I'm going to walk inside and do what I just told you I'm going to do. I did. And then by the time she's finished changing clothes, we jump in the car and we go somewhere else. Now, let's just say that we're in New Orleans, say. Well, I'm clickety, 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 click, and that system is out the window. I have to, again, wait till I get back to the studio, and so that first initial conversion is a bit longer. There's no way to fix that. Oh, yeah. Okay. Does that help? Yeah, that's huge. Okay. Thank you. And, and which reminded me, by the way, since I was talking about being a backup freak, um, that's a, another layer of backup for me, is that my camera, the 1DX, has two card slots. And the way I have it set is it writes to both cards at the same time. I have two 32 gig cards in there. So when I'm going click, 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 it's writing to card A and writing to card B at exactly the same time and then transmitting into the, the computer. At that very moment, again, I'm in three places. So. I don't feel like retouching tonight. I've had a hard day. I've got all day off tomorrow. I'm going to finish retouching tomorrow. I go home. The computer blows up. You're good. I'm still good. I still got it on the card. Yeah. OK. I had three settings, three sittings, let's just say, that day. And, and before I start a new sitting, I format card A, the first card. I don't format card B. Format card A, do another session. Format card A, do another session. Format card A, do another session, right? Boom, that night the computer blows up. I'm still OK. It's backed up on card B. So again, this is the kind of retardation I think about. I, I think about it because I'm paranoid of losing data. And, and how do I know all this stuff? I know this because I did the sticky note thing. I laid out my entire workflow. And then I looked at it, and I, and I had all sorts of, well, what if this happened, and what if that happened scenarios. And so you know, just you have to think about things like that. And if you're thinking to yourself, oh, Kirk, you're weird. I am. But why would that happen? Yeah, like that would ever happen. One time, so far, one time at a wedding. Click, 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 click. Write to card A, write to card B. Um, Everything was there, no problem. Come home, pull card A, put it in the computer. Nothing is there. Nothing. Corrupt, yes. Broken card. Nothing was there. Pull card B, stick it in. Everybody, everything's there. Now, you tell me how I feel about that. How much is that camera now worth? It's priceless. Priceless. Absolutely priceless. Absolutely. Can you imagine calling that bride up and saying, sugar, I got nothing. I, 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 can't, I can barely say it, much less even just think about it, OK? And, and, and since we're on that subject, here's, here's what just happened at your home right now while y'all all five are here. There was a huge electrical storm in your area, and all of your computers are fried. You OK with that? I'm Everybody's OK with that? Good? That means you got a pretty good backup system. Because that's, that's, that's how I feel. Boom, fry away. I don't care. I'm, I'm backed up. And it, that has happened to me too, by the way. And pff, restore, no problem. Right. I'm there. Now, if you're at home and you're feeling this cold sweat develop on you right now because you're thinking, oh my goodness. When he said an electrical storm and, and my computers were blowed up, I'm thinking about that bride I just did or that baby I just did. I'm having to explain, what, do something about it because it really didn't happen. It didn't just happen. But it could happen tomorrow or it could happen the next day. So just, just pretend it did and you, you'll begin to feel that feeling that you have. So that's how I, that's how I think. That's how I, I reason those types of things. Okay. So, you, thank you. You got questions anymore? Yeah, Anything? I, I have one. Oh, I'm sorry, Paolo, go ahead. Yeah, it's just on the Wi-Fi, because for me it's a new thing. Like, I know that uh, the, the Canon, the 6D came with the Wi-Fi already included. 
is uh, when you, you, you're going to show how you set up the camera, how to your computer reads, how, how your computer understands where to send that image? I'm not going to explain that. Let me tell you why. <laughs> it, is, it, it, it crosses into networking and computer geeky type stuff that really is not photography. Uh -huh. it, can be, it can be complicated to someone who has no knowledge of networking and uh, IP addresses and all that FTPing and all that kind of crazy stuff. Uh -huh. However, to the tech world, okay, to the people who do networking, it is, it is just as, as easy as it is for you to speak a different language than to me. You know? So here's what I want you to do. If you do have a 6D and you do have this Wi-Fi, number one, I want you to read your instruction book and understand it. If you read your instruction book that explains the Wi-Fi feature and you go, oh, I get it, then you're a bit of a networking techie guy. Mm -hmm. If you read it and go, I don't get it, this just don't make no sense, then spend, it's about 90 bucks. Spend the 90 bucks to have a tech guy, a networking tech guy, come over, girl, come over to your studio or your home and let them read the book and say, here's what I want to do. I want this, comp this camera to talk to that computer. And when I go click right here, I want the image to go from here, and I want it to go there. And they'll say, oh, let me show you how you do that. OK. And set it up for you. Yeah, the, now, more importantly than them setting it up, that's why you hired them for an hour. You go, whoa, 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 whoa. Sh -uh. Show me what you did. And let him take the full hour that you hired him for and show you step one, I did this, and this is I have to have this, and this IP address, and blah, 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 blah. So your camera was connected to that computer. So like, like I just be, put, tried to put it in my mind. It's, okay, it's too complicated to do right now. This is, this is an all-day problem, Pablo. No, no, <laughs> I'm just, telling you. It's just if you could have, like, a, as an idea, could yesterday, when you're shooting, come yep. to this computer here? It absolutely could have done that yesterday. Or, or no, it, this yes. just work. That is called an ad hoc, an ad hoc network which you probably have never heard of. A-D-H-O-C, network, uh -huh. okay? So yes, I could have had that camera talking straight to this computer yesterday, okay? Now, I didn't do it because this com getting it into this computer that way yesterday was useless. It was immaterial. Because uh -huh. I knew I was just going to put the card in at night and drop it in. Okay. Too easy. That wasn't, it's too complicated to teach that in this scenario. So being that you've never heard of an ad hoc network, tells me there's no way to explain that to you right now. Okay. So the best thing you can do is get you a network guy and, and have him hook you up. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Um, it's right. kind of a geeky tech question, but it's real simple. Um, internet speed, do we need a specific internet speed to get the files to transfer the, or? This, this com if, if you're going straight, if you're going straight from your camera, straight into say, say a laptop. Right, like so the, many megabytes. The, the feature is already there. Okay. But if you're going to use, like in my studio scenario, whereby you're going to go through a router that's going to then route it into the computer right. system, then, you know, all a, even a cheap router now is, is a pretty fast. It's like a, a gigabit system. So, okay. yeah, just the, just the normal systems that are out there right now. Nothing, nothing that you're going to need to spend thousands of dollars on. No. Okay. Thank you. No. Cool deal? All right. So, workflow. Marketing, we have the customers come to us. Yes, we know how to take an image. We know how to get it on a card, OK? Now, as I said before, we need to do whatever it takes, whatever it takes to make the images awesome, all right? And that is what we're going to talk about. We're going to show you. For the next two segments, I want to show you step by step what I do to the images to make them as perfect as possible, all right? We're going to talk about bridge. You asked me about bridge versus Lightroom. Yes, we're going to talk about that. We're talking about Adobe Camera Raw because you probably, maybe, I don't know, know or don't know that whether you're doing it in Bridge or whether you're doing it in Lightroom, in reality, Adobe Camera Raw is what's doing it. Okay? Lightroom is just the device to get you to Adobe Camera Raw. And Bridge is a device to get you to Adobe Camera Raw. Adobe Camera Raw is what's doing the conversion. Not Lightroom, okay? I know you might not have known that. And it's the exact same Adobe Camera Raw, whether it's Lightroom or Bridge. And whether to use Lightroom or Bridge mostly depends on your personal preferences and workflow. And I'll sort of explain that. I don't have Lightroom to show you. 
but I'll show you how I use bridge. And you're going to go, oh, I get it. You'll see what I mean. Um, Photoshop, we're going to talk about that. And we're going to also actions. Like I said, I'd like to build an action for y'all. And probably end of the day, we're going to do some fun speed tricks that is going to get you home as quickly, quickly as possible. That's my goal. Get you home. End of the day. Okay? So I have this little bit about the pro forum and signing up for the pro forum because on here right now, because of the fact that this entire workflow system cannot be explained singly today. It simply cannot. It took me a week to do it and set it up. It's one of the reasons why uh, the Creative Live people is letting me use my computer to do all of this is because it's all tweaked and set up and ready to roll. There's a lot of step-by-step-by-step -by -step -by -step processes that you need to do and understand to be able to set this whole thing up, okay? So there is absolutely no way. And I, when I decided to create my little workflow system, I said to myself, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to make movies of every step along the way so that if somebody wants to copy my system verbatim, I will have it at step one, step two, step three, step four, and I'm going to put the whole thing on the pro forum, and I'm going to make it available for free for download if you're a member of the pro forum. And just to give you just a tiny tidbit of just a few minutes of what one of those movies looked like, let me show you. Dodge tool, 50%, mid-tones. Dodge in a little bit more on this catch light. Dodge in a little bit on this catch light. Hold down my Alt key, which makes it turn into the burn tool, and I'm going to burn in the black on both eyes. Maybe just add a little bit of a swish down here. With the Dodge tool, I'll just let go my Alt key. That's a little bit of a speed trick. And yes, I'm starting to like those eyes. Okay? Now I. Anyway, that's just, I mean, like I said, that goes on for, phew, Lord, three, four hours, okay? Of all the stuff and tech, this trick and that trick. It includes, yes, it includes every, every action that I have, all the little presets for bridge, everything, everything about everything. So, before we get into the next segment, internet world, you have me some questions or things you want me to add or just talk about that I have discussed so far. The internet has not stopped talking about Wi-Fi in, in, from this last section, so I think we just need to clarify that topic a little bit because you were talking about when you're shooting, it is going from your camera to your computer as you're shooting, so not everybody has a camera that can do that. So what do you suggest instead if their camera does not have Wi-Fi? Okay, if your camera, like the 1DX Canon, does not have Wi-Fi, however, it does have this little thing you can purchase that screws onto the side of it from Canon that then makes it to where it does have Wi-Fi. And like the 5D series cameras, it's this little thing that screws onto the bottom, okay? The Nikons, um, while I don't have a Nikon, I know that Nikon does the same thing with certain models. So what you're gonna have to first of all determine if you want one of these Wi-Fi transmitters is you're gonna have to take and, and research whether or not your camera has that feature with an additional purchase, okay? Now, beyond that, there's a company called Cam Ranger that makes a little device that slips onto the hot shoe and plugs into your computer, and then it makes for a, it, it makes for a wireless transfer. It'll transmit to the iPad, it'll transmit to your computer, that type of thing. So, it could be even that third party type thing. I get my cam ranger from Dury's, so call Robert at Dury's if you want one. Okay, anyway. all right. Okay, so even if they don't do that, how much extra time is it really going to take them from taking the card out of the camera and manually doing it on their computer? Is that I, still an option? It is an option. There, it isn't that you can't take the card out of your camera and walk it over to your computer, but let's add it up, seriously. If I'm gonna shoot three seniors in a day for the sake of conversation, and um, I am going to shoot, let's say, four outfits per senior, around 24 shots. And I'm going to walk that card every time at the end of the day. And I'm going to, or at the end of every session, plug it into my computer, move it over, let them render, 
then take it out, and so on and so forth, it is going to add 5, 10 minutes. 5, 10 minutes, let's just say. Let's say it's only 10 minutes, and it's done three times a day. 10, 10, that's 20. That's 30 minutes a day. 30 minutes at the end of the day. And I don't know about you guys, but if I can get home 30 minutes faster at the end of the day, I'm 30 minutes happier, okay? Now, if, if you are doing, for example, weddings, a wedding inside your, uh, let's say it's a wedding formal. I typically shoot more images of a wedding formal than I do of a high school senior. A baby, that six shot thing I told you about, that's out the window with babies. Okay, out the window. Every little twitchy move, I'm click, click. I'm like you. I'm like the the overshooters anonymous when it comes to babies because you just got to. It's nothing for me to pop a hundred images of a baby session, but I still edit it down to about twenty. But the whole while I'm shooting like that, I'm making sure I'm I'm timing that right to where that Wi-Fi transmitter is sending them in. So if you had a hundred images that you had to move over, how long would it take you now? To, to move those. It's going to take a lot longer, isn't it? So, and again, that depends on the speed of your computer. It depends on the speed of the card you have. Um, all sorts of thing, things depend as to the speed as to whether or not it is really worth your while to get that transmitter. But you, you can determine that. Yeah. You're going to, Kirk's going to trust you to know how much time you need to hang out. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's right. But, so, Kirk, before we go to break, um, we have a few questions on Pro Forum, okay. and I'm wondering if you can just describe a, in a little more detail what it includes, what the community experience is like, the forums, the videos, how it all works. If you could just give us another little more detailed overview on that. Yeah, is no that problem. Cool? The Pro Forum, we have just under 2,000 paid members on the Pro Forum who access it, not all of them access it every day, but there's quite a, quite a number of them access it every day. It is a forum, is what it literally is. It's forum format. So that's, you know, you click the little forums tab and, and it shows a list of all the different forums. And there's a high school senior forum. There is a, um, a wedding forum and a baby okay. forum and a family forum. And then there's different technical forums, like there's a, a Photoshop tricks forum. And then there's, we have one little section um, where if you get up to, if, once you hit like 100 posts, mm -hmm. you have access to this area, which is oh, a cool. custom action forum, where we have a, a team of people who will write your own custom action for you. So, you know, if, you, if you're thinking to yourself, man, I wish I could have an action that would, like you said, lay that watermark down and size it perfect for Facebook, and I could just hit the F9 key and it would make it for me. Well, shoot, go request it. We'll have a guy make it for you. Okay, cool. and, and it, what is the fee for that? There is no fee. The fee is becoming a member. Once you're a member, you get all this stuff, you know? Um, the same thing with the, um, the workflow. The workflow that I created is in this big old long thread inside the Photoshop area that explains that thing in detail. We have an artist of the month every month that comes in. Right now, it's my buddy Joe. And uh, anyway, he it, it give like little assignments and go do this and go do that. And you get to interact with this one artist. Um, something I, I brand new that I just started, and it's the contest is ending this weekend, is uh, you may have watched uh, MasterChef. Yeah. Okay, you ever saw yeah. MasterChef? Yeah. Well, I, all right now on the Pro Forum for the last month, we've had the Pro Forum Master Photographer Competition. Oh, awesome. We started out with 26 photographers. And then they would have to do a task, and then a few were eliminated. And then they had to go do a task, and then a few were eliminated. And, and we've had them, you know, do food photography, and do baby photography, do photograph a chair, and photograph a shoe. And, you know, it was just all kinds of crazy things like that. And we're down to the last two right now. And they're in the middle of doing their task right now. So it's just, it is that type of thing. It's a community of professional photographers, all with the same mindset. And that is, like me, we want to turn a profit at this great profession that we're in. Yeah. That's and have is. a lifestyle as well mm -hmm. that supports you. Mm -hmm. um, and balanced. And balanced, yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, so just another clarification. So the videos are in pro form as well? Yes. So it is. OK. Yes. So it sounds like it's a mix of community-driven content and content that you produce yes. specifically for the community as well. Yep. Okay. And everybody contributes. Great. That so it's, it is, you know, you ask me a question, for example, hey, Kirk, how do I turn red hair blue? Okay. Yeah. Well, you might get my answer. Right. But you might also potentially get a hundred other answers. Because Fantastic. as you know, in Photoshop, there's a hundred ways to do something. 
And so you might potentially get a hundred other answers of, well, well, let me tell you how I do it. Well, let me tell you how I do it. You know? So everybody participates. It's not just sit there and take in. It's everybody shares. Everybody participates. And we all make each other better. That's right the whole part. I mean, if you, can, if you hang around with like-minded people, what happens? You all grow. And that's, yeah. that's the process. That's, to me, it, where it all, why I did it. The whole thing started, I'll tell you this, if, you, if we got time for it. I'll tell you that the whole thing started with four guys in a hotel room at the end of a convention. And I learned more in the hotel room bouncing ideas off of each other than I did at the convention, the photography convention. And I was like, people, how come we don't do this all the time? And they were like, I don't know, because what you, what you, you live over here and I live over there. And I was like, yeah, but we got the internet. Let's, let's, let's do this online. And that's when I created the Pro Forum. The four people would hang out, which became eight, which became 16, which became, and you know, that's how it's been. And it's been around for, my daughter's 19, so it's been around 19 years. Wow, that yeah. is awesome, incredible. I feel like since we're talking about this, I know a lot of you guys out there are interested in Pro Forum, and I want to let you know that right now, um, Kirk has a Pro Forum 50% off access available to all the Creative Live watchers. And just go to our uh, the course page for this course right now, mm -hmm. and you can download this free PDF that's available to all of you watching right now. And you get 50% off Pro Forum, and there are a ton of other discounts from Kirk's sponsors that everything he's talking about, his workflow, his cameras, his lighting, everything is available through that little nice digital swag bag that he's put together for all of you. That's so awesome. Thanks no, again, thank Kirk, you for, for sharing that. your relationships with those companies yeah. with us. It's been Absolutely. really fantastic. Love to see how much you have grown your community and continue to give to all of us. Totally appreciate that. Um, but it is time for our 15-minute break. What do you have in store for us when we come back? All right. So when we come back, we're not going to have any more keynotes in the next segment. You're going to be on my computer. We're going to jump in bridge. I'm going to probably the first thing show you the retouched images all finished from yesterday. And then I'm going to show you the unretouched. And we're going to start show I'm going to show you how a bridge is laid out, how I use bridge, the different aspects of it and and just kind of start the flow. We can't wait. Can't wait to see how you actually work in there. All right, so people are saying good things about you continually on Facebook and in the chat rooms, and I get to like share some of that with you now. Are your ears burning? <laughs> Jaywood72 says, awesome, it doesn't begin to describe Kirk. <laughs> and Gerard Conley Photography says, Kirk, the more interesting instructor to date. Way to go, Creative Live. Love that one. <laughs> and Homestead Photo says, hey, Creative Live, how many times can I thank you for bringing brilliant instru instructors like Kirk into your studio? Exclamation point. <laughs> um, he has been a breath of fresh air and so real. Seniors are real people. They are our future, and he has a way of boosting their confidence, which I'm sure helps them with their decisions for the future. What an awesome, awesome comment. It, it was, and there are actually six exclamation points in that entire <laughs> comment and, right. and two question marks. You know when you're really excited, the question mark exclamation. Yeah. Hey, I will, <laughs> I will <laughs> tell you, sharing. I've had letters from parents and things like that where they'll, they'll say, ever since my daughter went and had pictures with you, you know, she's so this and she's so happy and she, she thinks she's beautiful again and all that stuff. So I don't know, that makes you feel good when that kind of stuff happens. Definitely. Mm -hmm. That's good stuff. You know, and that's one of the points that, um, that really hit me this morning when Kirk was talking, is that you can agree with his aesthetic or not. It doesn't matter. But as Kirk mentioned, he is not a reality photographer. He's a fantasy photographer. And he's capturing the way that people see themselves. And I think one of the most vulnerable and hopeful and open times in life is that moment, I'm going to start crying, is that moment of when you're leaving high school and you kind of have the entire world in front of you. And it just hit me this morning of how important that, that gift is that you're giving to your clients of reflecting all of that hope and light and dreams of their future back to them in the way that they see themselves in a fan fantastical that's fantastical, right? In a fantastical yeah. way. Um, so I really appreciate, Kirk, you talking about the heart of that today. 
Um, also, what I loved about this morning and what I'm excited about for today is, aside from the post-it notes, Lori and I are both like ordering big post-it notes from Amazon. Um, <laughs> we're so ready to do our workflow today. <laughs> Can't wait to crumple the post-it note balls up. Uh, but anyway, that was an aside. <laughs> um, but aside from the workflow is running your business with heart. We're all creative professionals. We have our own businesses, and if we're constantly glued to our business and not paying attention the rest of our life, what is the point? So I'm really looking forward to learning ways to become more efficient so we can enjoy our life and make a living with the things we love, helping people see themselves and the light in their own eyes. So with that, we've got three days of Kirk. We've got a rest of a day to go. You can purchase the course by clicking on the Buy Now button. We're offering the course for a discounted rate of $99 during the live broadcast. And we will see you back in 15 minutes. Who do you want to see next? And welcome back from break, everybody. We are continuing on on day three of Senior Photography right here with Kirk Volklain. We have a lot of content to still get through, so without wasting any more time, I'm going to hand it right over to you. Done deal. All right. Oh, what, what are we doing? <laughs> I <High> was. <laughs> 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 okay, no problem. So I figured what we could get right into, I have them ready to go inside my computer, was the images from yesterday. These are, I, I, as I told Russell earlier, I opened them up this morning and I went ahead and retouched them. And it doesn't take me a whole lot of time to retouch as you'll kind of see. But these are the ones, the ones that you're looking at right now are all retouched. So let me show you. Here, you're looking at them in bridge. And so I'll just sort of go through them one at a time. Here we go. That one. That one, I don't know if y'all remember me doing those yesterday. A couple of things you probably are looking at and saying, I don't remember that background. In fact, let me back up. When did, when did he take pictures with that background? Well, that was the background, but that's with some texture and some all sorts of stuff, which I'll show you what I do. Same thing there. It's like I threw some saturation on that background, pumped it up, turned it into a black and white, fixed her eyes, that kind of stuff. This was one of my favorite ones from yesterday. Wait, let me back up one thing. I thought so. There was a couple ahead of those. <laughs> um, what do y'all, my studio audience, do you notice anything right off the bat? What do you notice? Something changed. Yeah, remember he squinted? Yeah, he ain't squinting no more, is he? We'll, we'll play with that. There we go. That was the very first one of Lexi that we did. Then we did the one for the mom and dad. And then we did that one and that one. And then that one. And then that was my personal favorite one of her. I don't know. I just thought that was really, really good. I like the way the, the hair moves and the, the, the color on the skin. And I don't know. I like the flatness of it all and the way it, you know, the light hits her in the face. So I think she's going to really, really, really like that one. Y'all liking that one? OK, good. And then same thing. We moved into our buddy Sean. Black and white, this was one that broke the rules. Remember we talked about that, broke the rules. Had him, his face, his nose this time turning away from the light. You can pull that off, by the way, and get away with it when, um, you know, you're a slimmer guy. And, you know, he had that little long chiseled face, so you could kind of get away with that. And we, like, like before, didn't want to make the mom's happy. And then there we go. Notice the light. We talked about that yesterday, light right, rimming him out on the right-hand side. That... Um, you know, rims it out and separate, makes a little separation, skip light, whatever you want to call it. There we go, full length. And that one, if you're looking at that on the screen, you think, ooh, it's so grainy. Yes, yeah, because I added that. I wanted that, that grain effect, make it look, you know, mean. I call, I call that my, uh, my soprano look. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay, so, and then here was our girl 
from yesterday. And Raven, there we go. I think, correct me if I'm wrong, when y'all said something about high key, was this what you were talking about? That white, 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 whenever you make them, or you was just literally talking about retouching a high key background? I was talking about the high key background. Okay, no problem, which is coming up. We did one of her in black and white. And then um, on that background, you know what I love about that background is it kind of looks like she's there, doesn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. that, well, he was, I, know, I know because of comments that were made about the backgrounds and, and someone made a comment, because I, I felt the same way. When I look at that background, as in in person, I'm like, eh, it, it's okay. But when I photograph that background, I like it. So that's just a, a, a side note. Anyway, moving on there. This was my attempt at high key. I didn't have a high paper or anything. And um, I, when I actually play with this with y'all here in a little bit, we, uh, I, if you want, I'll take the line out too. So that was just an electrical line. Yeah. But I left it in because, I don't know, it didn't bother me too much. And then on the roof, a bone roof. Keep your day job. Okay. <laughs> So uh, the, one of the points I made on the roof, and I want you to take note of the exposure on his face, and then look at the, I know that's not a chimney, but it looks like a chimney. Look at the chimney behind him on the right above his tattoo. Notice exposure is the same. You go all the way to the back of the church between the telephone pole and the chimney, and exposure is the same. Mm -hmm. And yesterday I made the point that if, you know, just because the, all that stuff's behind him, it's the same sun. The same sun is hitting the chimney, hitting the church, hitting the senior. And so the exposure is the same all the way through. You get highlights in his hair because the raw sun is hitting him in the hair, skipping into the camera, and so thus the hair lights up. And so you know, a little bit of reflector, making things even. So that, that's, I mean, yes, it's got a bunch of wires and stuff, and I don't know, personally, I, I kind of like that. That's kind of a senior-esque looking, looking thing. And it just got a little closer. This was the one I, was, I had him. I don't know if you remember. He was doing all this squinty stuff on this one. And then I kind of zoomed in a little bit, had him close his eyes. Here we go, dude. Ready? One, two, three. Open your eyes. Boom. Click. And I was able to pull that off. That, the eyes were not dropped in on that one. And this was the one when we flipped around and make the blue sky, right? <coughs> and eh, it's a little busy going on behind her and all the wires and poles and stuff. But, you know, you, if you was in a park somewhere, the same concept, you know? It would, be, it would be kind of neat. So throw the glasses on, and that way, you know, you don't have that squinty thing. And then in her case, she had those brown eyes that made the sun less critical. So we could do something like that. And then we did a nice smiley one. And then do you notice something changed on this? Oh, the back. The all the stuff in the background. Yeah, stuff, all the yeah. buildings and stuff I just filled up with trees <laughs> behind her. And it just made it a little bit more fun to look at. And then camera dude. <laughs> I mean, I wasn't going to sit there and retouch all that out of there, but just was the one we were pretending like we was in the street. Remember? By the way, I wanted to back up to this and make another point. Even with all that stuff, I'm talking about all of that stuff going on in the background, got in tight, got in close to her, focused on her. Look what happened to the background. It becomes kind of a cool effect, doesn't it? Yeah. It doesn't, this is distracting. That was kind of cool. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you may look around and go, well, there's just nothing to do here. Well, use, use the tools at your disposal. So I wanted to make that point too. And then this was the one that someone asked me to do a one with the flash and one without. This was the one with. Uh, I have the other one to show you in a little while. But same thing, it was just kind of fun. And then Mr. Splasher. <laughs> so, I mean, it, you know, I think I made the point yesterday, that is not going to sell. If anything, it'll be cool in the, cool, in the proof book, maybe. That's about it. But, you know, it's just not going to sell. It's not. But do you think that he had fun doing that? Oh, he came oh. down here talking about it. Oh, but yes, I knew he was talking about it. So he went and told his friends about that today. He went and had a big fun time with that. He's, oh, we splashed. We, I got the girl wet, blah, 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 ha, 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 ha. <laughs> And that's what it's all about. It isn't, it isn't necessarily every time all about making the sale. Right. You know, it's about doing stuff that's going to eventually lead to making the sale. You know, I, in his case, seriously, if, if you know, mom's going to be looking at these things, he's probably going to want, she's going to want maybe 
something along there. She's, mom's going to want that, and he's going to really dig that. The girlfriend's going to love that, too. And maybe one of these in here, you know. That's my, if this was, you know, a real, I'm buying, making a buying sale. All of that, maybe that. They might think that's kind of fun. But that, no, they're not buying that. Boy, it was fun creating that talk. And that's, that's kind of the stuff that we, we like to do. All right. Internet world, got a questions about those retouched images? Let's okay. check it out. So we have a question about a lot of the, it's tricky because a lot of these I think you're going to go into. Mm -hmm. But um, can you explain from Amy R how you go about selling a tightly cropped image in large sizes like eight by ten, sixteen by twenty, etc. Since it was taken very tight, would larger sizes make it even more tight? She wants to know. Okay, um, I, I think which I think what she's asking is. Well, I'll answer it two different ways. Okay. Um, one of the things is that, yes, if you sell, if you do this really, really tight headshot, and the mom comes in and says, I want a 16 by 20, it's going to be a big old head. Yes. Big head on the wall. Yeah. And I, frankly, do not have a problem with that. I mean, you will see, see images along those lines that are big heads on walls. Now, it, it gets weird <laughs> since I used to be in a trailer with seven foot ceilings, you know, yeah. little tight quarters and you got the big head hanging over. It does get weird, but you don't necessarily always stay in a trailer. You know, if it's a house, like if it was a house like this with this type of ceiling like y'all have in here, that looks like about at least 20 feet, maybe or more. Yeah. Um, in that type of environment, you got a big head right here. It, yeah. it, it's kind of neat. It looks kind of cool. So to yeah. be on, the whole brutal honesty there is, if I'm not gonna, if I can't persuade them maybe to an image like, like our girl here with the 2011 with her hair and her shoes and laying on the floor, if I can't persuade them into an image that is about three quarter like that for a big image, that's a 30 by 40. Yeah, that's at least 30 inches by 40 inches. And so that. If I can't persuade them that this would look better and they want the big head, I'm going to sell them the big head. Right. You know, absolutely okay. sell them the big head. So I, I think that's what she's asking. Actually, a lot of people are wondering about the aspect ratio of cropping like full frame 4 by 6 to an 8 by 10 because 8 by 10 and also crops 4 in. by 5 crops in quite a bit. So yes. how do you deal with that with those tight images? The internet world did not look through my camera. However, the studio audience did. And, and yesterday, multiple times during breaks and stuff, they asked me about those black lines inside my camera. And they was like, well, what's that? Well, There's like big ink marks inside there. Well, um, you can have an aftermarket done. You can have these lines drawn on your, on your chip, on your um, screen inside your camera. And I think Canon sells one, I think. But there are definitely some af several aftermarket companies out there that will draw these lines on your screen. And then when you put the screen in the camera, when you look through the, the camera, I see the 8 by 10 aspect ratio. And everything that I shoot is, in, is considering the 8 by 10 aspect ratio. I'll use, uh, I'll use this as an example if it's up on the screen right now the image that's on the screen. That, if you notice, there's, there's air space below her feet and there's air space below her, above her head. And that is because, you know, I was pretending she's buying an 8 by 10. On the back of the camera, I think y'all heard me yesterday when the senior was looking at the back of the camera, I said something about those two lines. Mm -hmm. Just ignore those two lines. Mm -hmm. That's not really there. Well, in actuality, uh, on the 1DX and several of the other Canon DSLR cameras, they have that in your custom function where you can add the 8 by 10, 4 by 5 crop ratio, and it drops those lines in. Now, it does not drop the line on the image. It's just it's sort of like an overlay. Well, I shoot everything for the 8 by 10 crop ratio. If they order a 4 by 6, well, they get the whole image. They get more. If they order a 5 by 7, they get just a little bit more. If they order an 11 by 14, they get a little bit more. If they order an 8 by 10, a 16 by 20, 20 by 24, they get the 8 by 10 crop ratio. If they order a wallet sized image, then they get just a little bit more than an 8 by 10 crop ratio. And so that's how I do it. I anticipate everything to be an 8 by 10. And then that solves that problem. I'm never cutting off too much. Mm -hmm. When I send it to the lab, everything is then center cropped. I don't, I don't actually have to go in and do an 8 by 10 cut, 
um, crop and a five by seven crop and all that stuff. I don't do that. I just send it off to the lab and say, send a crop everything. And that, again, what did I just do? Did y'all catch what I just did? What did, what did I do? Took off a post-it. I took post-it <laughs> notes off my wall is exactly what I just did. Because now I don't have to drop all that crop in. That, that almost sounds obscene, doesn't it? I dropped the crop. I dropped the crop. OK, I don't have to do that. I don't have to do that. I already pre-crop while I'm taking the picture. Okay. Ain't that some crop? OK. Uh, that that's is. really interesting because the first Hasselblad I shot with, it had those crop yes. guides on the viewfinder. And I yes. forgot that how handy that was while shooting. That's why I so do it now. Same reason. Hypothetically mm -hmm. saying, let's say, for example, myself or RN Cotton also has the same question. Let's say we haven't been shooting with that crop guide and we got in really, really tight and we didn't you know, crop for an 8x10 and the client really wants an 8x10 but they want everything in it. What's the solution? Is it getting maybe an 8x12 print? One solution is an 8x12. Another solution is to grow the image. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to allow her, him, her. Uh, R and Cotton, not sure. Uh, him, her. <laughs> to get written on the board, OK? Sweet. And we're going to ah. call grow image. Awesome. And I'll, I'll try to grow an image in the next segment when we play it in Photoshop. There's a way, certain, that happens to me sometimes where the mom goes, I don't like the way you cut in the head. And they want it just like they saw it on the proof. And so you have to grow the image, OK? Perfect. Good deal. So right let's on. look at. Let's look at these images, not retouched. We're going to do this much faster. So here we are. This is straight out the camera. Let me just make sure this is straight out the camera. This is reset all. Yes. OK. So these, nothing has been done to these. And I'm going to go much faster. Notice his eyes. Notice the lines, on, wrinkles, the, double, the two catch lights in her eyes. Highlight weirdnesses, look at the floor, look at the little bit of wrinkle on the background. Much fat, no, look at, the, look at that dot on her arm. What is that, a mole? That one's still pretty good. That one's pretty good. That one, look at, look at the line. This was, this was the feminine crop, remember I, I did two? I didn't retouch that one. Feminine crop, masculine crop. Look at the uh, blood vessels in his forehead, took that out. That was the one we did with the other uh, light. All right, moving on. There, there's that same, same thing. Look at the floor. High key. I don't know why I did that. There he's kind of blinky. Then he wasn't blinky. And then he was kind of forehead problem. Then that was better. There's that one straight out the camera. That one straight out the camera. That, that was the one I, I grew all the trees. Oh, yeah. See the building behind her? Actually, I think it was that one. Camera dude. This was the one without a flash. This was the one with a flash. Without, with. Without, with. No, doggone it, that was, I did that wrong. This is without the flash. This is with the flash. Without, with. Without, with. OK, there we go. And this was him getting ready. This was him get preparing. This was the first one. And this is the splashy one. Is that right? All right. All right. Now, what I'm going to do is what I would really do is I would go through these, and I would look through, and I would say, all right, let's see. In bridge, we had that head tilt I didn't like, so I'm going to delete. And that one, like that one, like that one, that one, that one, good, good. Don't like that. Didn't like that. And which one was it? It was, I think, delete, keeper, 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 keeper. Uh, delete, keeper, delete, delete, keep, delete, 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 keep. All right, so there you go. That's, that's very real, what you just saw. I go through them just that fast. So this would be the moment, let's just say, when the customer has come in. You know, I did the first click, 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 six shots. Maybe I shot one, and then I shot another one right behind it because I knew he was in that feminine tilt or, or whatever. Well, all those images still get transmitted to the computer, even though I delete it on the after it's, 
it's already transmitted by the time the customer looks at them. And so, well, I don't, I don't like that one. Oh, hey, I'm going to delete that one. I'll delete it off the camera, but it's already in my computer. And it, it does happen. It's very rare, but it does happen where they made the wrong decision. And, and if it is that much better, I keep the one. I keep the one they said to delete. And then you have it on both cards too, right? Uh, absolutely. So you still have two back. It's still, it's still in multiple places. But that is rare. I mean, that would be, say, if I did 100, nah, it's more like 500 seniors. That might happen one time. Okay. But for the most part, if they say make it go away, I make it go away. All right. So after I have done this process of going through editing really, really crap, really, really quick, the next thing I have to do in Bridge is I have to renumber them. Well, actually, in reality, the next step, they're, they're in a, a hot folder, okay? They're, they, everything gets sent to one specific folder, one specific folder, one specific folder. From that point, the next thing that happens is I need to move them into the customer folder. And my hierarchy looks like this. I have a folder. I have the hard drive. We're going to call this sample workflow that you're seeing on the screen right now. Let's say that's my hard drive. Then on the hard drive, I have a date, um, August 27th, 2013. Inside that folder, I have the customer name folder, OK? John Smith, Susie Q, whatever their name is, all right? Inside the customer name folder is where I throw all the images. So in the case of the Creative Live people that I photographed, which is these people here, I'm going to pretend that this is in the customer name folder. Okay? And I'm going to highlight the images, which is I, I click the first one, then I hit Command or Control A. And then I come up here to Tools, Batch Rename. Okay? And it gives me this little dialog that pops up. And in this case, I'm going to name these, <coughs> name this person, CL dash today for the sake of conversation. And then sequential numbering is going to start with one. I have, you can have two digits, you can have three, four, five, six digits. I only use two. You know, you can have all sorts of options. Down here, it's showing me right here, new file name, CL dash today. It's showing me what the file is going to look like. And then I just click rename. And so if you notice, all these images have now been renamed CL Today-01 all the way CL Today-27. Okay, let's say I have more images now come in. And again, I'm, I'm always looking for ways of speeding up my world and, and bridge Adobe people. They realize, hey, Kirk wants his world sped up as much as possible. And of course, everybody else too realizes that. Well, what could we do to speed his world up? Well, let's say more images come in. And these three images on the screen right now are the next three images that just came in. And now I need to pick up the numbering from 27, right? right. Because the next one's going to be 28, 29, 30. Watch what happens when you go tools, battery name, boom. Photoshop already knows that. See right there, sequential number 28. It, uh, at this point, the next set that come in is much faster. I don't, have to, I don't have to put CL today. I don't have to put the number. All I do is go tools, rename, and then click the word rename. I'm not going to do it because I, I already got these named what I want. But I think you understand how fast that can happen. Yeah, and, and so that's just a little time saver that Adobe done that. Thank you, Adobe. Appreciate it. Keep those workflow speed things coming. Love that stuff. So it, as you can tell, uh, um, if you're really starting to think right now with, with Bridge, you're, you're saying, well, it kind of works like Lightroom, huh? I mean, it, it, it doesn't work exactly like Lightroom, but it's the same concept. It is a, Lightroom is primarily a file management software. Now, because my, my file management, because of the way it works, is that I want a folder date on the folder. And then from there, I want inside of that customer name, and then that's where I want the files to be stored. I already have a system. Now, let's say you, for whatever reason, the type of photography that you do, need to be able to later call up all girls six foot tall with blue dresses on and blue eyes. Man, that would be wonderful if I could just request 
to have all girls six foot tall with blue eyes and blue dresses. Wouldn't that be just wonderful? Man, I would need something like that in my system. Now, before I go further, do you think I need something like that? No. If I'm going to need to find a customer's file, what do I need to know? Their name. Their name. What else do I need to know? Year. The year that they graduated and? School probably. Mm -mm. No. When you shot uh, them. The day I shot them. Yeah. That's it. I mean, that's all I really need to know. And then I can find the customer's file. Once I find the customer, which I have their name, I have the date that I took the picture, and the year, of course, that I took the picture, August 27, 2013, and the name is Kirk Vogel, Susie Q. I go straight to Suzy Q's folder, and at that point in time, if Suzy Q wants to order an 8 by 10 I take the folder, I send it to the lab, I take the image, excuse me, send it to the lab, order the 8 by 10 what else am I going to need in the future? See, I'm not taking these files and selling them to, say, a magazine, where the magazine calls me up and says, hey, Kirk, we need, we need something, we need a, a girl in a blue dress with blonde hair. I don't do that. I sell to the person. And so once the person buys it, it isn't often that they come back and buy more. It happens. But, and if it happens, they're going to give me their name and the date we took the pictures. So, so for that reason, bridge is all I need. Lightroom, on the other hand, will let you key in all sorts of information like that. Yeah. Do I need that? No. Thus, why spend the 100 bucks? That's my reasoning to buy Lightroom. Now, if you need it, then Lightroom does a great job of that. But like Bridge came with Photoshop. You know, it's part of Photoshop. And when I bought Photoshop, it had Bridge. And so it's wonderful for that kind of thing. Now, there are some photographers out there that do a lot of volume work. And from what I understand, the way Lightroom organizes that volume work, it is wonderful. And if I was a high volume shooter, I might actually use Lightroom because of what I've, I've been shown. But for the low volume that I am, Bridge does a fantastic job. So I, that's for me. That's, that's me and my system. I'm, I'm back to my sticky notes on the, on the wall. See, I'm, I'm, this is my flow. This is my sequential, how I go from step one, step two, step three, all the way through the process. Make sense? Mm -hmm. So you can only, you're the only one that can answer that. So don't think I'm, I guess I'm, I'm, I'm repeating myself because if someone comes in right now, all of a sudden in the, on the, into, the, into the creative live world, they're like, golly, Kirk sure was knocking Lightroom. But I'm not knocking it. It just doesn't work with my flow. Okay. It, that's it. I'm not knocking it. I think it's a really good piece of software. It is pretty too. I will tell you that. You know, and I have, I have talked to some, some real Lightroom pros out there and told them my system and the way I use it. And, and every one of them across the board says, well, I can see why you use Bridge. And that's, that's just sort of validated it because I don't mind buying the thing, but they really validated that, yeah, what you're doing is you're doing it the right way. You're doing it for your system and your way of doing things. So, you know, you wanted me to talk Lightroom. I'm talking Lightroom. Um, I think it's a wonderful piece of software, and if it's working with your workflow, I'm not saying get, with, get rid of it. But that's my world. Cool so far? Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, a few things inside of Bridge, as far as the organizing process. Across the top here, if you notice this, Kirk default, this is something that once I got this whole thing set up the way I wanted it, I then created a new default, and, that I, and I named it Kirk Default. Now, like, like I'm going to switch over to Essentials, watch. And it, see how there's, this whole thing just looked totally different. Yeah. And so, you know, I, I, there's keywords, and there's ISO speeds, and there's exposure time, and there's camera raw setting, and it, and it laid it out on, on the board here, and there was these favorites, and then there was a folders tab. And see, I could take this folders tab and, and move it down into here, and put it right there and you know I could get this whole thing laid out differently and once I get it to where I like it oh I love the way this is working now boom I could create my own tab so that one anytime you know you've 
you something messes up or you want to you you want to go exactly to where you're used to working doop, you click yours and bam everything flies into place so for for people who have say one main computer but maybe three people a studio where three people use that computer let's say there's a team that works in the morning and a team that works in the evening or something like that and one person Susie Susie Smith might like it this way but Jackie Jean might like using it in a different way. Well, yeah, you can all have their own little tab, and they can be set up exactly the way they like it. Yeah. But I'm pretty sure that you guys are the ones that are going to be doing this. Or maybe it's your wife, you know. You might like it a certain way, and your wife might like it a different way. So, hey, get your own little tabs. Okay. Make sense? Okay. So, with that said, that's one neat thing about that inside um, a, a Bridge. There's also some preferences inside Bridge to where you can set up you know, the color background you like, the interface can be the coloring that you like, the favorite items, there's, a, there's a, like a default area to the favorite items, there's the way the thumbnails are showed, there's the way it plays back, the metadata, the keywords, the labels, the cache, the startup script, the advanced, the output. So all these little things, all these little things can be tweaked to get Bridge working exactly the way you want it to be working, okay? After you get bridge all tweaked like that, then there is camera raw preferences, okay? Which is a whole different set of preferences. This is how Adobe Camera Raw applies things and does part of the conversion. Now, at this, you know, we could, like I told you, my workflow system, you know, th what I'm, those, just those two things, that's about 20, 30 minutes worth of let's go and let, let's decide do you want this or do you want that? Let, let's tweak this, let's tweak, do you like this? Do you not? You know, this is, this is not the way. This is not, all of that is such personal decisions that you almost need to go there individually on your own and go through each little step and say, okay, you know, which, how, which setting is best for me and my system? Thus the reason I went ahead and made this, these movies, okay? The first move part of the movies is two hours, courtesy of H&H &H Color Lab, that where they literally take every button inside of Bridge, and they go over every button. This button does this and this. In fact, I caught myself about two hours and 45 minutes into it, it's like, oh, will this thing ever end? And I, I'm telling you, it, 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 you have to watch it. My daughter, when she decided that she wanted to start doing photography on her own, I made her sit there and watch it. And it was hilarious because she, were, she watched like 10 minutes of the first one, okay? And there's two segments about Bridge, and each one of them is over an hour. And she, were, she watched 10 minutes of the first one, and then... After watching 10 minutes, she just said, I ain't watching that no more. <laughs> and she skipped it. And she went right to the next movie, which was a little short 10-minute movie. And she started setting up her Photoshop. And, and then she did her little presets. And she got her actions. And she got it all set up. And then she starts doing stuff. And she goes, Daddy, how come whenever I click blah, 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 and it won't, and it doesn't go up? I said, didn't watch the movies, did you? I did. I did watch. I said, you probably watched about 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> and it was like, how does he know these things? Well, because all of these crazy questions that you're going to have are addressed in that movie. If you're an H&H &H customer, this is free to go watch on their website right now. Okay. So anyway, this is, this is also part of my workflow system. They have allowed me to show those movies in that video. So, but you know, this is how my bridge on the screen is set up. I have three across. Now, let's say you don't like three across. Let's say you wish, I'm gonna move this little slider down, just say you would like four across. No problem, you can have four across. Let's say you look at that and you go, well, I don't like all those grids. I wish you could get rid of those lines. How about that? Got rid of the lines for you, okay? Or let's say you wanted just one image at a time to look at, no problem. Let's say you wanted a bunch of images. There are times when you want to look at a bunch of them. You just move that little slider across the bottom okay. and tweak it the way you want. Get it set up however you want. Personally, I like the lines, and I like to see three at a time, roughly. Three at a time. There we go. Since, and why do you think you're starting to get weirded with me? 
Why do you think I like to see three at a time? Because you do six. I do six shots. I can have thus. I can have six shots on the, the six that I did right there on the screen. I can look at all six. If I'm looking at seven, one's got to go. Right. Something, something happened. Why is there seven? Oh yeah, that's right. I shot two. Oops. The camera went click click. You know, whatever. Make sense? Okay. Another thing. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna see how good she is. She, she said something. You said something. And I wonder if you n realize why does Kirk shoot six? Do you know? You, you, the very, one of the very last things you said mm -hmm. is the answer. See if you can figure it out. You got it? No? I hate to, I'm putting you on the spot and you're like, oh, I don't get it. Was it Hasselblad? It was Hasselblad. It was? Yeah. I shot with Hasselblad for so long. Yeah. And Hasselblad, and had, it was 120, still. 12 shots, 220, 24 yep. shots. Most every yep. senior walked in with four outfits. Uh, hello, 220. You yep. would shoot six shots in each outfit and on the way send one roll of film off to get, be processed. And weddings, you used to only get one roll of film, 12 <laughs> shots No, for I, one wedding. A wedding That's what was, I had to do. Oh, is that how your weddings yeah, would work? My well, first wedding, that was the rule. <laughs> in my world, Weddings were uh, two pro two 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 twenty two five packs of two twenty. So ten rolls of film, twenty four shots each, 20, 240 shots. It was like boom. That's what I did every time I did a wedding with a with a Hasselblad. But that's where the six shots come from. Totally Hasselblad. Makes sense. And it is so funny that when you get for years and years and years into a pattern like that of six <laughs> shots. So here comes digital, and I could shoot hundreds. And I still only shoot six because at six, my brain just shuts down. It's, it's hilarious. Anyway, <laughs> so, all right. So that's just some little, little tweaky things about um, Bridge. Another little tweaky thing about Bridge is let's say, like, for example, this JPEG folder right here where all of the retouched files are underneath CL fixed. Let's say I wanted to quickly have access to that. I could just simply take and drag that down here into my favorites folder. And so now I can go over here to sample workflow, but then click JPEG and it brings me right to it. So what that, the purpose is, is remember I told you I have a hot folder that the camera transmits straight to that hot folder. And it's always being transmitted to that hot folder. Well, that hot folder might be here. And all these images drop in into the hot folder. From there, if I want to move the images somewhere, let, let me just make a folder and I'll do that. File, new folder, move. Let's say I want to move these JPEGs, this JPEG folder, into that hot folder, into that folder that I just made. I, I highlighted them, right click, move to, look, there it is. That's the last folder I just made. Did you see that? When I click move, that move folder, it just took everything out of that JPEG folder and it dropped it into this move folder. Mm. Got that? Mm -hmm. And so that's how I get my files that I, that I shot. That's how I move it from one place to another so quickly. Is right before the senior walked in, I had created her folder. Thus, it was the, it's the very first folder on the top that comes up when I highlight them all and then move them into that folder. Boom, that's it. It's, it's just that fast. That's nice. Now, if I wanted to copy them for some reason, you could copy them into a folder, or you could move them into it. I don't know if you caught that. That was, that was some of the options. I could, look, copy, duplicate, move the trash, move to <laughs> all of here, or copy to all of these different places. So those were some of the things. And to get that dialog box, you r use your little right, right click. And in my case, with the little stylus, that's pushing this little button right here, hovering and pushing my little button. It's like doing a, a right click. Okay. All right? Um, several people at the break was asking about my Wacom tablet. And I, I use a Wacom tablet. It, it's weird how, like, if, I'm open, if I open up Word and I'm going to do some sort of typing, I, I can't use the Wacom tablet because that's how my brain is. The, you don't use a Wacom tablet in Word. I, I can't even do it. I have to put the pen down and get the mouse and use the mouse whenever I'm outside of Photoshop or Bridge. <laughs> but if I'm in Bridge, the mouse works, yeah. yeah. But I, it's like I can't do it. I have to, I have to use the pen. It's, this, it's the way I've done it for so long that if I don't have the pen in my hand, I simply cannot do it. Another question that might be coming in right now is, well, which Wacom tablet do we use? 
Yeah. Well, I use the, the six, six inch by nine one at the studio. That's the one I use. I love that one. A lot of times people think, oh, well, I can afford it. I'm going to get a present, whatever. I'm going to get the big one. Bad move. Don't get the big monster one, okay? Because this is what happens. You, you have this big Wacom tablet right here, and to get everywhere your pen touches, that's where you are on the screen. So if you have this big Wacom tablet like this, and you want to get down to the bottom, you're way over here. Now you want to get way up to the top, you have to go over to here. And then and you're, and you're moving, and you, you got this big muscle on this side and no <laughs> muscle on this side. And you know, that's what it is. Whereas when you got a smaller tablet, to get from the top to the bottom, it, my, my, the back of my palm just never moves. Another thing, when you use a Wacom tablet, you're going to get, I don't know how close the camera guy can get to me, but you're going to get one of these right here. Uh huh. That is a, what I call a Photoshop callus. Okay, and it comes from your finger, your little finger touching right here, and then moving around like this. And so I get this big bump right here, and you'll have one. And it's funny, I've, ta I've, I've had other people <coughs> who do a lot of Photoshop, and they all got the same bump. <laughs> and they use the, the wa maybe it should be called the Wacom tablet scar or something, I don't know. But anyway, that's another little thing that someone asked me about and I wanted to address. So there you go. That is just really quick, a quick, fast, 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 fast overview of Bridge. Now, if you are a member of Overshooters Anonymous and you need to, you don't like to delete, okay, and you would rather just have tags and things like that, yes, you can do that inside Photoshop too. See, we could, we could give this five stars. We could give this three stars, we can, we can tag colors, we can give different color codes to different ones, and you can, I don't do any of that. I, I'm, I'm editing basically in the camera, so all those stars and colors and codes and all that stuff is just useless for my system, you know? So, so, so after I get them all numbered, and I have them all sort of organized. The next thing that's got to happen is you've got to start converting them. And oh, there's a question. Yeah. There are a couple topic or couple topical questions before we move on to con right. converting the files. Um, for instance, you were saying for the files that you just don't need anymore, do you delete them forever? Off forever. Your system? Forever. Forever. And you only keep the good ones. I only keep the good ones. Okay. Why keep the bad ones? Okay. My, my, and frankly. Why shoot? The, why did you shoot it in the first place? I hate to be that guy, but tell me again why you shot a bad picture. <laughs> Take your time. All right. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. Should have thought that through before you ever pushed the button. Don't. It, I, I, want, I like bad ones to be accidents. Well, it was an accident. Oh, okay. I can accept that. Cause, well, she blinked. You, what? She's going to down the road go, I really want that blink shot. Not going to happen. You know, and then and then for the people, the people who have asked that question, I, I ask the question back whenever people ask me that. You really, why would you delete it forever? Well, what if, what if they come back and, and what if they want one of those? My question back to them is, how long have you been shooting? Oh, I've been shooting for a year, or I've been shooting for 10 years, or I've been shooting for 15 months, or whatever. In that, whatever time frame it is, how many times has that ever happened? <clears throat> well, well, it's never, never happened, but it, it might happen. Yeah, and it might rain tomorrow, and it might all kinds of things. You might get in an accident. You might be dead. You know, let's go through the list of mites. Man, I don't live my life for might. I, I live it for what are they really going to do. They want this one. They want the good one. Man, save the hassle. Learn to delete. Delete. It's your friend. <laughs> cool. Powerful button. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yep, and it goes, it isn't really deleted. It just goes into the trash until I empty the trash. So yeah. there has been times when I went, delete, 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 and I, then I zoom in and I go, oh, wait, what, what's with the blur? What was I thinking? And so then I'll have to go back to the trash and go, oh, this one is a little better and pull it back in. So yeah. Okay, cool. That, that probably makes everybody just, everybody in the world went from this to, oh, okay. Here's <laughs> the trash bin. Yes, never empty that. Right. <laughs> so yes, in bridge, when you hit delete, it goes into the trash bin. All right. Whew. Well, we had another we had another question, and I think this will a few actually about when you rename and renumber your files, and then you lose the original, and you need to find the backup, but the file is renamed. How do you find that? Wait. 
<laughs> so when you rename, do you lose the original name forever? Yeah, you... well, I don't, I don't want the original. Like, the, 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 the crazy canon name? What was yeah. that? Like, yeah, the... so the, you, have, you rename it. And then you already have like a backup system, maybe off-site, or you have a few backups. Mm -hmm. uh, after you rename it, do you re-backup again so that it's all synced up? Oh, they're wondering. Yeah. Well, if you know, if it has the original Canon name on that backup file, but you've renamed it on your, you know, your working hard drive, how do you, how does that match? Okay, I have, I have a, I think it's called Carbon Copy. It's a, it's a, it's a Mac software. It's not on the Mac. It's not on the. Uh, laptop, it's on the main computer at the studio, but it's called Carbon Copy, just Google Carbon Copy, I think, it's a very inexpensive, awesome little piece of software that um, it's constantly cloning and copying my hard drive. It, it, every 10, 15 minutes, I think I have it set to copy the hard drive to another hard drive. Then every 10 to 15 minutes, it takes that hard drive and copies it to the Drobo. And so thus, it's in three places. So if I rename it here, but it's already copied it to the secondary hard drive. Well, now it has a new, new image to copy over to the hard drive. And it is this one, the one that is named the customer's name. That's the important one. All the other ones are, are useless. But remember, I'm working on this stuff right now, right now. And it's going to a hot folder. And so if the original Canon name is there, it's in that hot folder. So all the stuff that gathers up on the other hard drive in that hot folder, periodically, I could delete. I think I'm answering the question, right? OK, mm -hmm. I, I think I understand the question. But yeah, the original number means nothing to me. Okay. Correct. Can I ask one? Yes. Uh, at this point, my pictures are already in the computer. It's not in a camera. It's not like a, it's not a, it's not a, a I don't know, like a, is, is already in, because you say now you're going to do what after this, this step? The next step, the, com the images are now in the customer's folder, uh -huh. and we're going to begin to convert them. Right now, they're raw files, the CR2 okay, raw files. Okay, so you want to convert in JPEG. JPEG. But before you convert JPEG, don't you do the little tweaks? Yes, that's what I'm about to show you. Oh, so you do the, the little tweaks before you convert? Yes. Okay. The little tweaks. Okay. Yeah, that's, what, that's what's coming up next. We ready to roll with that? Yes, sir. Good. Sure. Little tweaks coming up. So one of the first things that happens is I have, you can set up Bridge and Adobe Camera Raw to default to a certain sequence of default settings that you use the most, okay? So what you're looking at right now with all these images is straight out of the camera, okay? Now, my default setting is this right here, default. So you'll notice stuff starting to happen to the images on the screen. Notice the edges are getting a little burned. She got a little more, they get a little more contrasty. Um, some sharpness is dropping in. There's all sorts of things that is happening to, to these images right now. All right, so that is actually, when I say that the images come in and they render, that's what I mean. They come in and apply this default setting to everything that comes in. So presets is, is your friend. So like if I knew, for example, I wanted this image to be black and white, mm -hmm. I can just click this image, right click, go to develop settings, and then change black and white. And that's a preset that I pre-organized and pre-done. I know, for example, that when I shoot a high key image, see this dark vignette on the edge? Mm -hmm. I don't want a dark vignette on a high key. Right. right click, I want either a white vignette or I want remove vignette, okay? So those are some, some default settings that I can do. Um, I don't know, let's see what this looks like. Let's right click, develop setting, let's change to blue. There, I can make it a blue image, okay? Right click, develop setting, sepia. You see that change? Okay, and there's all sorts of, of presets, bright black and white. There's bright color. That's kind of, it's kind of a stripped out color, you know, it's weird. Sometimes I use it though. Uh, how about vintage bright? That's kind of, that's another effect. How about uh, just vintage? That's kind of a stripped out color look. And then there's grainy fuzzy. 
And so there's all these different presets that I have. And again, that's part of my workflow system to where you can install those on your computer. I'm going to go back to default and put him back to where he was. All right. And so you can go through these very, very rapidly, just clicking and right clicking and making these little default settings. You can create your own little default setting, something that you find yourself doing a lot in Bridge. Make your own little default. And, the, and where all that stuff happens, when I double click it, it opens up this dialog. Now, this probably looks very familiar oh, yeah. to the Lightroom people out there. Yeah. All of a sudden, <laughs> finally, something familiar. Yeah. This is Adobe Camera Raw. So whether, again, you're in Lightroom or whether you're in Bridge, when you get to the conversion stage, you are going to use Adobe Camera Raw. OK? OK? We're all in a happy place? Good. So this is where all these different settings, you know, there's, there's this crop tool and, you know, all these, we can rotate and zoom in, you know, all these different things are here in Adobe Camera Raw. Now, all the different settings down here allow for all sorts of tweaking, like we can add clarity, see how it kind of made it kind of a, a special kind of contrast, all right? Or we could just add straight contrast or remove contrast. We can add exposure or we can remove exposure. All right? I have this little warning set that when I start to see this red, that's, it's done got so white, there's no detail. Same thing, I got this dark set to where now there's, that's black or, or just dark without detail. And so I have those two little warnings set up in here. All right? The, uh, the exposure is exactly what it sounds like. Contrast is exactly what it sounds like. Highlight makes the, just the highlights go up and down. So it's, again, it's exactly what it sounds like. Shadows makes the shadows go up and down. White makes just the whites go up and down. Black makes just the blacks go up and down. So, I mean, to me, it's just, it ain't rocket science. <coughs> they named Adobe, graciously named it what it is. Okay? Now, over here on this, there's a tab setting all across the top. This tab allows you back access to all these prefet, presets. So there's that grainy, fuzzy effect. That's removing yet. Sepia tone, black and white, reset, default. And I can put it right back to the way it was default. And your default is defaulting from it's when the one, you brought it's, it in. It is a collection of settings. See right here? Watch. Let me reset. Watch. Reset turns everything to zero. See down here, zero, 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 zero. Whereas, watch with default. When I go to default, now I have plus five on the highlights, minus 10 on the shadows, plus 10 on the whites, zero on the black, plus 40 on the vibrance, plus 10 on the saturation, plus 20 on the clarity. So it's a, it's a sequence of things that I find, I have found that I use the most. That's what default is. So you did that in Bridge. I had pr no, no. This is the, this is Adobe Camera Raw oh, presets, and no, it, I I created that default, and okay. then I saved it. See right here. This is this is your presets, and then down here you can trash defaults. That's what the trash can is. Mm -hmm. Or if you could have all sorts of crazy tweaks, we could create a, another default. Okay. So that's what that's what all these little and you name it whatever you want to name it. Hold that thought. Mm -hmm. um, and so you get them all set the way you want them set. My, this, this default is one that I wrote to get to the point where my images look the most normal to me. From here, I tweak. I may look at this and say to myself, all right, that, the blacks need to come up a little bit. The shadows need to come up a little bit. The whites need to come down just a little bit. I like the exposure, the clarity, maybe just a hair more clarity. All right, now, now I like this. So I make a little minor tweak. And this is, again, when, when, Kirk, are you making these tweaks? Let me tell you, I'm doing this while she's changing into the next outfit. Oh, wow. You understand? So, that's, so this cannot be something that takes a lot of time. That's why I have the presets, you see? To get, first I get to the default, then I get it to where I'm, I'm making slight minor shifting of shadows and highlights and things like that. Make it sense? Did that answer your question or you have it? Nope, go ahead. No, I'm, I'm, I just think this way. A lot of people probably out there like me say, I want to be you. I want to edit like you. So I, I think probably a lot of people, my question or, or it's just me, 
what are the numbers that you, you, is your formula, like a, what, what do you, you for your uh, default preset? So I, I know that from that you're going to tweak a little bit, depend on the image that you shot, but like a, you have that one that is almost the, the magic number for well, contrast, for, yeah. the, can, can you show that or yeah. it takes too long? Yeah, I mean long? it was, no, it was zero on the exposure, 5,500 on the temperature, let's start at the top, 5,500 on the temperature, zero on the tint, zero on the exposure, zero on the contrast, plus five on the highlights, minus 10 on the shadows, plus 10 on the whites, uh, plus 20 on the clarity, 40 on the vibrance, and 10 on the saturation. That is my default. The only other defaults, there was zero here as far as the curve. There was the sharpening is 60, minus 1, 55, 30, 20. This is the noise reduction, 30, 50, 0, 25, 50. Down that column, then zero on the uh, hue satur uh, HL, S HSL and grayscale, none of that, no, satura no saturation adjustments, no hue, sat no hue adjustments. I'm gonna show you how I use that in a, in a mm -hmm. little bit. Um, no split tone adjustments, no lens correction. The effect is I have the post crop vignette set to minus 50, 45, 35, 90, and 75, and mm -hmm. then no camera, well, the default camera calibrations, and then that's, that's presets, and that's it. That's, that's my default. Thank you, great. Sure. Now, every time you hit one of these, like if I hit this to change to sepia, all of that just changed. See how my numbers change now? Look, look at the clarities at plus mm -hmm. 20. The black went to zero, plus 10. All that changed, this changed, this, all, this, all those numbers changed all over the planet. And that's what those presets do. They, they make, it's a, that's why it's called a preset. It presets all those numbers. Once, once the number, once it's there, you can then tweak accordingly. If you find, for example, let me go to reset, let me go to default. Let's say you find yourself, you open it up, an image and you catch yourself, man, I always drop to 20, 20 plus on the black. I drop 20 plus on the black. I drop 20 plus on the black. I drop 20. Every time I open an image, I, I seem to want to drop 20 plus on the black. Hey, rewrite the default to com compensate for the fact that you're always adding 20 on the black. See what I'm getting at? Mm -hmm. So then make yourself a new default. Make it your default. Cool? Mm -hmm. All right. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I see you always go back to re uh, you always go back to one and then you go back to default. Well, certain Do they stack. Yes, yeah, see certain things like I'll use I'll use watch when I remove vignette. All it does is remove vignette. But right. watch, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna reset default. Watch, I'm gonna turn it sepia, but I'm gonna remove vignette. Notice it did not turn it back to color. Okay. So certain things only affect certain areas. Okay. So that's why if now I wanted to get it back to color. I, and I click blue, click sepia, click, well wait, I want that, I just wait, let me reset the whole thing, then go back to my default. This is my starting Same. point. Okay, gotcha. Make okay. sense? So it's like you're building. Yeah, I, and look, I'm talking a lot. I mean, can you imagine how quickly this happens? I mean, it's just, it's just gone. So it take, this is taking way longer to explain mm -hmm. than for sure that it does, and, and th then you can do it. In Bridge is to, because now you made your own, or you, I want to make my own too. Uh, it's easy, it has a button just to yeah, make your own look, preset. Yeah, look, let's say, look, let's make a, let's make a crazy, retarded looking, Instagram. creative live <laughs> preset. Instagram. Instagram, yeah. How's that? Oh, we're gonna call that the creative mm. live preset. Watch, click right here. We're gonna call this. Okay, a very similar lightroom. Okay, and we're gonna, here's how you can adjust what's happening. You put a check mark on each one of these mm -hmm. of all the different things that you, you messed with. But of course, if you was really making it, you'd know what you messed with. Uh -huh. I'm just gonna check them all. Click OK. So look, we've got a creative live one now, right now. OK, so I'm going to take this. I'm going to reset the thing, go back to default. But you know what? Mm, boy, I really like that creative live one. Watch. Back. Bam. Yeah. OK. So it's real simple. Mm -hmm. Very, very simple to make. It's, um, and you can make gazillions. You can make, I don't think there's a limit. I don't know. As soon as I said that, watch the Adobe people are going to go, bring. Look, you can only do 2,000. I'm sorry, <laughs> Kirk. <laughs> sorry. Oops. Sorry, I'm saying you can't do it in the limit. Okay. Anyway, 
Cool, did that help? Yes, thank all right. you. So that, that is Adobe Camera Raw. That is all of these different settings. And there's, you know, there's tons of them. I'm gonna, I'm gonna cancel out of this, and I'm gonna show you, let me slip over to this. We're gonna pretend she has on a green dress. We're just gonna pretend. She does not have on a green dress. You're gonna see the dress change. But we're pretending that's not happening. Okay, I guess I should have put her in a different color if I really wanted to do this. But it, the blue looks so good on her. But we're pretending she has a green dress and we like, mm, why didn't I buy the green background? What was I thinking? Every senior this year has come in with green. If only I would have had the green black <laughs> Okay, watch this. We go over here, we change, we go to um, hue, and watch what happens. We're gonna shift the blues to green. Whoa, all right, where is it? I probably should show you this in Photoshop. It's way more dramatic in Photoshop. But see, okay, there it is. See her dress shifting to green? Okay, but again, we're pretending that's not happening to the dress. We're just pretending those the background. Forget the dress. One more time. Forget the dress. We're just looking at the background. We want to shift it to a green background. This was before. This is after. So why blue? Why, what's the point, Kirk? <laughs> Almost every background that I purchase, if, I'm, if it's going to be a... Um, non-traditional backgrounds, kind of like what you see on the screen right here. I, I try to buy things that lean to the blue world. And that is because I don't care what race you are, you do not have blue yes, in your sure. skin. Now, if you're doing stuff like this and the skin tones are shifting, you have big problems, okay? You have <laughs> serious color issues when you're photographing. You need to fix that before you ever play with this. Or maybe you live on planet Avatar, I don't know, okay? Where everybody's blue. <laughs> but in, in, on Earth, humans do not have blue in their skin, okay. all right? So notice, notice her face. Watch, I'm gonna undo it. I'm gonna redo it, I'm gonna undo it. Notice there is no change to her face. Now, what if she has blue eyes, mm -hmm. Kirk? Oh, yeah, you're freaking out those blue eyes. So that's why I said a second ago, I probably should show you how to do this in Photoshop. So when we start playing in Photoshop in the next segment, I'll, I'll remind me, if I, if I forget, I'll show you how to do this in Photoshop. The most common way I do this is Photoshop. But just wanted to show you that if you're all about getting it done before it ever hits Photoshop, it can be done right here in Bridge where we shifted the background color to green to better match that green dress she had. Boom, convert. And so thus a blue background can be any color out there That's without good. freaking out the skin. <coughs> cool? Mm -hmm. All right. Let's see if there's anything else in here that really is... The, the amount of vignette, see, that's another thing I do a lot. I really like a vignette on an image because what happens is it forces you into the face. So you, can, you may be a person who likes a real heavy vignette. I don't. You may be a person who likes a, just a touch of vignette. No problem. I like just a medium shade a little bit, somewhere about in there. But I caught myself having setting this over and over and over exactly the same way, so I just incorporated it into my default. I shoot more low-key images than I do high-key images, so whenever I shoot a high-key, I just take it out. That's why I had to create another preset that takes it off. And it on, on, I didn't want to mess up the rest of the image. All I wanted to do was take off the vignette. You just check that. Box. Yeah, so all I do is I come over here. If I wanted to take off this vignette, I click remove, and see, it took the vignette off. Yeah. Or I could add white if I want a white one. Or I could add a oh, dark vignette. So when you create that preset, you have all those checks? You just, just the you checks just check that vignette. pertain to that, yes. Okay. Not so the whole just, image, yeah. Okay, that makes But if you check everything, it's going, to it's going to do everything, okay. see? So yes, you can adjust those preset checks to adjust accordingly. Cool? 
Mm -hmm. All right, moving on. Let's see, Adobe Camera Raw, da 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 da. I guess the next thing I want to show you is let's, so we've gone, we, we haven't, but we've now gone through every one of the images. Watch, uh, yes we have, watch, right here. Okay, boom, boy, did I, did I check off, did I fix those in Adobe Camera Raw fast or what? So this one, this one, this one, every one of these now has been tweaked the way I wanted it. See, this one right here, I added, boy, I made it nice and bright. Uh, um, I made this one black and white. I added a bit of a blue sky to this one using that little bit of a, a trick that I showed y'all just a second ago. Instead of shifting it green, I just kept the blue and I saturated oh, it up. Sky. See? Got it. Make that sky. You can also, watch this. She had blue jeans on, so it was a little bit difficult. Watch, 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 watch. I'm going to go fast. Luminance. See what I did with the blue? This is normal. I darkened just the blue. If she didn't have blue jeans on, look what it's doing to her blue jeans. Right. You could take that blue way down like that. See, it ain't, messed, it ain't doing nothing to her face because there is no blue in the face. I could take green. Look at the trees. I want to lighten just the trees? No problem. Blues and greens are fun because there's no blues and greens in the face. See that? Yes, ma'am. Couldn't you go ahead and take the blues all the way up that you want? open the image and then use the history brush on the jeans okay but we're in raw conversion right now i could oh, okay. go over to this little thing somewhere over here and tell it to not do it right in here okay but yeah i do that a lot later in photoshop but okay. if in this scenario i just took it up i just took it a little bit to where the jeans look to me weird right there and right. they look you know they look white right there so right. i just did a little bit just to add a little bit of pizzazz nice. to it so Cool? So I look, I could lighten up the trees if I want. And there's all sorts of little things with this luminance. Luminance means brightness, okay? And you're, you're changing the luminance or brightness of all those different colors. Saturation means I'm adjusting the saturation. Watch, watch the blue. I can, I can make the blue grayscale, or I can make the blue real blue right here. That's what saturation means. Same thing with green. I can make it very saturated or I can leave it normal. And then hue is where I want to take way over here. I want to shift it from this color to this color or from that color to that color or, you know, where you're changing a color. So that doesn't happen a lot unless I'm shifting a color of a background. So that was another thing that I wanted to make sure you understood before we went on. So at this point, we have now tweaked all the images, you know, that she's, she's changed, we're in the red dress, we did, 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 red dress, now we go back and we take more pictures, and then we tweak, okay? Well, right before, before we leave to start photographing into the next outfit, what you're going to do, we're going to do that over here, is you're going to highlight those six images, and we're going to go Tools, Photoshop, Image Processor, and it's going to open up this dialog, okay? inside Photoshop. And what I'm saying to happen is I want you not the selected images. No, yes, excuse me. One, the selected images to process. See, process files from bridge, only six. <clears throat> Open first image to apply settings. No, I've already applied the settings. So make sure that's unchecked. Number two, it says, select location to save process images. So you could send them off somewhere else or save in same location. That's what I want. I want it right there inside the customer's folder. Number two, file type, save as JPEG, quality 12, convert to profile sRGB. That's what my lab wants. I could, I could custom set a size. Let's say I'm only doing web work. I could say, I want, I want the width not to be, oh, I don't know, I have a thousand on there now. A thousand pixels wide, a thousand pixels high, it's going to force it into that size. In this case, no, I want the full res JPEG. So I have that unchecked. I could save as PSDs. I could save as TIFFs. So if you're one of those people out there who wants to work in, as a TIFF, no problem. Just don't check JPEG. Come down here and check TIFF, and it'll do it for you. Number four, preferences. And this is, again, I'm about to, pull, about to pull another tab off of the board. Another, another thing that I caught myself doing all the time was applying portraiture first to every image. Now, you may or may not know about portraiture. You can buy it from imagenomics.com, imagenomics.com. It is a very, very good skin softening effect. 
I, I love the effect. I love how it softens up the skin and makes the skin so nice. Some people say it's too much. I'm okay with that. But in my fantasy photography world, to the customers that I sell to, they love it. Love it. So I then proceeded to write a nice little action that used portraiture in such a way that I liked it. So that action, see it says run action, KV workflow, KV workflow 2012 is where the action is stored and the name of the action is portraiture first run and I click check. And so what it's going to do is as the conversion process is happening, it's going to run this action. Y'all follow? So let's say you are, there's some action that you apply every time you open an image. Well, you could do it right now as part of your raw conversion. Y'all follow the power of that? So you could do like watermark right there. Yeah, you could do it right there. Okay. You know? And it would save it off somewhere for you. Okay. See what I'm getting at? Okay. So now at this point, I click run. And I put my pin down. I then walk off and start taking pictures of the senior in the next outfit. And you'll notice what's happening on your screen that those images are being opened by Photoshop. It's like having an extra employee. They're reading the raw format, opening it, apply, running that action, that portrait your first run, adding that little bit of softness, saving it off as a JPEG. I'm not touching the screen. I see camera. Hands up. I feel like I'm a master chef. Um, hands up. Okay. So. I'm now taking pictures, and Photoshop is running for me in the background, and I'm over here taking pictures of the customer. So how long does this take? I don't care. Somebody else is actually, Photoshop is working for me right now instead of me working for Photoshop. Cool? Mm -hmm. I don't even get paid to work for Photoshop. <laughs> Go. Understanding it's running it through portraiture right now? It is running it through portraiture right now. When you buy portraiture, like you have to buy one, I think they have, I don't know if they have, to, they have for one for Lightroom, one other one for Photoshop. So this one is the, 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 the portraiture for Photoshop. Correct. And the, you have to create an action putting that Correct. one instead. Yeah. Now, of course, that action is part of my workflow system. Uh huh. And sure get. Don't, don't think of that as I'm trying to sell you something. I'm just saying that you can write your own action. I'm going to show you how to do that in the next segment. Okay, you can write your own action if okay. you want. But if you want to use my actual, and that's why it's in my workflow system is because that's what I would get from people. Well, no, Kirk, I want to use your action. I want to use the one you use. No problem. It's in You're there. Giving, okay, great. And that way all my numbers and stuff are all right there. So if you notice on the screen, it has finished. It has done its, its bit. Cool? So that, that is basically up to the point now, I brought you through my workflow system to the point whereby we have gone through Bridge. It was a fast tour, but mm -hmm. you see how the flow of Bridge works, right. how I open them up into Adobe Camera Raw. Uh, well, actually, before that, I, I renumber them. I move them into the customer's folder. I use my little presets to make my life happen much, much quicker. I then go through them one at a time, one at a time, doing light, little slight tweaks, and then I start the conversion. Photoshop's working for me while I'm over there taking pictures. And then I do the next process, it would happen again. The next thing would happen, the same thing would happen next again. Um, she's going to change into another outfit. I'm going to sit here and work the files. You know, that was the last six that I did. And we go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. When they leave, I'm now going to have all those images ready to go to start doing my magic to them. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cool. Maybe, we in our happy good. place. Yes. So at this point, I'm, at this point, this sort of brings us to the next segment because the next segment I want to start opening Photoshop. So before we go, obviously, to the next segment, before we go to break, I'm feeling I'm feeling the, the, a little bit of love from the internet that they feeling want to ask some, me a bridge question. You're feeling yep. some questions. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we have a question from Photographics Miami. What about when you run the smoothing action? Uh, how does it applies it uniformly and you do not want this applied to the eyes? Yes, that is part of what portraiture does. Portraiture oh. seeks out a specific color and, and I guess that's why it's 
their gig. It's sort of this matrix or something. I don't know how they do it, but it seeks out a very specific color, and then it only applies the softening to that color. Now, eyes are, are not skin color, so it does not happen to the eyes. And I can feel the next question. Well, what about blonde hair? Yep, it happens to blonde hair. But I don't want it to happen to blonde hair. Tough. That, that's my honest answer. It's tough. I have yet, yet to have a blonde haired girl come in and say, my hair is just so blurry like my face. I don't get that. No, it doesn't happen. And again, remember my background. I told you all my background that I'm an old film guy. And with film, we used to do, take a filter and we would drop that filter in front of the lens. And everything was blurry. And people, I got, that's how, that's, that's been my style from the beginning. So now I have a filter that only affects just the skin. Man, that's awesome. So it affects sometimes a little bit of blonde hair. I, I don't have a problem with it. And my customers don't have a problem with it. Next one. All right. Next question. Uh, Sykes Photo is wondering at what point in your workflow do you fix blemishes? Coming up next. Perfect. Does the batching affect the Wi Fi transfer of the photos he's currently shooting, as in lock up the computer or Photoshop crashing? No, the Wi Fi is only sending them into a specific hot folder. Right. I then, in Bridge, move them from the hot folder into the customer folder and then start the conversion. So I could be over there while Photoshop is doing the conversion and Wi-Fiing again into yet the original hot folder. And Photoshop has nothing to do with that hot folder. It's gonna go there irregardless of whether Photoshop's running or not running. However, if you find your Photoshop is crashing a lot, buy more RAM. Mm -hmm. We did have a question on your technical settings with your computer, like how much RAM you have in your computer. Or the most. You, the most, all right. There you go. <laughs> yeah, I did. When I bought the laptop, I was like, what's the most? When yeah. I bought the, uh, the desktop, the Mac Pro, is it, I believe? Mac Whatever. Pro, yeah. the, the big box thing. Yeah. Um, I wanted to know what the most RAM was. And they, they told me, and I said, okay, that's what I want. Because the more RAM you have, the faster all these worlds work. So uh, this next question is for, uh, from Mr. and Mrs. So parents are actually seeing just the raw files before any work is done to them. On the back of the camera mm -hmm. or on the iPad? Mm -hmm. Yes. And that's why I have that little conversation with them now about, now let me tell you, this is what we photographers call raw files. That means that I don't want you looking at this camera and saying, Ugh, I don't like this one because of that zit or something. I, I will say that to them. So don't not like it because of the zit. I'm going to fix that. And people get that. They understand that there's editing and magic and work and mm -hmm. all that stuff that's done to it. So they get that. But the first time they see it on a printed page, on a paper, in an album, or whatever the case may be, the first time they see that, that they see all finished and perfect. Awesome. Well, Kirk. Yeah. With that, I, I just want to first thank the internet for all of your great questions. We have a number of different user experience levels, and we try to get to as many questions as we can that will support the whole community. So thank you again for that. Keep bringing the questions. And Kirk, what are we going to cover after our 45-minute lunch break coming up? After that, we're going into Photoshop, and I'm going to actually do a few retouching. I'm going to do a few images. I'm going to I'm going to show that little textured background that you saw. I'm going to show you how I actually did that. I'm going to do some saturation on some images and show you how I do that. Um, I'm going to show you my proof book. And, and that kind of thing. Hopefully, I'm also going to show you how a quick, very fast way to make an album. This is, this is an album that we do a lot. That's gorgeous. And how these albums are made. And boop. By the way, you can get this in the swag bag. It, there's a comment about this in oh, the swag great. bag. Anyway, um, that, I'm going to show you how to lay it out. Because I do custom lay out these, me personally, every one of them that a customer buys. And so thus, you have, you're thinking, wow, that takes a lot of time. But no, I had to take papers off the wall. It's got to be fast. So I'm going to show you how I do that. 
That's great. We had a number of questions on packaging, like the actual yep. albums you use and how you package it to the client. Yep. So yeah, that's great. That's awesome. And the internet, as Larry, we've been seeing, is also giving you lots of great feedback. And Good. we would love awesome. to read it to you as voices <laughs> of the internet, your go-between. Um, so JK Photography in Houston, I love his ideas. He needs to write a book. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> that and the post-its. Your next project. <laughs> Um, Maybe as the book could be just post-it notes. There you go. We could read this page, yeah. read this page, read this page. <laughs> totally. Like you just have pre-printed post-its for your workflow. Uh, hey. <laughs> you can send me the royalties for that. Okay. And JK Photography. Um, as can I, so, uh, as can I is the username. So glad to see that Kirk uses Bridge. Seemed like I was the only one left not using Lightroom. And we have a number of comments of that from Bridge people, the fans. Um, Sandy Joy says, I did not know in the Canon custom function I can add those lines. Cool. I love that Kirk is teaching us to get things done faster. I need that. Who doesn't? For real. And then Sam A, I mean, your personality has just shined through. It's one of the most fun classes and charming, charming combination of technical and personality that I've seen on Creative Live. And Sam A says, I'm seriously thinking about buying this broadcast just because I love Kirk love Kirk's personality so much. <laughs> right awesome. on. That is fantastic. We love all the comments that you are leaving for us in the chat rooms for Kirk. And right now we invite you to go over to our Google Plus page because we have a, a special post up there right now. And we would love for you to share your thanks to Kirk personally. He'll be reading them and we'll be shouting some of those off throughout the day. But this is your chance to sign our global thank you card for Kirk today. So please do that over the lunch break. And something that I, you know, over through so many years of photography and something that I see with all of my friends and through the community here at Creative Live is that there are so many different ways of tackling the photography workflow. You can start out doing it the wrong way and end up building, you know, wasting so much time. But in, in fact, some of you starting out are probably realizing how important it really is to have that implemented from the beginning and do it right from the, from the get-go at the beginning of your business stage. And so why are you guys spending your time like wasting like trial and error, trying out different workflows when Kirk has been handing you the perfect, simple, efficient, time saving workflow right here on Creative Live. You can own this material, everything he's teaching today in this class, plus all three days of shooting, having a good uh, camera workflow and a technical workflow and actually like photographing your subjects. Get that down instead of being trigger happy, get it down to just the perfect poses that your clients will want. We'll make your post, post uh, Photoshop workflow go fast as well. And this is just gonna save so much time for you. And my question for you is like, how much is your time worth? And what can you do with that time at the end of the day if you could save that yourself? And um, you can purchase this course for $99 through the live event, which is happening right now. And when you do that, what happens is that you can have all of Kirk's knowledge at your fingertips so that you can watch it over and over again, learn at your own pace, and make Kirk's workflow your workflow and become really efficient and fast get your life back, save time, spend more time with your family, your friends, or go out, take a vacation, and shoot some more, and enjoy your life. So do that right now during the live event. And we want to let you know that those who decide to purchase this course, Kurt has put together a couple awesome bonuses for you. The first thing is he is giving you a zip file of his Photoshop actions. So the Photoshop actions that you see right here that he's using today on Creative Live, he's giving them to you in a nice little package and a zip file that you can download right away, right now over break. And also there is a 40 minute walkthrough video of senior portrait retouching. So if you, uh, if you want even more retouching experience than what Kurt is giving you right here on Creative Live, you can have a whole 40 minute HD video at your fingertips to learn and continue on your journey. So we highly recommend you do that over the lunch break and we'll see you back here in 45 minutes.
And welcome back, everyone. Hope you had a great break. We are continuing on our final day, day three, with Senior Photography with Kirk Volklain. And I'm just going to hand it right over to you awesome. because you said you Do have it. a ton of material. Go let's for it. it. All right, let's get inside. We're getting inside Photoshop. That's where we're going. And we are going to try and absolutely tackle all the things, if not all the things on the workflow list, at least many of the things on the workflow list, so that we can, we're going to try and best we can knock these things out. Photoshop is actually right now running through those images we did right now, like I showed you earlier, how it converts for me and it runs in the background, see? It's sitting there doing its bit, knocking those images out. I, I, had all, I have all of this already done inside Photoshop, right? here, already done. I did them this morning, but I, you know, you don't want to see me work files that have already been done. So I went back right before we broke in and I'm having Photoshop rework those files for me. Okay. So just to give you just a T90, T90 recap, this is my sample workflow folder. If you notice, there is a folder in here that has 000 as in the date. That is the date uh, whatever of the customer's folder, uh, I create a folder with the today's date of the customer I'm working on. Inside of that folder, I have another folder, customer name, and that is the customer's name. And inside this folder is where all those raw Photoshop files are located. Just to show you how fast it happens, you, you highlight them, you can then set the preset to go to default for all of them, and it makes all those images, nice little default. And then you can go in very, very, very fast. That one's pretty good. I like that. Maybe make this black and white. Watch this. I'll show you how quickly this can happen. Change the black and white. Love it. Change this. Now nah, we're going to do something else with that. Change that. Take the vignette off of that. Remove vignette. Okay. Slip down here. That one. Love it. This one. Let's make this a little bit of a grainy fuzz. Yeah, I like that. That one, good. This one, we're going to make this. So how about bright, no, bright color? Yeah, I'll take bright color. That one's good. Make this one. How about maybe blue? Do we like blue? No, too weird. Let's go back to vintage. No, too weird. Let's just keep it with default. Default. All right, yeah. Then you can go and make ever so slight adjustments. That one's good. This one looks a little t nighty dark. So we'll lighten it up just a hair. This one, love it. This one, too yellow. So we'll, that was done with that, that light, like I showed you yesterday, with just that clamp on light, shop light, yep. So we'll take the yellow out, a little bit of contrast, crease a little bit of clarity, okay? This one, like it, that one, fine. A Little bit of yellow here, this one, was done, see this little bit of yellow glow in her hair? That's actually done with a 2,000 watt deer lamp. We, that's what we call it in the South anyway. It's that, that battery operated light that you buy from Walmart. You pull the trigger, yeah, it looks like a little gun. You shoot that at the, at the deer to look around. It's very, very strong, 2,000 candle power or something like that is what it is. And well, anyway, you just shine that at the hair, and man, it gives it that nice, clean yellow glow. Sometimes you get a little bit of the tungsten color into the subject, so you got to take that just a little bit out like that, and a little bit of contrast like that. Good. That one, good. That one, like, oh, here's one just to show you again how you can uh, do that blue, blue, blue sky, make it even bluer. You can, right here, luminance, darken the blue, and saturate the blue. How you like that? That was pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Love it, love it. Keep her a little dark right here. And there, done. And then you could just highlight, boom, start the raw conversion, go back to taking pictures. So again, I, I just wanted you to see literally how fast that could happen. So once you get those images all done inside Photoshop, and they are now there, I think, or are they still doing? Nope, they're there. What I do is I set up mini bridge inside Photoshop down here at the bottom. And it shows me all of the images in that JPEG folder that are ready to, re ready to work. Now, some people open up, say, six images. 
If you shot six, they open up six images in Photoshop, and they'll start working the first one, close it, save, oh, working the second one, close it, save, blah, 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 blah. Okay, if you're doing that, <clears throat> every image that's open in Photoshop is using Photoshop resources, such as RAM, scratch disk, all those things. So you're using up your resources. The more images you have open in Photoshop, the more of those resources you are using, thus the slower your Photoshop is running. So to speed things up, only open one image at a time. Okay? Now, when you only open up one image at a time, you know, it can be yet another slowdown because you have to go file open. You can double click the background and it goes, it opens up to a, an area and you go find your image and you open it. Or you can go file open and go find your image. Well, look, just open up mini bridge and it shows you all the images that are in there. And you just now, boom, work this image, close it. Boom, work this image, close it, and so on and so forth. Cool. So it's kind of a way of having all your stuff right there in front of you. You can make mini bi bridge kind of big if you want. Make mini bridge very, very small if you want. Yes, ma'am. When you um, close your image, does it save it? Well, or when you, do you have to push ask, save? No, when, you go, when I click close, it asks me, it asks, asks me, do you want to save it? Do you want to cancel? Yeah, I click save, and then it closes okay. and it goes away. Good? Yes. Follow? Because it's a JPEG. If I go to my file and click, it's just going to open my window. It's not going to open my Photoshop. But because of mini bridge, if I click there, open automatically in PC Photoshop. or Mac. Uh, PC. It opens in. It, I mean, this if is a Mac. If you just click, you just go straight to Photoshop. It's not going to open. Oh, you just double click and it shoots into. Oh. No, no. If I go to my file, not uh -huh. to my Photoshop. My Photoshop is closed. I go to my file. My picture JPEG is there. Yeah. And 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 and, and then I, I double click. It opens in a window viewer or something something yeah. like that. Would you like it to open in Photoshop? No, no, no. Uh, yeah. Uh, but if I want to open Photoshop, I have to click my right click, open in, and then give me the option okay. of Photoshop. But if Google I want to Google that question, and the Google world will show you how to set up your windows so that when you double click it. It will then go straight to make. It'll make Photoshop your default instead of preview window. Yeah, but like on this case there, when you, I open Mini Bridge, yes. If I open my Mini Bridge there, instead of open my files, I yes. open a Mini Bridge. When I click, my computer is understanding. Then it's going to open in Photoshop. Correct. Okay, great. Correct. Okay, so you know this. Y'all saw it done with the eyes fixed. Mm -hmm. So to fix to do that, I needed to go find me some good eyes. And so if I recall. <laughs> This morning, I used these eyes. Copy. I highlighted them. Copy. Come over here. Paste. What do you see is the most obvious problem? Not always. Huh? The lighting. Yeah, the, uh, the lighting. Different. Exposure. Wrong size. Wrong size. Lots of problems. Okay. okay. We're gonna. We're gonna control T. Command control T to bring up free transform. We're gonna hold down our shift key. And then we're going to, by doing that, it locks in the transition. See? Yeah. Now, if I don't hold down my shift key, it goes all over the place. See? And I don't want that to happen because I want to make sure the aspect ratio of his eyes stays the same. So we're going to shrink them down. We're going to come over here and we're going to line it up best we can with his eyes. Now, since I'm going from such squinty eyes to non squinty eyes, I need to make them just a little squinty so it doesn't look fake. Okay? So I get it kind of the right size. That's getting close to the right size. Then to make sure it is the right size, I reduce my opacity to 50% on those eyeballs. And I lay them down right on top. And I go, yeah, that lines up, doesn't it? Then I change the opacity back to 100. I can hear the, it's so funny. I can hear the internet in my head going, wait, do that again. <laughs> okay, all I can say is that I apologize for Creative Live right now that they don't have rewind on the live broadcast. Yeah, Kirk, I'm sorry. Really, could you work on that for us? <laughs> yeah. Uh, wait, do that again. That's the most yeah. common at this segment whenever I'm teaching these classes, it's like the class. Wait, do that again. I must hear that 10 times. All right, so anyway, you get it to this size. Then you click at the bottom of your layers palette, this little square with the circle around it, and it creates a layer mask. I fill that layer mask, edit, fill, with black, 
and I am purposely going fast because I want you to, I'm, make, I'm making a point here. Fill with black, paint brush, paint with white, zoomed in to his eyes, and watch what happens. The eyes open. Creepy. That's crazy. Okay. By the way, if you want to switch, right now I'm painting with white, means I'm, I'm exposing you. If I want to do a little erasing, because that's, this is a bit of an eyebrow that I do not want to show. I click X, and now I'm erasing what I just did. Okay, I come over here. X, opening the eyes. Because I'm, what I'm doing is I'm exposing what is on top of his closed eyes. And so like this, watch, before, after, before, after. A little bit of a problem I see is that the after has a little bit of different exposure. Control or Command M, darken them just a little bit. Now it's pretty close to the same exposure. And flatten or, or merge those two, Control or Command E. And there you go. Here we go, we'll go all the way before and then after. Before and then after. Now, I was going very, very <laughs> I was going very, very fast on purpose. Now, if I can talk it that fast, I realize now if you tried to go duplicate that at home, you're going to be like, oh, wait a minute. That was, that was, wait, how do I, why come, how far? Yeah, okay. But if you practice that and you don't have to talk it out, you can see why I can start having a little bit of a fight. Here's the, here's the guy I fight with every day on my computer. I'm circling that clock, and me and that clock fight all day. I'm watching it because it's not going to be more than three minutes. It's just not going to happen. And so if I, if I do it under three minutes, I win. I win. If it's more than three minutes, the clock wins. And it's almost like this tally inside of my head. Who won? Oh, it's Kirk 2, clock 1. <laughs> and it's back and forth. Back. Yeah. And at, it's, I'm, it makes it fun for me. And as a result, you know, at the end of the day, I win. I win if I win, and I win even if I lose because it kept me going right. that fast. And again, the whole point is to get you home. I want to get you home at night. All right? So that was, that was changing an eyeball. I'm going to save it. Close that down, though. Another thing I want to show you, and this is the perfect image to show you, is eyes. Because very, very, very common, this is what I do. I'll open an image, and I zoom, boom, into the eyes. I sort of start with the eyes and work out. And I touch every image. So, have you ever noticed a person will come in and you'll say, oh, she has pretty eyes. And then the person right behind her will come in, got the same color eyes, but they're not pretty anymore. What, what happened? I have, I have, man, that bugged me for a long time. And here's what it is. It is this dark rim. She does not have it, but she's going to have it. You take your burn tool and you burn the outside color part of the eye. Now I'm going to go slow. Ah. Do you hear all of our oohs and ahs? Yeah, I heard the whole internet just go, oh. <laughs> <Yes>. That's <laughs> the coolest thing ever. Okay, uh -huh. real quick before I move on, before, after, before, after, I can, I can feel everybody running to their mirror right now going, do I have pretty eyes? I do, I have pretty eyes, I have pretty eyes. Okay, so anyway, <clears throat> then I take my paintbrush, normal mode, 100% opacity, painting with black, and I remove any of the catch lights that I do not like. So I do not like any of those because that little black area of the eye is black, and how black is black? Black. Blacker than black, black is black and blacker than black and black. So it's just black. So I get that gone. Then I come over here to my dodge tool and I dodge in. This is the main light and I dodge it a little brighter than the one underneath. Okay. Then I want to add some what I call swoosh, a little swoosh to the eye. And I do, I do that with my um, dodge tool. Well, I'm at 61%. That'll work. Mid-tones. Here's a very important little keynote at this point. 
is right here, this thing I'm circling, protected tones. Make sure protected tones, protect tones is unchecked. Because if you have it checked, it's not going to look as clean as what I do. So make sure that's unchecked. And then here's the swoosh. You just kind of go back and forth like that. And you add this little swoosh to the color part of the eye, and it makes the eye look three-dimensional. Now, while you're there, you hold down the Alt key or Option key if you're on a Mac, and you roll around that dark part of the eye, and it now burns that area in, and it makes a nice transition from dark to color. And then sometimes, because uh, I went right over the white part, I have to go in and put just a little bit of more dodging back in. And so there you go. Watch this eyeball. Okay, watch. Totally before. Not bad. Totally after. Oh. Mm -hmm. Way more spectacular. Before. After. Before. After. And I'll show you both eyes. Because, and that's another thing. Do not do. What I just did, do not retouch one eye all zoomed in like this. I did that for the sake of the, the cameras on my computer so you can get a nice clear shot of it but when you're doing this at home do not do it that way always retouch both eyes at the same time if you do that burning around the outside then go do it to this eye if you do a little dodging then you do it to this eye whatever you do to one do to the other if not if you try to do one you'll never get the other one the same and two eye, the two eyes have to be the same or pretty close to the same or else you're going to be in trouble Okay, but again, for the sake of teaching, we're going to skip the eye, which is really weird. And then we're going to handle some of the issues. See, these are issues that she has. To get rid of the issues, I use the healing brush tool. Okay, and you hold down your alt key, take a sample, and you just whoop, and it's gone. Here's what we do as far as zits. You asked about zits. This is when zits would be removed. Okay, and this is how zits are removed. Now, just a bit of a speed trick. There's nothing, nothing so zitsy as a big black dot. Am I right? Do, are zits even that bad? No, no way. Now, to fix those zits, we're gonna call them black dots or zits, you could clone and fix clone and fix with the healing brush okay i'm gonna put them back but again i'm always looking for little bitty things to speed up my world even if it's a half a second if i have one two three four five six zits and it takes me a half a second faster to do it faster than anything else i've just saved three seconds big deal right oh no i do 24 images times three seconds how much have i saved now minute I do three seniors a day let's say i have now saved three minutes I do a hundred seniors a season 200 seniors a season how much time it all adds up to time we all have the same amount of time in a day so anything even a half a second faster is extremely important okay so here's here's a fastener when it fast trick whenever you're on the healing brush tool notice that the it's set to sample which is how it defaults normal default all this don't mess with it notice right here a line sample is unchecked what that means is and this is the default this is how it defaults what that means if i sample this piece of skin right here and i clean up notice where it's coming from that's the plus the plus is where it's coming from the circle is where it's going all right and then the zit is clear. But I haven't touched anything, and I now come up to this zit, and I start to clean it. Notice it's coming from exactly the same spot. So the come from spot never changes. So once you find a nice, clear piece of skin, whoa, oh, hello. Once you find a nice, clear piece of skin, say here you do not have to sample fix sample fix sample yeah, fix so z z z okay you have to simply nice clear piece of skin mm -hmm. fix 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 again we're talking what three seconds faster now Ooh, that's amazing. faster is faster yeah. 
Yes? Mm -hmm. Okay, comparing that now to the clone tool, notice when I'm on the clone tool, notice how now this thing is checked, a line sample, a line sample. That means that let's say I go to clone this eyeball right here, click, and I want to put it for whatever reason, I can, I can, I can feel someone tuning in right now going, does he really? Does he really put eyeballs on the foreheads of his seniors? No, he does not. He's teaching them about the clone tool. All right, so I want to clone that right into there. The sample is aligned. Now watch, I'm going to go down here, and I'm going to start cloning. But see where the source is? See the source? It stayed aligned. No matter now where I go, that source stays the same distance away from the thing all the way through. Okay, I'm gonna undo that. Let's undo the eyeball. Okay, now watch what happens if I uncheck the align tool. Just so you understand, I want you to understand what it does. I'm gonna sample the eyeball, and I'm gonna paint an eyeball. I'm gonna come down here, and I'm gonna paint an eyeball. And I'm gonna come down here, and I'm gonna paint an eyeball. So wherever I go, I can paint eyeballs now because of the fact that it has been uh, constantly sampling from the same place. Boy, is that weird or what? Does he really do eyeballs all over his customers? I don't get that. It would make sense if you were making, you know, like a graphic novel and you're making an alien character from another planet. That's how you would make, him, make that alien. So do you understand now that check, that align check, what it's saying? So mo again, this is default. This is the way you haven't... You don't have to change anything, but there are times when you might want it to align when you're on the healing brush. And there are times when the clone tool, you might want it not to align. And so just so you understand what that is, okay? Is that only in CS6? Or? No, that, that's been around for a while. Okay. It's just a lot of people don't, don't see Kurt, these things. Before you go too far, can I just ask one question? Yes. That probably people are wondering, because you're talking about Photoshop, a lot of people work in layers. You specifically don't like, you don't recommend, I'm glad you, you don't asked. do... I'm glad you asked because that is something that people oftentimes tell me all the time. Well, I work in layers, and then they say, I, I save it off as a layer. So it goes back to our question earlier about t you know, different things, how, do you, how you do this and how you do that. Do you really delete it? In my, it, in my career, it's only been a few times that someone says, oh, I wish you could fix undo or anything like that. Well, remember, I always have the raw file that I can go all the way back to the raw file and start, start fresh, mm -hmm. start from scratch, and fix whatever it is that they want me to fix. But for the most part, that is a very rare event. They usually like what I do. Mm -hmm. So I only work for, the, again, for the sake of time and the t sake of speed, I work on the background layer for the most part. There are a few times and a few situations where I will make a dupe and, and do things. But I work on the background layer. If someone, if for example, I was to come in here and I would paint my dots and paint my dots and I don't know why I would paint dots on a subject, but I would, and I go, oh, darn it. I wish I wouldn't have painted all those dots. Mm -hmm. I can always control Z them. I can yes, take them off, okay? And then that's option command Z and it's step, 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 step back. Okay, but let's say I'm, I'm painting dots and I'm painting dots and I'm doing things to Photoshop and I want to go back all the way back to the beginning. Well, I always have my history palette. My history palette will take me all the way back to right there, boom, before I even started. You understand? And so I can step all the way through my history palette. Where, but now there's only so many of these what is known as states that you can have. Now, by making a duplicate layer, it's just like having two images now. If you make another layer, it's like having three images. And again, it's all about resources. The more layers you make, the more resources of Photoshop you're, you're, you're taking up. And I'm about speed and keeping things as fast as possible, so I work on the background layer. Mm -hmm. So that's, and, uh, and not to mention, I've been, I've been playing in Photoshop for a while, and so as a result, I kind of know what I'm doing, and I know what I want to do. If it makes you feel good to make a layer, by all means, make a layer. I'm not telling you not to, but I don't. I, you know, I just know where I'm going, and I'm just going to giddy up and do it. Does that answer it? Mm -hmm. Excellent. All right, move, let me close this one. So we kind of talked, look, I get to do a little scratch right now. So I'm going to do a scratch, because I get to take the eyes off. Okay, and um, I have not done that. Let's see. Let's say 
this customer right here, this image, the mom says, oh, I, I want an 8 by 10. Okay, let me show you 8 by 10 crop. 4 by 5, where is it? 4, 8 by... I know it's, there it is. Second, there you go. Okay, there's an 8 by 10 crop, and I deliver it like that, and she goes, well, you chopped off too much of the head. You chopped off too much head. Uh, and look, I, we like that dress down there. Okay, this is what I mean when I say grow an image. And this is not going to be the most perfect example of what I'm talking about, but you could crop beyond the image like this, okay? Now, she is not going to want these white edges, okay? She is not going to want all of that. You could use content aware, or you could just grow the edges a little bit, which I'm going to come down here and control T, and I'm gonna grow it. I don't. And it's rare that it's a headshot like this that they want me to do this to, but this side's gonna get really funky. Not bad funky, but funky nonetheless. But you see what I mean? So now she has pageant hair. Yeah, but I, do you see how I, I kept the whole thing in there and I could calm some of that down and shift it around a little bit, but I literally grew the image. I, I cropped beyond it and then grew the image. This works really, really good for outside. Don't save. Let me show you. How about this one? It, it's going to work fantastic on this one. Here's one. Here's my 8x10 crop, but she wants the whole thing. All right, we're going to go beyond. Ooh, calm down. Let's go way out here beyond. Okay, and so now, so what that I stretched the background? Who cares? Watch. Let's stretch the background. Nobody's ever gonna know. Cool? So that's what I mean when I say grow the background. All right, so let me show you. Let me show you a scratch. Here we go, growing images, scratch. Okay. Can, can you go back on the eyes? Just one question on the eyes, because you're already scratching the eyes. Uh, do you touch the, do you do a retouch on the veins? No, thanks and for do asking. You, do you do a little extra sharpening on oh, the eyes? No, I do not do extra sharpening on the eyes. Now, I'll tell you the story about veins. If, if she was out drinking the night before, you know, which happens sometimes, and those eyes are really, really weirded out, I will, I've been known to come in and take my sponge tool, sponge tool, move it to desaturate mode, flow 100%, and then rub it on those veins. And all I'm doing is taking out the red. And I only want to rub in the white area because I don't want to desaturate out here. See how's that turned in part of her skin, black and white? That's not what I want. I just want to desaturate the red. Now, I could literally go in now and clone out every one of those lines and all that good stuff. It's a problem. A buddy of mine that I was at his house, he's a photographer, and he, I see this thing in an ashtray looking at me, and I go, what's that? He says, oh, that's my glass eye. And I'm like, dude, you're a photographer, and you have a glass eye? Come on, really? He goes, yeah, it's my glass eye. And he pops it out, look, and then pops it back in. I was like, how is it that you have a glass eye? He says, you know, you, you was a kid. Your mama said, don't play with that BB gun or she's going to shoot your eyeball out. I said, yeah. He said, I did. I'm like, so you the one that makes us all have to pay for that, right? He said, yeah, I'm the one. And I said, okay, man. And so I, I got to play with it, which I know was creepy and weird, but I got to play with his glass eye. And he told me how many mega dollars he has to pay for glass eyes because they're all hand painted. And I got to looking at the glass eye really, really, really hard, and all these little red lines are painted into the glass eye because that's real. And I thought, imagine if my buddy came to me and wants me to photograph him and his family. He's paid thousands of dollars to put lines in his eyes, and then I proceed to take them out. And, and I realized, you know what? I'm making it not real by taking those those all those lines out the eye. So I quit at that moment I quit and I find it made the eyes look better. So at the very most I will do that, but I don't usually in this girl's case none of the none of these three that I photographed yesterday did I do any of that kind of stuff. Cool deal? And no sharpening of the Nope, just the sharpening that happens inside for a bridge when it makes the conversion. Okay?
So anyway, let's close that out. Now, I'm going to zoom back over to this image. Where is it? Right there. And this was something that people asked about online was the saturation. Well, that same tool, the sponge tool, set to saturate mode and 100% flow. The first time you open sponge, if you've never opened sponge before, it's set to desaturate flow 50%. That's how it's set the first time you use it. So you're going to have to change it to saturate, crank the flow up to 100%. I like to have the vibrance check box checked. Okay. Now watch what happens to all this blue. Watch what happens to all this nice yellowy color. And I'm going to go too far. I am absolutely going to just to make a, yeah, that looks good. Make a point. I do not go this, this far, especially on this kind of an image, but I'm going to go too far to make my point. Do you see how, what that did? Here we go. Before, after. Before, after. Before, after. That is how I do all that saturation stuff. Here's the most important thing to remember. Stay off the skin. Because if you don't, she looks like a Oompa Loompa. Okay? Not good. And if you don't know what a Oompa Loompa is, Watch Willy and the cho Willy Wonka in the Chocolate Factory, and you'll say, "Oh, she does look like a Oompa Loompa." Okay, boy, someone just tuned in. They're like, "God, all Kirk does is criticize people. I can't believe that." It's not what I'm doing. Step away from the skin. That's it. <laughs> That's Do one. not Step rub <laughs> the saturation <laughs> tool on the skin. That's how I get the saturation. Look. I get to do a little scratch off. Here we go. Scratching, saturation, OK? Now, another thing that was asked a lot was your proofs, Kirk. Let me go flipping back the bridge. And I'll just use my sample workflow. Done. Once I'm done working all the images and stuff, I, do, I run this thing called Image Processor Pro. And you can do a search for Dr. Brown Image Processor Pro. It's a free, little free download that you can get. It's a plug-in that you plug into your Photoshop. It's very Photoshop specific. So if you're on six, make sure you get the six one. If you're on five, make sure you get the five one. All right, and what it does is it, it's like image processor that comes with Photoshop but on steroids, and I'm gonna open it up in a minute. And what it allows you to do is a whole sequence of different things and put all these things in a folder. So some of the things that I make are eye picks. Here we go. And an eye pick is an image that's sized perfectly to fit on like a Facebook or an iPhone or something like that. I think it's, I have to go check what, what the, I think it's 500 or 600 on the long side or something like that. But it puts my logo on the image, okay? And so do I sit here and manually put the logo vertical and horizontal and all this other good stuff on these images like this? No, I do not. I have it already pre-set up and I let Image Processor Pro do it. I also size images for Animoto to make those Animoto movies like you have seen over the last couple of days. And so Animoto wants a specific size image that's being uploaded. So I run that through Image Processor Pro and it makes those. I'm going to skip proofs because I'm coming to that last. Here's one ready for web on the Pro Forum. I post a lot of images. Last year, year before, three years now in a row, I have posted every senior picture that I have photographed for the last three years. Every one of them. The good, the bad, the ugly, every image I did. I mean, if I messed up something bad, you saw it, okay? And so I, I hid nothing, okay? Well, to be able to do all that uploading, I have to have them sized just right. So I made a folder ready for web so it's easy to upload onto the Pro Forum. And then finally, proofs. Here's what my proofs look like. I'm going to open one of these up in Photoshop. It, it, the dimensions, if you notice in Photoshop, it's seven inches wide, it's five inches tall, it has this double stroke on it, a thick stroke, a thin stroke, 
It has a black border all the way around the image, so the inside dimensions of the image is four by six. The outside dimensions is five by seven. When I send that to the lab, I have them bind them with a comb binding, and it comes back to me all nice and finished in this beautiful little um, comb binded with a little plastic cover, a little cardboard backing. I then take that and I slip it inside of a nice little folder that I get from Leather Album Design. Do a search for Leather Album Design. I slip it into this nice little folder. Um, cost me, I can't remember the exact price, but it's less than $20 for this nice little folder. And it has my logo on it and it feels good and it's just the right size. Slip it in. Put a little piece of tissue around it, and we, boom, that goes to the customer. It makes for an incredible presentation. It does have my logo on it, and the action wraps my logo around the strokes. See how it's kind of one top of one and behind the other, puts a little copyright logo, blah, blah, blah. And it's amazing, this little teeny piece of red right here and right here actually cross into the customer's area. That's it. That's the only part. So it's not a big splashy logo or anything. And if someone wants that red removed, then you have to buy a proof that costs more. But if you want to buy this physical proof, we sell them for $20 a piece, or if you buy the entire set, $8 times the entire set. And it comes with the nice little book and the whole bit. Cool deal? All right. So this hopefully clears up with everybody. What is a proof, Kirk? This is a proof. So yes, it's a finished print. It is ready to go. It is exactly like everything. It's just sized and everything ready to go to make proofs. All right. So five by seven. Action that makes this, vertical and horizontal. It is a script that makes vertical and horizontal. I have a vertical action and I have a horizontal action, but I run the action via a script. And the script is uh, this can get complicated, but again, I made it as simple as possible for you. All part of I made a movie in as part of my workflow so that you understand how to load a script, how to make the script work, the whole bit. So is it the, can, the script looks at the image and then says, is it wide or is it tall? Oh, it's wide, then run this action. If it's tall, well then run that action. And that's all the script does. Okay. Okay. okay? Very very not complicated, but if you had to write that script, it would probably be complicated for you. But the script is already pre-written for you. You just gotta load it. Simple. Okay. Okay, now to show you this Image Processor Pro, file, automate, see Image Processor Pro. Once you get the plug in, this is where it is. And once you see this, you're going to go, I get it now. This is the missing link. Everybody's going to think, I really, really, really want this. And the really cool thing is it's free, not for pay, okay? So right here, step one. Remember I showed you just a little while ago, step one, step two, step three, step four? That was image right. processor. This is image processor pro. It's that on steroids. Here we go. You'll get it in a minute. Watch. Select the images to process. So I can choose which folder I want to do this to. Okay, this, this sequence of events. So like if I wanted to do it to that fixed folder, these... uh. The, the JPEGs that are in that fixed folder, I would choose JPEG, and so right here, see, it's going to run on all those JPEGs. Then where do I want to put what it does? I want to put it in the same location. And see, each one of these tabs is what I'm having it do. So the first one is Animoto. If I click Save, the folder is going to be named Animoto. It's going to rename the document to dash Animoto. So I know that this is a file that is now for Animoto, then the extension. It's going to save it. It's going to save it at JPEG, quality 10, and it's going to embed the color profile. It's going to resize the image, though, to 2,500 pixels on the long side and the height of 25 pixels at a resolution of 72 uh, PPI. And it, that is what this is going to do when it runs. Then for proofs, it is going to save it as a JPEG in a folder called proofs. It's going to rename it dash proof. It is not going to resize it because I'm running an action. See right here, running an action. Notice before image resize. 
And the action is right here. It's in the five by seven proofs action section under run five by seven proof script. And it runs this action and makes those proofs, okay? Then it's gonna make IPix. IPix is going to first resize to 400 on the long side and 400 on the tall side, resolution 72 PPI, save as a JPEG, quality six. It's going to then run an action after the image resizes and it's gonna put dash IPix. So you're starting to see, my goodness, it does all this. You can then have it add. You, you have something else that you want a whole folder of black and whites, you want a whole folder of color. I mean, it'll do all sorts of things like that for you. Ready for web, sticky. This is my, my sticky album thing that allows me to upload to sticky albums, okay? And it puts my logo across it and all that fancy stuff. All right, so it's gonna do all these things and I'm not gonna run it. I'm, you know, I'm not gonna run it. It's gonna, I may run it on a, I'll show you what it does. I'll go back and show you. When I click run, boom, it opens up. And it's just running, man. And all this stuff is happening while I'm not touching Photoshop anymore. Okay, so it's making, making Animoto, making proofs, making IPix, making Ready for Ray, making a sticky album, all that stuff. I'm gonna cancel, but I'm gonna show you again, back to bridge, this is what it does. It makes this Animoto folder, it makes this IPix folder, it makes this proofs folder, it makes this Ready for Web folder, all those types of things for me. So imagine how much time that saves me if I had to sit there on a a pack of 24 proofs and I have to resize it for this and blah, blah, and save it. Resize it for this, size it, save it. Resize it for that. I'm sorry, that is entirely too time consuming. So now it just runs for me. Okay. Cool? Quick mm -hmm. question. Go. If I wanted to number pictures like one, two, three, four, five, six, six, could I create a script that does that? You want the numbers on the front? Right. Yes, there, there is a script that will do that. It is, it is complicated. Um, okay. But there is a script that will do that. Try Googling that question. Okay. And, and, and with Adobe scripts. Okay. And you, and you may find it pretty easy like that. But I, I've seen it, I've, I've looked at it. It's above my pay grade to write it. Okay. But I, I have seen it, and it might be just floating out there somewhere. It might be posted on the Pro 4. Maybe that's where I saw it. I don't it. know. Check it out. Cool? All right, moving on. So that is um, real quick, like a, a, a bunch of things that I think is going to save somebody some time. I think. You save me I time. Hope, I'm yeah. hopeful that you're pulling, you're pulling stickers off the Tons. wall right now. Tons yeah. of stickers off yeah. the wall. Okay. Seriously. Getting you going home faster. Let me look real quick. At how? Uh, so you wanted to know. I can scratch that off. I meant to scratch that off earlier. That you wanted to know how long? Oh, Three minutes. That's Oops. the thing. Um, let's see. Settings, we talked about settings. When I output to a print, okay, it's the full resolution. It's the way I, it, it, I mean, it's not made bigger or made smaller. It's the full resolution, saved at a maximum quality of 12, okay? okay. So I just wanted to mention that. But as far as all the other settings that we've kind of talked about. I, I, real quick, I wanted to touch on this too grainy when you send it to the, to the lab. You know. I, that could be all kinds of stuff. It could be, have been that your ISO was, was high and that, it, that puts grain into an image. It could have been all sorts of things that caused this grain problem. Um, whoever, I forget, okay. you did. Um, it could have been, I noticed the lens you used, not, not to be critical, uh, but that was, it's not a Canon 7200, it was a, another brand 7200. And I'm not knocking it, but I'm just saying there's a reason it costs less. Right. How's that for tack? You know, and so that could have introduced a little bit of grain into the image. It could have been, it could have been that it, it was shot way over here, but then you cropped in yes. to right here. Now, if you did that, man, there's no fixing that. Other than to tell you, before you pull the trigger, get in and crop in camera. Okay. It is a very difficult thing for some unknown reason for people to seem to crop in camera, okay? But that's what you have to train yourself to do. You have to train yourself to quit leaving all this airspace in case yeah, and I get do. it the way you want it here when you're looking through that camera. When you get it there, boom, just awesome. Okay. That will definitely. That's what I do that every time. Then, then stop like. doing that. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. I definitely stop doing it. 
Okay, cool. So now I'm gonna I scratch that off. Um, you asked about the best print vendor. Well, I've told you a couple of times that mm -hmm. I use H and H Color Lab, and they they to me are the best. And you can you can try them out. They would love to try you have you as a customer and and see what you like. See if you like them. If not, to me a, a lab is a marriage. That's the best way I, I could could describe it. It's like you know, if I had to leave H&H, &H, I would feel like there was a divorce, you know? I feel like I'm married to them. They are so important to my business, and of course, my business is important to their business. They want me to succeed. They really do. You know why? If I'm successful, yes, they're sir. successful. And if I got a computer problem, I, I mean, I got, I got their tech guy's cell phone number, and I can literally call him up. Bentley, here's my problem on the weekend, on a Sunday. I, I honestly know that I could do that. I've already had situations where, you know, a customer had to have this by tomorrow. Don't worry about it, Kirk, we'll make sure it happens. It's never happened to me, but I'm not saying this happens a lot, but I've heard stories about private airplanes being chartered to make sure orders get there. I mean, this is the kind of people we're talking about. So just check them out. Okay. So there you go. Um, online ordering. Okay. There's all sorts of ways to handle online ordering. <clears throat> um, there are all, tons of companies out there that do this. And my thing is, I, I kind of talked about that earlier. My thing is, I want to sell this book of proofs. So I want them to take this book of proofs home. If I'm online doing online ordering, I feel like I get lower sales. Okay, so if at all possible, I try to avoid online ordering. Okay, I do see it coming though, where it, it, it's going to have its place in the future. So I'm experimenting with a few things that may happen down the road, but still, ultimately, face to face, it's the best. You know, it really is the best way. I do have that option. And I usually make it available if they request it. I do not promote it. I don't know if that's the answer people were looking for, but that's my way, okay? We talked about proofs. I also talked about sharpening. I, the only sharpening that I do, again, is what defaults inside of Bridge that I have pre, part of my preset. And beyond that, there are sometimes I do, believe it or not, miss the focus. And in which case, I then have a sharpening action, okay? And there's one little trick I want to show you that is in conjunction with sharpening that I do find myself using a lot that I think you will find beneficial. So let's say I'm going to use this picture to show you. Let's say I'm going to draw a line. It's so easy to demonstrate this with a big black line over the image. So here I go. I'm going to take and draw a big black line over the image. And I go, oh, doggone it. That black line is too black. I wish I could have drawn that black line a little less black. OK, you can um, command shift F brings up fade. You can absolutely fade anything. In this case, we're going to fade that black line. The trick to fade is you run fade after the thing that you wish you hadn't done. You can only fade the very last thing you did. So watch, when I open up fade, I reduce this, and watch what happens to my black line. Did you catch that? My black line gets lighter. The black line's still there, but I'm fading it down. See, see that? Mm -hmm. So this is full black line. This is no black line. This is 50%, 55% black line. This is 94% uh, black line. That makes sense? OK, so how, what, I don't get it, Kirk. What does that have to do with sharpening? Well, I have a sharpening action that I have already set up to where I hit Command, F9, and boom. I just ran sharpen, OK? It runs, in my opinion, a little too much before after. See, it's too much. Do you find it too heavy? Yeah, it's really weird before, after. And I have it designed that way on purpose because every time I run the sharpening action, I then fade it. Of course,
course, it won't do that because I've fiddled with it. So I'm going to go Command F9, then F, fade it. Now watch, I can take all of the sharpening away, or I can just have a little bit of the sharpening, or I can have a medium amount of the sharpening, or I can have 77% or 86% or whatever, whatever percent of sharpening I want, that's how I adjust it. So I go too far on purpose, and then I always back off a little bit. So that gives you two little speed tricks as part of your world. Does that help at all as far as sharpening? It kind of was like four tricks in one, but okay. Don't save. I'm going to scratch that off while I'm here. I already did. Oh, I'm feeling a question. Oh, I'm just feeling a sound effect for scratching more oh. off. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so hi there. Believe me, I got tons more to go. However, we're going to save liquefy to the next segment and the high key. Someone asked about high key. Let me show you. With high key, here's how it happens. Now, I, of course, this is not a nice seamless piece of white paper. Instead, it's a brick wall. But to do high key, there's all sorts of different things that can happen. But the way I typically start first, after I, I try to photograph it as clean as possible. That's, I feel like I have to say that. Try to get it as clean as possible. Me and Paolo talked about that yesterday. Do you think if you would have used umbrellas as opposed to soft boxes, it would have been better? And I'm like, yeah, maybe so. Okay, we could have had much wider blowing of light, but my, my concern was that I didn't want it to touch the subject. So if you have a big enough studio that you can get that subject way off the background and use umbrellas back there, boom, you'll probably get an even better high key than I get. So, but with what I had to work with, the first thing I'm going to do to clean this image up is I'm going to go over to my dodge tool at 100% in mid-tone mode. Protected tones, unchecked. Get me a brush this big, okay? And I'm just going to rub all around in here and just kind of take the whole thing lighter, okay? So now right up against her, if I really want to take this thing white, 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 you got to be careful, but you can dodge in highlight mode. And I'll show you why. If the only thing is going to dodge now is the whites. It's looking for whites and highlighting and dodging them. So, see? I mean, I can dodge that thing out to 55, 55, 255, 255, 255. I mean, pure as the white, the white as can be. Now, the problem with doing it this way, especially in this girl's, in this girl, it's easy because of the fact that the clothing she has on is contrasty enough with the background, okay? And I can just take this literally all the way around. It's kind of tedious and time consuming. But if you make a mistake, like you rub too close to the leg, you get some of that, you see? Or imagine if she has white on, like these shoes are pretty white. See, when I get close, I start rubbing into that and oh, I just messed it all up, didn't I? So that's usually, that, I'm all about the key when I'm photographing, so they have white clothing on, a white cheerleader outfit. I'm gonna put them on a white background. So this little trick, with the uh, dodging with, in the highlight mode when they have a white cheerleader out on, outfit on, ugh, it just doesn't work, you see? So yeah, that's a cool little trick that I just showed you, but it doesn't always work. But in essence, look, look how clean I had started to make the white up in here. Um, in this particular situation, I could then make my brush bigger, and then I could be a little bit more sloppy out here, Ah, sloppy out here. And so you see that I could literally just get rid of every piece of brick there is and get this to pure, pure, pure white pretty quick. So if she does have on that white cheerleader outfit, then what I have to do is I have to get real close and I have to use a little brush. And you get real close like this, and you get right up onto it. Then you make your brush a little bit bigger, and then you get a little bit more out, and you make your brush a little bit bigger, and you get a little bit more. Ah, y'all look, are y'all watching my clock? I hate it. The clock is winning right now. You see? So these are images where the clock typically wins, and it happens. So the clock's going to get a 
attaboy. And I was going to be, you know, Kirk 4, clock 1. So anyway, that, that, does that help? Yes. Okay, it, it is a bit of a speed trick. It might be faster than what you're doing now, but it's still kind of time consuming. That was the, the point of it all. Save, nah. I did want to show you this. On this image, next, another little trick. So to slim her down a bit, double-click the background, turn it into a layer, Control-T, and now you can get stupid. Don't get stupid. But just take her down a little bit, OK? And then apply. Go over to my full frame 1DX. That's like a reverse grow. I showed you how to grow. That was a reverse grow. That was incredible. Uh -huh. And then flatten. So now, does she watch? <laughs> this always cracks me up. Does she look weird right there to y'all? No. She doesn't, does she? No. You ain't thinking, wait, right about now your brain's going, wait. Symmetry. Did he do anything? I thought I saw him do something. Yeah. Yep, watch. Now, you know, <laughs> this happens a lot. When I do this, now suddenly watch how weird she gets. This is how she was. This is how she is. Yeah, you made her taller All I did, I made her taller, I stretched her out. The only way you can kind of begin to tell I did something is things that are round. See that eyeball? No longer perfectly round, watch. See, it's oblong. Right. See, kind of seeing that? I didn't notice until you put that up. There. I know, it's very subtle and that's the point. Before, after. Now, some people might not like that. I'm okay with that. But she is going to love it. Okay? And so that is a little slimming technique that you can, you're welcome to, uh, you know, use that at home and take credit for it. I'm okay with that. Another thing while you're at it is someone on the internet sent me a message yesterday. I said, Kirk, I was reading some of your stuff. It says something about use the perfect soft action. This is a very popular action on the Pro Forum that I wrote several years ago. And I do this almost, in fact, I, ju I do. I do this to every image. This is, I do all this stuff that I want to get done. I'm fixing the eyes, you know, I'm going, oops. I'm going in here and I'm fixing the eyes, you know, I'm like I showed y'all earlier and I'm taking out this stuff and I'm adding the little swooshy thing um, to the eyes and, you know, all that stuff that I told you about. I do all that fancy stuff. Then I run the perfects off. So I'm going to run the perfects off action for y'all right now just to show you the entire sequence of steps. When I run it, I have it pre-programmed to run via my Wacom tablet because my hand is always on the Wacom tablet and I'm you're going to show you how stupid I am about speed is for me to lift my hand off the Wacom tablet and to reach over <coughs> and press F7 is entirely too long, okay? I only want to reach from here to here, and I think the camera guy can catch that. I, want, I only want to go while I'm retouching here over to here to start that action. So that's how stupid I am about speed. So when it runs, the first thing it does is it's, it runs port, this portraiture action again, and the portraiture plugin pops open, and it pre-selects a certain amount of area. And it stops at this point for me to, to put Kirk input. And my input, if you, if you have portraiture and it does not look like this, if it looks like this, it's because you have the shadow mask set to white. Or if your portraiture looks like this, you have your shadow mask set to none. I have my shadow mask set to black, which means everywhere that you see black, like in her eyes, a little bit in her hair, on her dress, is where it is not happening. Everywhere that you see skin is where it is happening. So then I take my little eyedropper and I click underneath the eye and I make sure it's happening on that skin. And I can roll it around like this in different areas and make sure, see if I click in this area, it's happening less to the skin here. Or if I click here, it's happening more to the skin. I want it to happen to the skin, so I'm looking for the most skin. And then I click OK and it runs. And then it stops again and it opens up fade. And it allows me to add more soft or take away soft. I go to 40% the most, but in this case, I'm going to bump it up to in the 80% range to put even more softness on. 
It run, and now what it did is it ran an action called Spot Orange, which is one of the actions that is in the action pack that you, if you buy the course, you, can, you get that action pack. That Spot Orange ran, and it added a little bit of warmth. In fact, watch. This is the full Spot Orange. This is no Spot Orange. So you can decide how much warmth you want. Okay, usually I'm around 20%. In this case, I'll pop it up just a little bit. Run. It then runs a action that I created a while back called snap. The purpose being to add snap. So I can have lots of snap. I can have no snap. Okay, but in mo most cases, it's around 20%. And then it opens up levels. Now, this gives me an opportunity to talk about levels because it's one of those things that um, I think can really instantly, just this one trick, if you've come to this point and you're just logging in, great. You are about to get a really cool trick that will instantly make your images better. Hold down the Alt key before you do anything and touch the left side slider. When you do, the whole image goes white. When you start seeing the eyes right there, see the eyes? That means that you are starting to affect the eyes. And we do not want to affect the eyes. We don't want to do anything to this image as far as trashing pixels that will mess up the face. So we back off till we just barely starting to mess with the eyes. Then we go to the right side slider while holding down the Alt key, and we slide till we see red in the skin. See right there, we're starting to see red in the skin? That means we're starting to affect the skin. We do not want to affect the skin because we don't want to trash pixels in the skin. So we stop right before we get there, maybe just a hair amount of red, okay? That is a perfect levels adjustment. You're not trashing anything in the face or anything like that. Watch, before, after. Before, after, come on, after, before, after. It adds just a little bit of mm, a little bit of pow, a little bit of snap. And that's also kind of in conjunction with, Kirk, how do you make the images so saturated? This is one of those steps. Click OK, and the action is not finished yet. You may think it just finished, but it did not. It made a snapshot in my history palette right before I ran the very last thing, which was levels, of the way it looked before I ran levels. So that in case I did too much, say, to the hair, see, it, 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 it put me on my history, my history brush so that I'm now painting before I ran levels. So I can rub right here, because this is too white, right here down her arm, it was too white, and I can put it back. But I, I like what it did to the skin, done, okay? So watch, completely before, that was, that was before, this is completely afterward. You see a little bit of warmth, there's a little bit of softness, a little bit of snap, a little bit of all warmth, all that good stuff, and okay, and, and the stretch fix, okay? So that and then to make it white, 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 if you've seen some of my images, open up uh, curves, command and control M, will open up curves, and then you push it up, push it up, Push, 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 until you lose the nose and then come back. Come back right there. Still got the nose. Uh, and that makes it that white, 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 white effect. Watch. Before, after. Before, after. Cool? Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. You know, when you're running that, the, the action that you just ran, you need the... Imagenics, right? You gotta have portraiture from Image Imagenomics or however. Yeah, I but am for, Image No Mix. Right, but for the portraiture that you have, the first run, you don't need it for that, do you? Yes, you need it. Oh, for do that you thing. need it for both? Yes. Okay. So it's, you would have to go buy that. Yes. For gotcha. my workflow system, the Image Nomics portraiture is mm -hmm. the only thing extra okay. besides Photoshop that you have right. to have. Okay. That's the only thing extra. There's no other purchasing and all that stuff. It's I tried gotcha. to make it as clean and as simple as possible, mm -hmm. and you, but there was no way around portraiture. Okay. Go ahead, Bob. Do you uh, ever use in in any process, or you find yourself finding any way to like, use the Gaussian blur to do the softening on the skin, or no? You always use portraiture. I always use portraiture. However, there was a time when I did that Gaussian blur trick, uh -huh. and in that action pack, 
that is part of the, the download for buying the course, it has that action. And I called it the move. It was what I named it. And where it does that blur, Gaussian blur trick. And the reason, the reason it's called the move, if you must know, is because I was watching an episode of Seinfeld and, and they made a comment about the move. Oh, that's the move. Oh, that's my move. And it was on and on and on. And I'm like, the move? I'm like, that's what I'm doing right here. This is my move. And so I just called it the move. And so ever since then, you know, people get a big kick out of the fact that I had an action called the move. So that's the whole story. But it uses that Gaussian blur check technique mm -hmm. prior to the existence of portraiture. That does an OK job, uh, OK? It's not as good as portraiture. And if it was as good as portraiture, I wouldn't even be telling you about portraiture. I'm serious. Because, you know, why make you go buy something else? You know, that's what I'm, I'm not, I'm trying, I wanted it to be that, as simple as possible. But it just works yeah, too good. I, I just got portraiture a couple months ago, and uh, you, you're going, I don't know if you're going today over that, like uh, showing at least some settings, because I know that people, sometimes they overdo that. I, say, I, I well, saw some. I did, I just showed you that you can fade it back. If you, if they overdo it after you run it. But the importature, like a, it comes presetting something specific. Uh -huh. Do you tweak somehow nope. that you like? Oh, nope. I like more do this way here. Nope. I just showed you what I do. All I do is click the dot, click my eyedropper underneath the eye. And that's, that's all it. I ever Whatever do. presetting that they had there, you're yep. okay with that? Yep, that's all I ever do. Okay. Just saw me do it. Okay, so that was high key. I'm going to get the scratch off. Okay. Hey, Kirk, I just want to give a shout out to Nancy23 who says, OMG, I just did the level thing on my favorite picture of my daughter. Amazing. I know. <laughs> I, thank, thank Nancy. Nancy. Thank, thank to, Nancy23. Thank, thank Nancy for, for bringing that up because I meant to say that. I would like for you to go do it now. Go find an image that you're proud of. No way it's going to make this image better. Do it. And you're gonna, you, after you pick your, draw, your jaw and your tongue off of your keyboard and put it back in your mouth and go, oh, wow, you're going to feel just like Nancy. Absolutely. That's how, I, that's how I felt first time I saw it. Yes, indeed. OK. Uh, we'll save that one. Why not? OK. So that was a bunch of things. I wanted to make sure, I want to make sure I'm t covering all the things we wanted to talk about today. Um, I talked about how I use actions and how I use Photoshop and all that good stuff. The one thing we have not done just yet is build an action. Before we build it, though, I wanted to show you this technique to make an album like this. This is my album. This is an album. And in this album, you know, you, it does things like this. Customers just love this. They love, 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 love this kind of an album. But of course, it looks, if it looks super complicated to lay an album like this out, it can be. But I'm going to try to make it as simple as possible. Let's go over. First of all, we need to make an album page. So we're going to go File, New. And let's say we're not going to make this out. I don't know. We're going to make a 10 by 20 album uh, or a 10, 10, 10 inch by 10 inch two-sided, so it's going to be 10 inch by 20 inch. A lot of people use that size album, so just for the sake of conversation, width, 20 inches, height, 10 inches, 250 RGB white. OK, there it is. The only thing we're going to do is we're going to drop this right there at 10 inch, so we know it's left and right. And we're going to go File, Save As, and we're going to drop that into the fixed right here. I'm going to call it album. Save. OK. Close. And we're only going to make one page. But you'll see what I mean when I say you can make multiple pages. All right, so here's our album page. And to lay out our album, let's say if we, we want to have this group photo on this page, and we want to have these two pictures of her, and, or three pictures. So we're going to have this group photo, and then these three pictures of her on this page, OK? Now, the next page is going to start right here. So we've got these four, page, four images are going to go inside this page. This page is going to have this image, this image, this image, OK? And then we continue all the way through the entire set of customer stuff. 
And we lay it out like that. And we, okay, album, then the images that go in it. Go in it. Album page, then the images that go in it, and so on and so forth. Then you highlight that album page along with those images. And, you, and when you get Dr. Brown's Image Processor Pro, it's going to come with this neat thing called Dr. Brown Stackomatic. It gets loaded on, on here. And you click Dr. Brown Stackomatic, and it's going to say, Create Layers, Not Auto Align, Normal, Mask, Nope. You just click OK. And Dr. Brown takes over, opens it up, drops it in, opens it up, drops it in, opens it up, drops it in opens it up, drops it in. Now you could do that manually if you want, you know, but why do it manually when you got that little thing working for you? So notice my layers palette, I have them all laid out. So I take the, I'm gonna hide everything but the group photo, control T, control zero, shows me the edges, hold down my shift key, size that and place it about where I want it, right there on the crack, okay? Then I'm gonna take this image, and I'm gonna go control T, control zero, shift, move, and we're gonna put this one, how about we put it right there? Let's give it a little cock like that, right there, I love that. Okay, then we're gonna open up this one, control T, control zero, hold down my shift key, I'm gonna put this one, how about right there? Yes, okay, and then the last one, control T, control zero, shift, move, Give it a little tip, and we're going to put it about right there. Okay, that's pretty close. Good. All right, so there's our basic page layout. Now we've got to kind of make it pretty. We've already preset our, our, sty our um, styles. Where are they? Hello, styles. Uh, 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 FX. Here we go. So these are styles. These are all kinds of styles that you can you can get them on the internet. There's a bunch of them that come with Photoshop. You don't even realize it. You can load them up. Uh, you know, you can get styles for free all over the planet. But what a style will do is it does whatever you're seeing. So like watch when I click this one, notice it took and turned this whole image into this streaky thing. I don't want that, obviously, but what I would want all the images to have a little bit of a bevel and maybe a little bit of a shadow, like, say, that. Boom. Or maybe I want a heavy one. See what I'm getting at? So just like that, I have just like that and just that fast created page one and two. Save, then go to the next one. Quick, boom, boom, and you just kind of side, side, boom, boom, tip, tip, boom, side, side, tip, 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 and you do that ten times, you got yourself an album. Cool? Sure. All right. So I wanted to show you that, and that's how I make these albums. All right. I'm going to close that. I promised you we was making an action. So we're going to take a, something we do a lot. Let's say, you want to throw something at me, something simple, nothing complicated. All right, just for the principle of it all, we're going to open an image. We're going to turn it to the right. Okay. How's that? Sounds fine. Okay, mm -hmm. so watch. We could go File, Open. We're going to already have an image open. We already have the image open. There we go. Let's, let's do it like that. We already have the image open, but for whatever reason, we want to turn the image to the right. We could simply go Image, Rotate, 90 degrees clockwise. Okay, but how many steps did that take? You had to go Image, rotate 90 degrees clockwise. It was three clicks to get to this point, okay? Let's undo that. Go over to our actions palette, and we're gonna create a new set. The actions, think of folders. They're not folders, they're sets. There's this KV workflow set, the image Pro Pro processor pro set, the 507 proof set, on and on. And within there are all these, are now all the actions within a set. Okay, so what we're first going to do is we're going to create a new set. Click this little arrow, new set. We're going to call the set Creative Live. Ooh, they get mad when you spell it wrong. <laughs> okay, like that. So now we have a set. Notice I'm going to click the arrow right here. Nothing inside this folder. See it opening and closing? Nope, nothing in there. So now, inside of the Creative Live set, we are going to create a new action. The action is going to be rotate right. And the set 
it's inside of the creative live set. We're going to assign a function key. How about F5 right there to this? And we click record. Now, right now, it's recording. Now, everything you do at this point, it's going to record your, your sequence of events. Now, so you're going to go image, image rotate 90 degrees clockwise. It just recorded that for you. Let's say at this point, that's all you wanted to do. Go back to your action. Notice the little red dot. That's like the record button on your VCR. Now you hit stop. Let me share with you how important stop is. <laughs> Imagine you don't hit stop and the day goes and you work all the files and you retouch everything and you get to here the next morning and the next morning you realize, oh my goodness, I've been recording everything I've done and everything you've done is now recorded. You don't get to use that action for a whole year, but next year, all you'd have to do is hit play, and every day, the whole day of work is, I'm kidding, that doesn't work like that. But wouldn't it be wonderful if it would? <laughs> no, if, but it will, Jack. It will record everything you do, and it's just stuff you ain't ever gonna want. So don't forget about stop, okay? So we hit stop, but notice, here we go. We're gonna break the action apart. Here it is, there's the folder, Creative Live folder. Here's, um, yes, and then here is the action right here. It's called rotate right, okay? And then here is the first step within the action, which is rotate first document. And notice it's been assigned an F key right here, F5. So we're going to take our LO action. We're going to image. In fact, let's just get rid of this, this image. Nope, don't save. We're going to open up this image now. And we simply press F5, and it rotated it right. One step, not three steps. <clears throat> you follow the concept? Okay, I'm going to undo that, but I'm going to show you a few more things inside the actions palette right here. These check boxes, these check marks, it says, this will toggle the state of all commands in this action. It is not, it is not undoable. So I click OK. I unchecked everything in that folder. So I, if you accidentally come along here and tick, tick one of these check boxes, you are completely turning off every action in your entire folder. It could be devastating, yes, okay? Notice I have this one, which is red. That means some of the steps in this particular action have been turned off. So that's just a little warning for me that not everything is working in this set, okay? I can turn them all back on again, but I can't just con click Control Z to undo what I just did. That's what that warning was. If I just wanted to turn off one aspect of it, I can just click one checkbox. If I wanted to say, hey, Kirk, are you sure? Are you sure you want to do what you just told me to do? You can click this little box, and this little gray thing comes up. Watch what happens now when I press F5. It says, rotate canvas 90 degrees. I could say, no, 45. And I could click OK, and now it just goes 45. You see, that's how that could, could become in handy if you want to stop and put in your own command. Follow so far? So those are some of the different elements within an action to help you to make that action work. So now that you understand, so daunting is this, is this palette for people that they just never open it. They buy actions, they stick them in here, and then they, they're scared to touch anything because I just don't want to mess up my actions. Now you know what all the different elements are, okay, and how to actually physically write one. The last thing is, what if we wanted to share this creative live action with somebody? Okay, well, if I wrote another action, it would be and put it inside the Creative Live folder. I could have a, co a collection of actions within that folder. But to save an action, you can't just save an action. You have to save the entire set of actions. So you highlight Creative Live, you click the little down arrow, and you go Save Action. And then what you do, 
is it's called the Creative Live Action. And we're going to go ahead and just put that inside the Creative Live Dropbox right now so that they can add it to right there. Where are they? Bonus Actions. There. They can add this, save, to the action pack that is available for download. How's that? That's pretty great. Cool deal. That's some pretty awesome workflow. <laughs> yeah, and I like the fact that you taught people how to build the action mm -hmm. so they won't freak out. Mm -hmm. and if they do go away, I saw someone in the chat room, their um, computer just deleted all of their actions yep. today. So sorry, Fun. but you'll be able to rebuild them at least. Yep, exactly, for sure. Uh, Kirk, can you uh, just reconfirm that you use HH Lab for all your printing, uh, for printing all your albums. Is that right? Yes. There was some confusion there, and they just wanted to clarify. HH Color Lab, okay, all my cool. albums. Okay, and then one other person was asking Tool and Tweed Photo, um, wondering about using layers in Photoshop while you're actually making adjustments to the image. What yeah, do you, how do you feel about layers? I don't have a problem with layers, but every time you make a new layer, you are in fact taking away from the resources that Photoshop uses. And I'm okay with that, but I know exactly what I'm doing. I know exactly where I'm going. If I need to undo something, I undo it via the history palette. So I don't use layers. I shouldn't say I don't use layers. I rarely use layers, okay? Um, so, but if I understand why people do layers, a lot of Photoshop instructors teach you want to do layers because you, you might want to undo something. My thought process is learn to do it, do it the right way, and you never have to undo anything. So don't use a layer. Don't eat up Photoshop resources. Do it the right way the first do time. Do it the right way the first time. I like it. I don't like live it in the world of mites. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. All right, it is time for our 15 minute break. Kirk, you have already shared so much knowledge with us. Like, you really went like fast during the segment. There was a lot of information. So, what do you have for us when we come back? Okay, when we come back, I, am, I have a sequence of kind of Photoshop speed tricks that I'm going to do for you guys on some different images, not the ones we shot yesterday, some images. A few of the things I'm going to do is going to kind of reiterate what we've already done. I'm actually, I think, yeah, I'll, I would use at least one of those actions that's in that action pack that we talked about. Kind of show you, you know, what they do and stuff like that. I'm going to do that. And uh, we'll review. We'll handle any more questions. It appears I have but one thing left on the board. Only one. All the way lonely last one liquefy, which I've kind of saved for last as my last little speed trip trick to show you. All right, so Photoshop action on speed coming up. <laughs> it will be fun. <laughs> All right, so quotes from the internet for you. People are already sharing wonderful thank yous to you on Google+. Plus. So when you go home later tonight, you have to read all of the good okay. that people are sharing. But just a few I like grabbed out of there. Uh, Tristan says that sponge trick was worth all the money all by itself. <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> and David Alexander said, seriously, Kirk, thanks a ton for all the information you have shared over the past few days. I'm looking forward to putting these new ideas to work in my area and to grow as a photographer, AKA dude of honor in the chat rooms. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so cool. And Derek Jones says, thanks Kirk, your workflow and personality is awesome. Thank you so much for sharing and giving up and coming photographers hope. Good. That's a great one. Thanks guys. At Creative Live, we are thrilled to give you free online access to some of the world's best instructors and artists. It's our job, it's our community, and you make it possible, and we thank you for that. When you purchase the course, this is what you get. You get anytime access to the course. This specific course, you know, and what does that mean? We say anytime access. What that means is you can stream the course anytime you'd like, all three days. You can also download it, so to your computer or your mobile device. You can take Kirk to the gym, keep you going. Um, and in this specific, workshop. We're also offering a zip file of Kirk's Photoshop actions. Um, Kirk, can you talk a little bit about some of the actions that are in this course? Um, a couple, one of them, there's a grainy, fuzzy one that okay. just kind of a, it's kind of a neat effect. It's something you might do to one image. It's something that I don't want you to abuse. Uh, the one I use right off the top of my head the most is, I think it's called Greenish. It's in there, and what it does is it, there is this weirdish thing that happens underneath trees. It's actually not green, but to your eye it looks green. It's actually yellow that's happening, but that's 
complex. But anyway, short story long, you press it and it takes that green out. And I, I've tried all sorts of crazy things to get it out in the raw conversion and I just can't seem to get it out. So that action <whistles> takes that right out. Um, there is a softening action, the old the move that I used to use for many, many, many years. I don't use it anymore, but there may be people who get it like it, so it's still in there. Um, there's a, a warm tone action in there. I think there's a snap action, add that snap to your images, and, and that's a couple of them off the top of my head. Great, right thank on. you so much. So along with this curse, course purchase, you get the zip file of actions, um, also a 40 minute walkthrough video of senior portrait retouching, and most importantly, you get a rewind button, um, especially for <laughs> segments like this. <laughs> Kirk had mentioned that you know we don't have a rewind button. Well, we don't in the free broadcast, but our editors do an awesome job of packaging the class with a rewind button. <laughs> and so that rewind button is $99 during the live stream. You can purchase it by clicking on the buy button beneath your screen. The price will go up. Um, after the live class uh, to $149. So ask yourself what a rewind button costs today. <laughs> All right, have a great 15 minute break and we will see you back in 15. And welcome back, everybody. We are in the final segment of Senior Photography with Kirk Volklain. <laughs> Yay, I said it right this time. I did. Sweet. OK, so before I hand it over to Kirk, I'm going to say a moment of thanks, because there are so many people that made this workshop possible. And I just want to first and foremost thank the entire Creative Live audience. And that means you guys out there. You guys are the reason we exist. You guys keep us going. The community and the wealth of knowledge around the entire world is absolutely astounding and we are so proud to be a part of your lives and are happy to bring you amazing education and bringing the bar raised and raising it up for everyone around the world so thank you for being a part of it all right next up I want to thank the creative live crew if any of you guys look at you know any of the behind the scenes pictures here at creative live the videos you know the overhead cams while we are on break you see there are a ton of operating pieces and people moving all of those pieces and we just have a phenomenal team of people behind the scenes just making all of this happen. And especially want to thank our uh, content producer, Ryan. This is his first uh, producing job here at Creative Live. Welcome. You guys, you did a fantastic job. And of course, Heather, our line producer, was awesome as well. You guys have just been an awesome team to work with this class. So thank you. And next up, I want to thank our beautiful models. Mm -hmm. You, we had great people great this, models. great people this time. Raven, Lexi, and Sean. And thank you so much for bringing yourselves your good energy and your beautiful faces to Creative Live. It was a pleasure to work with you. And next, of course, I want to thank Paulo, Leroy, Kim, Monica, and Russell. You guys have traveled from near Monica and far, Maryland and Kim, from Kim and Louisiana and uh, Miami, Fort Lauderdale, Fort right? Lauderdale. Fort Lauderdale. And I'm sorry, Russell, how far? Seattle. Oh, you were Seattle too. You're local boy. Okay, cool. So thank you all for just being here and you know being participants. You have held gear for Kirk. Mm -hmm. 
backdrops. You have had awesome uh, questions. Yep. Earlier, you were like fighting with each other. Who could ask your question fastest? And it was just really wonderful to see you guys all participating. And you know, you even ironed each other's shirts. So <laughs> you guys have been an especially wonderful, wonderful in-studio audience. Thank you very much. All right, and of course, of course, Kirk. Thank you so much for being here, for sharing all of your years of knowledge with everybody during this amazing broadcast. You have inspired people. They are getting out there and doing the work. So thank you so much from everybody here at Creative Live. Appreciate it. It's been fun. All right. All right. Are we going to do a high five? High Low five. 10? OK, high five. Awesome. Take it away. Okay. Give that here you. we thank go. You. So yes, I wanted to talk before we get into a few tricks just really fast about the creative lives favorite word logistics of maybe working through that work through workflow that we kind of talked about so you're at your studio let's say you like me you have a separate location from your home and and, and you really like we said we want to get home we want to get home and I don't know, you got 10 images left, and you know that American Idol's about to start. I don't know. You just, but you want to get home. No problem. Let's go. Let's get home. And if there was some sort of way I could just work these at home, sure, you could put them on a, a jump drive or whatever, and you could go home, and you could work them, and then you could bring them back to the studio. Here's a little thing that I do whenever that happens. I take what's left and I put it into a folder that's part of my Dropbox and I call it my work on folder. Mm -hmm. All right. And when they go into the Dropbox, it starts uploading off to the whole Dropbox cloud somewhere. Drive home and I don't live that far away. By the time I get home, maybe five, 10 minutes to get home. I get home, I kiss the wife, we have a little something to eat. We do, you know, a couple of things. You don't instantly get to the thing. And by the time I'm there, I open up my computer at home, and boom, there's those 10 images in the Dropbox, OK? As I work them, I have the Dropbox set as the folder that I'm looking at on the bottom, which is a part of the mini bridge, like I just showed you all in the last segment. As I work the image, and I do something to it, and I love it, and OK, it's great. Save, close. Do you want to save? Yes, As it, and it saves it off. It's being saved to that hot folder, that work on folder. Starts uploading to the Dropbox, right then and there. Work on the next one, uploading to the Dropbox. Work on the next one, uploading to the Dropbox. So when I get back to the studio the next day, there's all my worked files ready to go. I just move them right boom, back into the customer's folder. And we're just like that, we're all set. Make sense? So that might or might not save you a little bit of time or hassle so as to, you know, part of that logistics of going through the workflow. I only had 10 left, and instead of just go ahead and staying at the studio doing it, go home. They're there. Work them. Go back to the studio. Done. So, I don't know, just a thought. Maybe it'll help somebody out there. Okay, next, I wanted to do some tricks. And a couple of these tricks, we kind of did, but we're going to do them again just as part of a review. So the first one I want to do is a levels trick. Showed you this trick. And yes, if you haven't tried it, I highly recommend, like I said earlier, take an image that you're really proud of and do this to it. Control or Command L opens up levels. Hold down your Alt key. Everything is going to go white. When you barely see the eyes, stop, back off. When you come over to the right side slider, everything goes black. When you see red in the skin, stop, back off, and there you go. A perfect levels adjustment. Before, after, before, after. Click OK, and just like that, done. So it's a little bit like contrast? It adds contrast. That's what I'm doing. I'm adding contrast. But the thing with levels and curves and all these things that adjust exposure, in various ways, to, what you're doing is you're throwing away pixels to make this happen. You're trashing the image. Every time you do something like this, you're trashing your image. Well, the most important part of the image is right here, right there. 
because that's where everybody's got their attention, focused right there on the face. So by holding down that Alt key, it gives you a graphical display of exactly which pixel is being trashed. Make sense? Helpful? So there you go. We're not going to save that, but it just kind of gives you, you know, a review on that. And I really want you to go try it. If, if you try nothing else, try that. I showed you this a little bit in part of the raw conversion. But this is, this is one of those Denny backgrounds that I just absolutely love. I love it. I think it's called Purple Rain or something like that. And I purposely love it because look at all the blue. See the blue? And that looks pretty good. This image looks pretty nice. It kind of goes nice little blues with the color in her dress. But I had promised this girl when I took the picture that don't worry about all that blue, bae. That it's going to be more like the color of your dress. So to do that, watch this. Control U opens up hue saturation. Now, inside hue saturation, this master is all these channels combined. Well, I just want to start playing with blue. Now, just to show you that if you accidentally choose red, it's not that big of a deal. Because watch, watch this channel, red, when I come over here and click on blue. It changed to blue. It knows. So all you have to do is get it off of master. Because if it's on master and you click right here, it just nothing happens. You have to change it off of master. You can literally click anything. And then you want to go over here and make sure you click on the area you want to change. So I want to change this blue. Now, I want you to take note of this bottom line. Where I clicked right here, it's saying this top line, this is where you are. The bottom line is where you will become. Well, right now, it's all exact. See how they, all the colors line up? OK, inside of this area, this darker gray area, we're going to affect pixel by pixel across the board. So every color from here to here is going to be one on one changed. Well, I know from experience there is no blue in skin. Skin, no matter what, what race you are, is somewhere in this range, red and yellow. So we want to stay away from red and yellow. But we can grow that gray area by clicking in the light gray area. And when we get real close to red, we stop. In this lighter gray area, this is the gradual fading transition of pixels being affected till we get right here, and now none of these pixels are being affected. So we're going to grow this area over here and extend it on this side. When we get right up against the yellow, we're going to stop. So none of these red and yellow pixels are going to be affected, but all of these pixels, all these blues and greens and all those are going to be affected. Now watch what happens when we slide the hue slider. Look what happens to our background. Notice her skin. Notice what's happening to her skin. Her skin isn't doing anything. Staying the same. So you can buy one blue background and with this trick have how many backgrounds? Unlimited, Unlimited backgrounds. You want a lighter blue? How about a green? How about a yellowish? How about a red? Oh, stop. As far as we can go, can't get any more. Hurry to the other side. How about a reddish background? How about, oh, I'm starting to dig that. That's kind of close to the color of her dress. OK, add a little in here, a little lightness, change it just a little bit, get it close to the dress. How about that? But notice the big deal is I did not do anything to the skin. It's a very fast, fast, fast way to change a background without messing with the skin. It also works on green, because there's no green in the skin. OK? Follow, click OK. And just like that, we went from this to this. Why isn't it affecting the dress? Well, the dress is, in this case, watch, Control U. The, the dress is in this. Well, so let's find out where the dress is. The dress is in this range right here. And when I was doing it, I know it's in that range. So in here is where I sort of stop, okay. right at the edge of the dress. Yeah, call that experience. That's from me doing it so much. Yeah. OK? 
So if I would have, if I would have went a little bit further, now you look what's happening to the dress. See what I'm getting at? Yeah. That, that's kind of cool. Yeah, that's kind of wicked. And so, yeah. Um, a few weeks ago, it was it, I think somewhere on my Facebook page, um, not the personal page, but the Kirk Boakling photography page, I had posted a picture of a girl, and, and she had paint dripping off of her face. It's going to come up here in a few minutes. Yes, it will come up here in a few minutes and, and towards the end. Anyway, it was a pink, a pink colored paint dripping off her face. And uh, I thought, wow, that's really neat. But I wonder if I could shift it. And I did this trick with the pink and turned it blue and all kinds of crazy colors. And, and she even said that. I was like, I, didn't, I don't remember doing that color paint. <laughs> I'm like, no, it's a computer thing, you know? Yeah. And so, yeah, just like Paulo said, hey, that dress looked kind of neat green, you know? Why not? You could do that, too, if you have that kind of customer. So that, that, to me, is a really, really neat trick. That trick can really save you some some craziness and and more importantly what, what is it about senior portraits if, if you ain't learned anything you know what is it what do they want one word what would it be yeah, different. Different. different 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 so senior a comes in you do them on the blue background senior b comes in you go mm, shift it green background senior c comes in mm, shift it reddish background and you could have no two, you, if you really wanted to get radical, no two seniors are ever photographed on the same background. <laughs> wow. What kind of PR would that get you? You'd have to have one, one heck of a good brain to keep track of all that. But theoretically, you could make that kind of a statement and shift those colors of the background all over the place. Kind of cool? Very okay, nice. moving on. Here's one of those actions I just told you about that is in, here is it, let me go find it, green greenish, 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 remove green outside. I have it set to the F1 key, all right? So watch, I'm going to press F1, and it ran. Did you see what just happened? I'm going to press it twice to really make a point, and then I'm going to go before and after. Before yeah, I see it. and after. Before. See the green? It's kind of, it looks green. It's actually not green. It's yellow, and it's caused from the, the light filtering through green trees. And I have, that's, that's, I have this huge canopy. It's a 300-year-old oak tree in my backyard. Um, not that you need to know that, but it's insured against loss of income because I make so much money because of the fact that this tree creates this nice overhang and shade. But anyway, it, it hangs out over, but a lot of light filters through that, goes through the green trees, creates this greenish effect. Here, I'll do it again. Watch, F1, F1. I'll do it twice. See how it takes that away? For the wedding shooters out there, if you do any weddings whatsoever and you sort of blend the way I do, I blend the light coming off of my flash with the existing light that's in the room. You get this weird yellow greenish effect oh, a lot. That single action for the wedding world to get rid of that yellowy weirdness is worth the price of admission. It really is that neat. And, and if you are just like, you know what, Kirk? Thank you very much, but I wish you would just show me how to make it because I'm going to make my own. You got it. I'll show you. Watch. It's quite simple. Look, all I did was create a hue and saturation layer, and I pulled out, I, well, those are all the numbers. I pulled out 15% of the yellow. Watch. I'll just do it. I'll, I'll undo it. Image. I just control you. I create. I showed y'all how to make an action. Mm -hmm. And so now the action's recording right now. Okay. Open up hue and saturation. Change the master channel to yellow. Take the saturation down 15%. There you go. Before, after. Before, after okay and that's it that's all the action does i mean is that retarded simple or what very simple. very simple but if you just don't want to make the action it is one of the actions in that action palette every time you click it it takes 15 and 30 then 15 15 15 fi well it took 15 off and then in this time it's going to take 15 off the next one not 30 not 30 because no, and not altogether 30, because it's 15% of what you've taken now. Uh, so it's not quite 30. Gotcha. See what I mean? So uh -huh. 
Okay. Make sense? But it's stacking. 15, 15, 15, 15. Here, one last time. Here we go. F1, F1. Okay. I'll I do it, only doing it twice, because it on the screen, it's more, it's more visible doing it twice. I mostly only, only need it once. Okay. On the print. But on the screen, the screen is a little contrasty. It looks, it makes the point better yes, showing it to you twice. Cool? Yes. Very cool. And that, that saves a few people a little bit of time, a little bit of fun. Um, let me see if there is, before I move off of this, one, one, let me see if there was another action. Seems like there was this one action. Let's see. Infrared. Yeah, this was one of them that was, let's see if, how it does. I haven't run this one in a while. This one's also in there. Works best with a lot of green, I know. Let's see, yeah, there you go. This is an action that is also in that set of actions that when you buy the Creative Live thing, um, the, this segment, this, excuse me, three days, you get this action for free. And so, I don't know, it's kind of weird on her, but if it's a scene that has a lot of green, this action before and after makes it look infrared. <laughs> It isn't a perfect infrared, ain't, ain't nearly as cool as if you have your camera converted to photograph infrared. It sort of simulates what really is happening, but it's still a lot faster. It's kind of a neat effect for certain right. things. Anyway, that's in there too. I figured I'd just show you another one. There's a bunch in there, so try it out. Okay, where are we? Oh, this one. Again, I'll just sort of make the point again to show you, again, that saturation tool. And here we go, sponge tool, saturate mode, 100% on the flow. For this particular image though, because I've done this image several times, I know that if I uncheck the vibrant, it is going to give me this nice pretty orange right in there. Mm -hmm. It's also going to give me this nice pretty blue, and I have this little piece of orange right through here that I like the way it looks. Then I check the Vibrant checks box, and I go out on the edges, and then I rub down underneath, in through here, picking up a few pieces of blue, one fast pass on the blue jeans, and there. Before and after. Before, after. Wow. Before, after. And you saw how long it took. It looks, it looks like it took longer before after before after pretty pretty slick oh, yeah. and just to drive the point home one more time stay off <laughs> of the skin okay you get on the skin it really gets weird nobody wants to look like the girl looks right now cool save somebody a little bit of time i think right mm -hmm. Okay, this one also kind of part of the, the grow thing that we talked about, but a little bit more. If you have ever purchased a background, you have oftentimes had this go through your mind. Do I get the big background or do I get the little background? Do I, do I get the big background? Do I get the little? How much is the big one? How much? Little? <laughs> Outrageous. I don't know. Do I get the big? Do I, how much again? That has happened to you at one time or another. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. So you end up going. Uh, I'm gonna get the little one. Okay. Right. Take it home. Put it out. Put the subject on it. And you go. Oh man. Should have got the big one. Anybody? I know the internet world. That's happened oh, yeah. at least once. Oh, there's one, two. Okay, three. Good. Here's what you could do. Just get the little one. Then select that little background. Stay off the hair. See how I've selected the hair? Don't do that. Don't select the hair. Control T. Grow the background. Jeez, that, that is crazy. So much money. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Pretty slick. Yes? Yeah. Uh, All right. Not word. All right, let me undo that and redo that. Awesome. Undo that and redo that. Pretty slick? Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Close. Don't save. And so that's just kind of a neat thing. I, I just, you know, I love that kind of stuff. Let me open up texture. 
So the girl comes in, she says, oh, Mr. Kirk, I want to do something really cool, really different. We do this picture right here. Is there anything we can do? I saw you did pictures of my friend by this wall. Is there anything, anything that you can do to make it different than hers? But I love that wall. I just want the same thing, <laughs> but different. Yeah. Okay? I, I want the same thing, but different. different. Yeah, oh, yeah, sugar, no problem. How about this? While you're there photographing this, you look around, you see a nice little piece of concrete, a little crack in it. Take a picture of it, okay? Take that little piece of concrete, drag it over. Don't just drop it, okay? I want you to hold down your shift key and then drop it. That makes it snap right down the middle, okay? You can close that now, get rid of it. So now we have customer, and we have rocky wall, okay. one on top of the other. These up here are called blending modes. Normal, dissolve, darken, blah, 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 okay? The most common, the one that's gonna be used the most is overlay, soft light, and hard light when doing textures. All of them work. I welcome you to play with all of them, but the, you're gonna find you gravitate to overlay or soft light, or probably in this case, hard light, okay? So what it does is it allows parts of the image that's on top to blend in with the image that's on the bottom. One blends into the other, okay? Huh? Is that how you get the words? Huh? Got the words? No. no, nope, I'm gonna show you that next. Okay. So it allows that blending to, to happen. Now, of course, that, that's really neat as far as what it's doing to the background, but the problem is she has leprosy, okay? So to get rid of that effect on her, I want you to come down here to this little palette across the bottom, the square with the plus in it, and I want you to paint with your paintbrush black. Paint black, and wherever you paint with black, it's going to erase. Now, make a mistake, come way out over here. Oh, no problem, hit X, and now you notice my color swapped, and now wherever you paint with white, you're putting it back. So there is no messing up. Let me get a little glass of water here. Mm. So. Paint with black. We're going to erase all of that texture off of her. And I'm going fast and sloppy because I can. Because we're just looking for some texture. But we don't want it on her and we don't want it on her clothes. We want it to be like that. Okay? That's Watch. Amazing. Before, after. Before, after after. Neat. Pretty neat, yes? Okay, so the very next senior comes in, and that senior says, oh, I saw what you did to my friend Susie Q on that wall. It was so cool. And then my friend Jeannie Jean, she came in. It was so wonderful. Oh, it was great. You did the same thing with her, but it was different. Would you do the same thing, but different for me? Yeah, man, you could, while you're there, get another snapshot of another piece of a wall. You could, who, there's nobody on the planet that says you can't put one texture on top of another texture. So you could put multiple textures. Keep going. You could have five, six, seven textures, all one blending into the next, blending into the next. Here's a very cool, fast speed trick. If you just simply grab this overlay that you did and drag it to the one above, it moves it. But if you want to copy it, Hold down your Alt key, then move it. Now it just, whoop, erased off of her. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Because it, it, it made a copy of that overlay. So now it erased off of both of them. So we have this texture doing this, and we now have this texture doing that, and, and the list of things that you can do goes on and on and on. Now the words that you talked about, the way you do that, you take your paintbrush, and there are tons of these brushes out on the internet world. Tons and tons and tons of tons and tons of all kinds of crazy wiggly lines and brushes. Um, this is one of them that I really like. Where is it? Uh, about uh, we use this one, and we take about that big, and we make a new layer, 
paint with black. We don't stroke it. We just touch it, touch it, touch it, touch it. Okay, but it's on her, so we then take our erase tool, but we have a new layer. Remember that last segment I said I don't make layers? Here's where I make layers. So they're technically brushes, not... They're just brushes. Okay. Yep. It's just a brush. So this is without the words, that's with the words. Wow. Flatten it down and done. Fun? Yes. So if you wouldn't have flattened <laughs> it and you did the words, you could have pulled the little thing up again? Yes, I could have. Okay. Yeah, cool. I sure could have. I would have taken it cool. right off of her. Can you? Can you? Uh, can I make you hate me? Don't ask me to do that again. Are you going to give that to us? <laughs> give you what? The brushes. The brushes? Sure. The brushes are on the pro form. Yes. Yes, they are. Thank you. That is. I, cool. I didn't want to say that because it makes it sound like I'm trying to sell you or something. No, that's I'm not. The... But everything I do, everything, I I don't. I don't really have stuff for sale. I just put it all in the pro form. I, I don't know people in home, but like for me, at least when I see a, a, a teacher like you, I say, I say, you know what? Why I have to go Google and find? And, and you already gave it to us. So it's, I try. It's I try really to keep it all cool. in one place. Thank you very much. OK, so how about this crazy radical idea? Crazy radical idea. I want to do a double exposure. Remember double exposures? How do you do a double exposure in digital? Now, there are some cameras out there that have a double exposure button in case you're going, wait, 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 I have an XYZ camera and I have a double exposure button. I'm, I'm, I'm great with that, okay? But the Canon 1DX does not have a double exposure button, not that I know of. As soon as I said that, I thought, uh-oh, somebody's finding it. I can hear them saying, I have one. You have to go to custom function number 925. <laughs> okay, well, not, I haven't found it yet. How about that? But it can be done easily, the, easily in Photoshop using those blending modes, all right? And just to show you what I'm talking about, there are some scenarios where I'm going to show you how this can become very practical. So you photograph a high school senior in this pose, then she goes change clothes, and now you have her in that pose, in that outfit. By the way, that's my daughter. <laughs> okay? And you want to have this image sitting right here on the side of her. Now some people, what, you, what they will do is they will then take their little you know, lasso tool and they will you know, lasso, oh, to draw the lasso, and, and draw the lasso all around. And, ah, I'm too bored with that. And so now we've lassoed our, our subject. Then they copy it, and they come over here, and then they paste it, and they clean up on the edges. And somebody out there, I know, somebody out there says, yeah, I did that yesterday. It was so fun. OK? Well, what if, what if, crazy, crazy me, what if we took this image, dragged it over to this image, hold down your shift key, let go, boop, it drops one on top the other. Close that down. All right, so now I have girl on the left, girl on the right, girl on the left, girl on the right. Now, there are some people at this point, that I love it when they go, uh, Kirk, I know what to do, I know what to do. Here's what, I, here's, here's what you do. You do that layer mask thing that you just said, and you draw layer mask, and then you take the paintbrush, and you take the paintbrush in the black, and you paint with black, and when you do, you erase the girl through, ha, 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 I knew what to do, and then you have one girl next to the other girl, right? That's one way to do it. And like, like I said earlier, there's literally you know, hundreds of different ways to do things in Photoshop. How about this crazy radical idea? What if, what if we take and we were somehow able to tell the top image to disregard white and allow the image underneath to come through? So take the top image, change it from normal to darken. Whoa. Done. Wow. Go ahead. I know y'all want to say it. You want to say it so bad. That's do, amazing. Do that. Do, do that. That's cool. do that again. again. Do that again. I love this. I love doing this one again because it's fast. Okay? Here's the image on top, the image on the bottom, top, bottom, top, bottom. Okay? And all they do is change it from normal to darken. Done. That's cool. Go ahead. Wow. The next question the internet's asking is what if it's a black background? I'm glad you asked. <laughs> okay, so let's take the top image, let's put it back to where it was. Top image, and already I can feel them going, wait, wait, I know. 
control I, control I. So now we have a black background. I know it's a negative, but it's the fast way to make a black background. All right. So take the top image, change it from normal to. This was the opposite of darken. Yeah, done. Cool. Cool? That's awesome. <laughs> so, all right. That was almost fun. Okay. <laughs> it was almost pretty close. It was like 98%. Darken. Yeah. <laughs> so there is just one thing for the real techie, techie folks out there who go, yeah, right. But what happens when she touches? Uh-oh, look what's happening to her hair in the arm right there. So you have to decide which, which girl you want in the front and which girl you want in the back. All right. And then what you can do is at this point you just layer mask one. I'm, I'm going to do this sloppy so you can just kind of see it. So you can layer mask that arm, just this part of the arm, so that this arm is in the front and she's in the back. And I have to get her in real tight and go real nice and clean up against the edges. But there you go. That's how you could do. And that, this I'm doing a sloppy job, but there you go. See what I'm getting at? So you wouldn't have to layer mask the whole thing, but just the one little piece to make one look like it's sitting in front of the other. That's cool. Got to be fun? Got to be. Mm -hmm. Somebody's having fun, right? Okay. Here's, here's something you never, ever do. Never trust me with Photoshop because I will <laughs> mess you up, all right? There we go. Do not trust me with Photoshop. <laughs> Show you how badly I can mess you up. I can really mess you up. Oh, okay. that's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they wish they had rewind now, don't they? <laughs> I wish I had rewind. Was that that guy I know? Yeah, that's him. Okay. <laughs> that just happened. Did that really just happen? Can y'all hear Ryan in the next room going, Kirk? <laughs> Kirk, we have a really just super quick question okay, about um, the, re the reflective perfect surface. <laughs> to change, not to change the subject. Mm -hmm. um, the reflective, what did you use to get that reflective? Uh, There's all kinds of ways to do that. But in this particular case, where is it? Come back up. In this particular case, you go to Lowe's or Home Depot, mm -hmm. and there's a bathroom board that you can purchase. You know the bathroom material that has the little squares? Yeah. You know, and you put it up in, in your shower, and then, you know, you caulk the corners, oh, and yeah. it has squares, and it's shiny. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, they also sell one that is straight. It has no squares. Oh, it's cool. just shiny. Go buy that. It comes in a sheet of four by eight. Okay, and you put that on top of your white paper, and you have your subject stand on it, and it gives that neat little reflection. If you get your high key perfect behind the subject, and I do not hardly ever get my high key perfect, but right about here is where it ends. Mm, okay. And if you get it absolute perfect, because it's the way it goes away from you, it don't show up. But if it does show up, it's just a pretty quick swipe of the uh, dodge tool to make it disappear. And that's it. Now, that is the way you do it in the camera mm -hmm. to get that reflection. There is a way to do it in Photoshop, too. Okay? Okay. So let's, let's say, let's all pretend for, for just a half a moment that this reflection is not there. Okay? The reflection is not there. You could dupe this layer, control T. Well, we're going to blend it through. Well, we're not going to blend it through. We're just going to erase everything from below the feet on that layer. Delete, OK? Then we're going to control T, and we're going to reverse her like that. Did y'all see that? I went from here, pulled it straight down, and then flipped to the other side, OK? So apply. So now I have the feet underneath the feet. I then go to filter, blur, motion blur. And I want to blur straight up and down. And I want to blur at about, oh, I don't know. Let's see in this case, maybe 58, yeah, 58 pixels. And there. And now if it's too bright, you go, mm, I wish it was just a little bit darker. No problem. Take that opacity, opacity, however you want to say it, down, maybe 50% before, after. See what I mean? Yeah. And boom, just like that. 
That was another way that you can make that reflection. And it's, I do that a lot with the shoes. There was a shot a few days. Was that yesterday or the day before? It must have been the day before. The first day, there was a whole line of shoes, you know. And uh, the shoes, it does sort of good with that board, but I like it to be a little more vibrant. And so I will do this little trick that you just saw and asked about and with the shoes. I'll flip them, drag them, give them a little blur, and then lighten them up a little bit. And it makes that neat little reflection. Awesome. Cool? Good trick. Thanks, Kirk. Mm -hmm. All right, let's see. Where are we at? We are at here. Questions before I move on? I think everybody's really, you're answering everyone's questions as, as you go. As I go. Yep. I figured, I figured that would yep, happen. You're on it. Yeah, good. So uh, this, this is a true story. <clears throat> this girl comes to the studio and she says, Mr. Kirk, I want you to take a picture of me the way you did my friend. She was standing in the middle of the street with her hands all in her hair like this. And uh, could you take a picture of me like that? And I said, oh, in my brain. I didn't say this to her, of course, no way. But I said, oh, God, you, you just, it's a different, you have a different body shape. And, I, and she was so demanding about doing it. I said, OK, let's do it. So we did it. Do you think she saw what you see on the screen here? No. 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 This is what she saw. Mm -hmm. nice. This is what, this was reality. This is fantasy. Wow. Reality, and this is fantasy. Okay? So how do you do that? I'm glad you asked. Liquify. Very cool trick. Shift, command, X. Opens up a whole new dialog box. And this is liquify box. And you, there's all sorts of things in here. You could probably, we could probably spend an hour, at least an hour, playing in Liquify, talking about all the different things. But if you've ever opened up Liquify and said to yourself, mm, let me do something in Liquify, most probably the, you opened it up and that's about default right there. And you just opened it up and you said, let, let me do something. Oh, uh, oh, 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 uh, oh, ah, uh, e, ah, uh, oh, uh, mm. I don't like liquefy. Okay, let me put that back. Now, this is the deep, well, that's 50, not 51. 50, that's the default setting. It comes in at brush density 100, brush pressure 50. And what happens when you do stuff, it happens really, really fast. See how fast things are happening? Put it back. I want you to change, this is probably the thing I get emails about the most, because it's like, what are those settings? You don't have liquify, get your pen ready, get it ready, here we go. Change brush density to zero, okay? Change brush pressure to 15. Okay, here's your only rewind. Change brush density to zero, change brush pressure to 15. Now, I'm going to now do the exact same thing I just did just two seconds ago. Watch. Do you see how much slower things happened now? So now you have a lot more control, and that's the real trick here. Get everything in Liquify to slow way down, and you can do it just a little bit at a time. Very subtle, okay? The, in this particular girl's case, what I did was it's one, two, three, four, five down. This is the push left tool, I believe is what it's called. And whenever you go up, everything goes to the left. And when you go down, everything goes to the right. Do that again. I'm glad you asked. Everything goes up. It goes to the left, down goes to the right. Okay? Yeah. Before and after, before, after, before, after. Or this is what she saw, this with reality. Cool? Mm -hmm. True story. Her mom came in, looked at the pictures. She's looking at them, and she's like, girl, you look good. <laughs> and um, I didn't say anything. Not a word. I mean, because, again, it's not my job. My job is to make them look the way they think they look. I know I can hear, hear y'all chat thing lighting up right now saying, doesn't anybody ever say anything? Mm -hmm. No. 
Because you, you, everyone out there in U5, have the luxury of the before and the after. They only have the after. Okay? And, and by only having the after, you create the fantasy, the illusion, the way people see themselves in their mind. Cool? Yes. All right. Does it work with boys? I'm glad you asked. <laughs> yes. So this senior boy comes to me. He was the equipment manager at school. His drawers said, it's kind of funny. Okay. <laughs> he had one of these. That's really weird. Okay, anyway, so he's the equipment manager. Is this what he really looked like? What do you think? <laughs> no, this is what he really looked like. Notice his shoulders. Dang. Look at oh his, look at his thing, what is that underneath your arms? Traps. Yeah, them things. Look at his little love handles, as skinny as he is, he's still got some love handles. See that? Light, between, light hanging uh, on the background between his legs, see that? Uh huh. Fixed all that stuff right up, okay? Now, here's what you have to understand with all seniors. If you think seniors in general are insecure, the senior boys are absolutely, to me, the worst, okay? Just the worst. So you gotta be very cautious with this. Do not say, oh, I'm gonna liquefy, and that word does not get spoken, all right? What you do, if they say anything, you can say, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do something in the computer. Don't worry about it. You know, just call it that, all right? So you got to be real cautious with that. The other thing that you got to be real, real cautious with is, is you got to help, help promote the fantasy of it all, okay? So senior boy comes in and says, I want to do something. You know, I'm the equipment manager. I want to do something with my shirt off. Okay, did you know that it's been statistically proven that if you warm up your muscles, they actually get bigger. Mm -hmm. He will be like, huh. You know, I've, I've heard that, that, that that's the case. So what are, you, what are you suggesting? And he'll say, and I'll say, I'll say, well, how about maybe some push-ups and sit-ups? You know, warm up them muscles. Well, that dude will flop like a fish onto the ground and start with the... <laughs> <laughs> okay? Dang. And so then you just do a little fancy liquefy and you add to the illusion of it all. So, true story, not this guy, but a, a, a guy, good looking guy, came into the studio, wanted to do the whole bow tie thing. You know, I just, no shirt, man, with my bow tie. And he was ripped. You know, when you start out ripped, you don't have to do a whole lot of liquefy, okay? And, but you can do some cool things with highlight and shadow and make people look really ripped. And so that's what I did. I did the, my liquefy to the guy. I, I, I did some highlight and shadow. And, but before we did any of that, I said to him, you know, you know, you could warm up your muscles. And he was, <laughs> now he must have did 100, okay? So here comes the girlfriend. When she gets the proof book, she's flipping through the proof book, flipping through the proof book, flipping through the proof book. And she's like, huh. She gets to the picture with the no shirt. Huh. She looks at him, looks at the book, looks at him, looks at the book, looks at him, looks at the book, looks at me. <laughs> looks at the book, looks at me, looks at the book, looks at him, <laughs> looks at the book, then looks back at me and says, uh, did you like, did you like do something in the computer to his muscles or something? And he goes, no, no, no. It's been statistically proven that if you warm up your muscles, they get bigger. Uh, and so she goes, oh, okay. So I'm like, okay. So are they listening? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. They're listening. They are listening. So. There you go. So that's just another thing. Again, that just kind of goes to the fact that it's a fantasy. What we do is a fantasy. Okay? So there you go. That is liquefy. Guess what we get to do now? What? We get to scratch off. 
liquefy. I know. Are you zoomed in here? Right here. Oh, well, man. This is my, I feel like I need to dot it across. Yeah. Make a big <laughs> deal here. Right? That, because that is number 38. I just counted. There was 38 things. That's amazing. 38 things that we were going to do. That was the last one. I think, I think at the very least, we need like the wave or something. Yeah. We do, yeah. Don't hit the camera. Yeah. Ready, wave. Ready? One star Apollo. Ready, wave. Oh. Oh. All right. There we go. Yeah. Cool. Double wave. Double wave. That was impressive. I think but, that was the first wave I created. Uh, <laughs> kind of Whoa, wait, there's across the internet, and here it comes again. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. So I, you know, I know y'all would said it the first day, two, three, four, five times. There's no way yeah. Kurt's getting through this whole thing. No way. Yep, guess what? I think I did it. I did it. I absolutely did it. So um, just as a bit of a review. Unless you want me to uh, handle some questions. You said I've been handling them as I've been going. Um, we're all good. Okay, yeah. So just as a bit of a review. So workflow is the thing that is going to get you home. This was the girl I was just telling you about with the paint. Mm -hmm. Remember I said when we changed the color of it? So yeah, there we go. That was just kind of fun stuff. Anyway, workflow is the thing that gets you home. Gets you home. Why is workflow so important? Well, like I said, the first day, what do we do? We getting people in the studio. The second day, we are making awesome images. We have all these fantastic images. We are using every skill set we've got, every piece of fantastic equipment that we can possibly buy without going into major debt. And now what do we have to do? We have to make it look the most awesome it can. But we got to do that fast as we can and get home. Uh, your homework assignment was to take those sticky notes. Those sticky notes make you a detailed explanation. Detailed all the way across the board. Your entire workflow. After you get it all laid out, lay it out everywhere, someplace that you can look at it and make sure you see it every day. And I want you to do it on the internet too. Then start trying to get those notes off taking them off one at a time. Eventually you get to the point where you can't take other things off and that's okay, but get as many of those things off. Every time you pull a sticky note off, you're speeding up that workflow, speeding it up and getting home that much faster. <clears throat> I talked about bridge, why I use bridge, how I use bridge, all the different aspects of bridge. We talked about Adobe Camera Raw in that the fact that both bridge and Adobe Camera Raw uh, excuse me, both Bridge and Lightroom use Adobe Camera Raw. It is the product, it is the thing that Adobe uses to make the conversion and all the different aspects of how it works. And then we played in Photoshop and I showed you some, some of my little tricks and some of the things that I do in Photoshop and how I have it laid out and all that kind of stuff. We played in some actions. We made an action. It was a simple action, but I think it, it's the first step, the first step to get you going now. You can just start maybe a little something a little bit more complex. Next time you catch yourself doing something over and over and over again, you're going to say, hey, I know how to make an action. I'm going to make an action. Make yourself an action. And then we did some speed <coughs> tricks. We just did that to help speed up your workflow along the way. And that is how we did it. That is what it took to get us to this point. And so here we are. We did it. And Three now, days worth. That was incredible. I kind of want something to pop out of the lockers now. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. OK, no. <laughs> I don't know. I looked all over for a stuffed nutria. Oh, man, I thought she was going to like have somebody in there that I didn't know about or something. I, I was, know. I was kind of wishing we had planted the VA in there. <laughs> <laughs> OK, that would have really freaked me out. <laughs> <laughs> it's like cheering. Go, Kirk. <laughs> Yes. So that's fun. <laughs> so how are you feeling after three days, Kirk? I'm, I'm ready to go. Maybe two more days? No. Two more? <laughs> All right. Stay tuned. That's an extra bonus bonus. There you go. <laughs> Hey, Kirk, one question from the internet that Good. I've kind of been saving for you today oh, because it just seems like the right moment, I guess. It's from Moondog, and um, it's kind of directed towards the whole senior process because so many people, you know, you photograph and you get inspired and you like, get out there and you shoot and shoot and shoot, and then all of a sudden after a month or two, you're like, I don't have any fresh ideas. Where do I, where do I get my energy from? Where do I get my creativity and your inspiration? Where do you find your inspiration every day to keep going and to keep giving that to other people? Yeah. Where does that come from? It, it's it's multi-layered. 
Uh, one thing, I did it coming into Seattle, I'm walking through the airport, and I'm photographing in my mind is all what I was doing. Somebody walks by, and I looked, and I was like, okay, what would it take? How would I, how would I fix that? How do I adjust? What, how would I pose that person? And I'm, I take pictures a lot, but in my mind it is what I do. And so um, I, I will say that I have, if, if there is a talent, people say, oh, you're so talented. Uh, I think it's all learnable. That's my gut feeling. But if there is a talent out there that I have, it is a cataloging system in my mind that I, I, if I see an image, it can be filed. And when I approach a scenario that is similar to that thing that I seen maybe even three, four years ago, I call it up and do it. So if there, like I said, if there's a talent, that would be it, my filing system. But all the rest of the stuff that we do, I think, is completely learnable, completely learnable. Um, another thing is like I, I will look at magazines and things like that and just, you know, I'll flip through a magazine very, very fast, sitting on the stand and I'm cataloging, I'm, I'm cataloging, I'm, I'm filing things away. Another thing that when you get to where you've been photographing seniors since you was a senior and you're 51 years old and it's 30 plus years and you've been doing it, you get to a point where you haven't seen anything new in a, in a while. But you can force yourself and challenge yourself to today, I am not doing anything that I have ever done before unless the customer requests it. So the customer says, um, hey, Kirk, you know, I want to do that thing with the truck. Okay, and then all bets are off. We're making the customer happy. Is there anything you want me to do, babe? And she said, no, I'm leaving it up to you. Well, guess what? I have forced myself you cannot do anything that you have ever done, ever. And so talk about a challenge for yourself. But when you get into that, that mode, it will absolutely, absolutely talk about, bring about some crazy creativity. Another one that I have, been do I have done is uh, sometimes I'll play a song or a song will happen on a radio, on the radio, and I'll let that song motivate me to what, what is, what, if I wanted to make an image of that song with this girl, what would I do? And it's kind of weird that it touches a different part of the brain, and so it channels that creativity. Um, I get together with photographers very often, and we'll go and do a little free photo shoot for somebody, or everybody has a particular challenge. It'll, it'll be something like, okay, go photograph a chair, you know, and things like that that we'll do. And we've been known to do that kind of challenge thing on the pro forum sometimes, you know, so that's another thing that I do. And like I said, it's so it's multi-layered, and it's all of those things. It's a bunch of little things that kind of, yeah, it keeps you going, it keeps you rolling, keeps you, keeps you clicking. Does that help? It's perfect, thank Huge. you. Cool. Oh, I'm sorry, Paulus has a question. Each of these more just questioning. <laughs> okay, I, I noticed that on your marketing and everything, now you, you, you're asking the, 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 the seniors about uh, you want to do something a little crazier, and mm -hmm. uh, you came with a series of this painting and dropping. Uh, if we have time, I would like to, if you could go walk through us, like a, a, what, how you do, like a, how, what paint are you using, how, the, what is in your mind, because like a, if, imagine if I get a, a senior and say, okay, let me get my Home Depot <laughs> paint okay. and the you know, go, first, go in the hair, doesn't go, how, how are you doing? The literally? very first time I ever did paint on a senior, it was the senior who did it. She walks in, she's an artist, she's got these multiple paintings that she's done. She was impeccable. She was an impeccable painter. I'm, I bet she's doing that for a living somewhere. This, this girl was good. And she says, I want to do some stuff, you know, with some, my paints. And I'm like, well, what are you thinking? She goes, well, I'm going um, I'm to I'm go ahead and make a painting on this white shirt, and I'm going to be wearing it. And then maybe I thought I'd smear some of it on my face. And I was like, okay, well, what are you going to do with the mess? And she goes, I, I get messy when I paint all the time, so don't even worry about it. So we saved it till last. And it's not this girl, not mm -hmm. this girl, but it was, that's the very first time. This is how it happened. And so I said, okay, now's the time. She went into the, to the changing room, and it was like three minutes. She comes out with this work of art on her shirt that I was like, 
wait, that's the same white shirt? And she goes, yeah. I'm like, that's incredible, man. It was, it was awesome, awesome. So I told her uh, uh, we did a couple of images just like the paint was wet on the shirt. And the paint, the type of paint that it was, was that tube paint, the paint that comes in a tube, you know. It's a plastic thing? It, yeah, it's like artists, you know, the stuff that they, you would paint like with a, ch a, a knife or a like chisel. What is it? Oil paints? Like oil paints and all that stuff. It's acrylics is what they call it, but it's mm -hmm. the, in a tube is what she did. And she had it all squared and she had it all done. So anyway, after doing a few images of just the wet, the, not, that sounds bad. It wasn't a wet t-shirt, but it was wet with paint, okay? And it was, so it was still, it wasn't dried, you know, because she just, just did it. I said, this is what I want you to do. I want you to just take your fingers and do like that. Just get your paint on your hands. Now do this. And she was facing me. I said, now do this. I said, okay, now do this. Now do that. Now, now do this. And so she did several things like that. And then I had her put the paint brushes in her fingers and hold, hold it like this. And the image is, is really, it was really, really neat. Okay. This girl yeah. actually saw that image. Okay, this mm -hmm. is how this happened. She saw that image and thought it was neat. And he was like, can you, can you do something of me with paint? And so it was just simple artist paint in a, in a, a jar. I mean, I, get it, I got it from the, you know, the artist store. It was a liquid paint. And it was water-based, so it's not any kind of an oil thing. It's not going to, you know, it, it says on the little package, it said, you know, that it is not going to damage skin. And, you know, you got all them disclaimers on this uh -huh. stuff. And so it was just an oil, it was just a water-based paint. And it had a, you know, um, a flip top and it had a little tiny hole. And that's all I did. I just had her lay your head like this. And I went, and I made a big glob. And then when she went up, it just started to drip down. And it got all over her shirt, and it got all over the floor. And I should have showed y'all yesterday. It's still all over my camera. And I can't, I, it's all over the place. And so it is a mess. It is aggravating. And, but does it get attention? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. So. And then you use the, the high key technique yes. there? Use the high key t I, that I showed you. And I, I use the, the uh, saturation technique uh -huh. to bring up the. And then I, she actually had, she knew it was going to be pink because I told her ahead of time that I had some pink paint. So she wore this pink eye makeup. And then in Photoshop, using uh, the saturation tool, just like the brush, the, um, uh, that brush um, sponge tool in saturation mode, I just wiped it over the eyes to make the more pink. Okay. So, so I, you know, there is no. A lot of it is, is on the fly, man. I mean, there's no formula, I guess, is what I'm getting at. And, and that's okay. I think that's one of the cool things about senior portraits is that there is no formula, you know? So you have another question for me, or we're, we're wrapping it up, maybe? I think we're good. It's, yeah. been, it's been an awesome three days. It has it really been. Has. I tell you, I've had a blast with you guys. I've, I've had fun. I hope, you know, my hope <laughs> is that everybody takes this information I hope it makes you a better person, you know? I hope it makes you for a better family. Uh, my hope is that you absolutely go home better and faster at night, you know? Your wife or husband goes, I don't know, ever since you watched that Kirk Boaklane on Creative Live, you've been a new person. I hope that happens. That would just make my day. Um, I hope it makes your photography better. I hope it, that's my hope. I mean, beyond that, that's all I can do is I can show what I do. And then you got to go do it. It's your job to go forth and conquer. <laughs> <laughs> Take what I gave you and, and do the best. I mean, seriously, I mean, if you got nothing from all of this, one of the things that I always like to say, if you, if you treat people the way you want to be treated, you have customers for life. It's just that simple. Just that simple. So... I hope it was beneficial for you guys. Amazing. It's been Kirk. awesome. It was incredible. I feel like we need to be playing trumpets right now. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <we do. laughs> I feel a little second lining. It, <laughs> it, it has been an awesome, awesome day. Thank you again so much for sharing all of your wealth of knowledge to all of us. We just know how inspiring it has been to have you here. And again, thank you guys out there. 
on the internet. You guys, again, you're the reason we exist and you've been such a great, fantastic community to participate with during this class. And we hope you've just had a fantastic experience through this. And you guys in the studio audience, again, you guys are fantastic. We don't want you to go home. You're welcome back anytime. <laughs> so thank you again for being here. Why doesn't everybody just join me one more time in giving Kirk a global creative lab applause? <laughs> Thank Appreciate you. Appreciate it. All right, there are just like so many, I'm just so thankful during this last <laughs> segment. Did you, let's see, was there more thanks that you had? You had some amazing sponsors. I don't know if we mm -hmm. had a chance to talk about them earlier. <clears throat> yeah. So did you want to talk about them I now? I do, I do. Fantastic. Uh, few things I wanted Please. to also do for the studio audience. H&H <laughs> um, &H Color Lab wanted to make sure this album that you saw me make and that I use a lot, they wanted to give every one of you guys one of those albums. So that's one. Two, come get them. Three, four. I oh, mean, I've come all at once, okay? Yay! Thank you. So, y'all can your thank. This is for a moment, Kurt. Yeah. <laughs> you can thank H&H &H Color Lab for that. And for the internet world, what they wanted to do for the internet world was they wanted to give you 50% off if you want to order one. So, uh, that's in that digital swag bag that they've been talking about. This so one right here that, would that be is it. available for free to every single person watching Creative Live right now. Just go over to the course page. It is there and ready for you to download in PDF form. It's right there for you. Yep. Another thing is uh, I gave everybody here uh, access to the Pro Forum and across the internet world. I'll give all of you guys 50% off any amount of time you want to sign up for. All you have to do is use the code Creative Live. And that will take 50% off. That was another thing we did for the studio audience. Um, another thing is Animoto. You saw several of those Animoto videos that we did. And it is really cool because there's, there's Animoto and then there's Animoto Pro, which is designed for the, the pro photographer. And the Animoto Pro um, is, is like $249. They'll give the entire internet world 50% off if you go to Animoto slash Kirk. But oh. for the studio audience, what they wanted to do is give you a big shout out and thank you for coming. So everybody here gets one year of access. Whoa. To Whoa. Yeah. Right. And another of my sponsors is Sync. You know, um, they, the, the students, the students, sorry, the studio audience students, um, mentioned it several times that it's, it's one thing to, to watch it online and, and you are, it is incredible to do that, but there, it is different in a live format. When you are actually there, you get to actually go one-on-one -on -one with someone and, and stuff like that. Well, SYNC, Senior and Youth Conference that I go to every year in January is all about seniors and stuff like that, is one of those type of live conferences. And um, anyway, it is really, really a cool conference. And they are also giving a discount to the entire world if you use code CL13 from your digital swag bag. But to all of the live studio audience, they would like for all of y'all to attend Sync. So they're giving you access to Sync this year so you can attend. So that's also no charge. Fun? Very cool. So yeah, we wanted, I, want, I always wanted to, I wanted to be Oprah, you know? <laughs> Thanks to my studio audience, we're giving you a free book. Oh, like there, I just gave you a book from H&H. &H. <laughs> so there you go. I hope y'all enjoy all the freebies from all the different sponsors. So there you go. Thanks. Thank y'all so much for being here. And thanks to all the sponsors for what they did, you know. There was, a, there was a ton of them out there. They really, really, really were helpful. So yeah, there they are all across the bottom. Those were all the sponsors that helped me out on Creative Live. Few of my thanks too, you know. My wife Tammy, who's probably watching at home, she kept sending me little nice positive notes. Kirk, you're doing this. Kirk, you're doing so good. Kirk, can you keep it up? And I would check during break, you know, and I would say, see her little messages to me and, and she would say, whatever you do, don't say that, you know, because she you knows. Okay. Anyway, she knows all the things for, that I can and cannot say. So she kept me edited in there, you know, so that was pretty fun. Anyway, Creative Live for having me here for the last three days. You guys, seriously, awesome, seriously. Our chat hosts and all our camera guys and all the behind the scenes. You go upstairs, there's a whole new crew up there. And it's like, my goodness, who knew? Who knew? You know, I thought 
Oh, there's a camera and a dude on a button. No. <laughs> no, there is not a camera and a dude on a button, man. It's like, really, this is, this is the real deal. So yeah, very big thanks to you guys. You know, everyone, studio audience, y'all were awesome too. Thank you very much. And I really, really, if I must say, appreciate the wave. That was awesome. <laughs> awesome. OK? OK, if anything else, you know, think about this. You can do it. Absolutely, you can do it. That positive attitude is super important. Telling that to the internet world, too. If you don't think you can do it, you can't. You've already lost. First step, believe it can be done. If you believe it can be done, it can be done. Go do it. Right on. Go forth and conquer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Love That's amazing. That's so cool. Well, we want to give you some more goodness from the internet, as we always like to end our day. And so you've made a big impact on people's professional careers, but also their days in general. We had a viewer, PW Photo, who had a grumpuccino for breakfast. <laughs> and after spending day today with you, you turned that frown upside down. Good deal. Nice. So thanks. Jenny Lunn says, it's statistically proven if you make us laugh and keep it real, you will lead a happy, productive, prosperous life. I'm we love you. the statistics. Thanks, Kirk. Keep them coming. Yeah, exactly. Yep. And Audrey Lee says, consistently great. Had watched you on PhotoVision years ago and now on Creative Live. So consistently generous, patient, encouraging, inspiring, and clear. Thanks so very much. Thanks for watching. Right on. And one more from Karina Brown. Thank you, Kirk, for this awesome class. You need to go on the road. I couldn't imagine getting this much in such an easy to understand format anywhere else. So you're leaving with going on the road, mm -hmm. writing a book, mm -hmm. and post-it notes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so we'll keep up with you in pro form and on your websites as well. Okay, awesome. If you haven't had a chance to send Kirk your thank yous, please feel free to do so uh, by going to Google Plus, our Google Plus page, and we've set up a thank you card there. We'd love to hear from you, and I'm sure Kirk will be checking them out and reading everyone as he flies home from Seattle. Cool, awesome. Well, you guys just got to experience three days of senior photography with Kirk Volklane. And I guess my question for you right now is if you would like to have all three days of this course at your fingertips, do you have any time to watch his instructions over and over and over? Would you like that rewind button so you can watch that liquify action all over again? Would you like a pause button added to that as well? I'm adding that right now. <laughs> We're adding the pause and the, to the rewind button. Yes. Would you also like to have those videos available to stream from our website at any time? And as an added bonus, we will also give you the low res and HD version so you can have them on your computer when you're not online or if you want to take them on your go on your iPad or iPhone or any Android device. Do you want to have that 40 minute HD video from Kirk and while he like shows you an advanced technique in photoshopping a senior portrait and on top of that he's also giving you his photoshop actions. That's what you get with the creative live experience here all three days for $99. That's through the live event It's going on right now. If you look below this video by that green button that says buy you'll see a countdown timer and that is how long you have to grab this at the $99 price. After that countdown timer ends it goes up to $149. So right now my question for you is this is the time for you to choose if you are a yes or a no and the choice is yours. So with that, I leave you. Thank you so much again for joining us over the last three days. It has been an absolute joy to have you here at Creative Live. We'll see you next time, same time, same channel, and that is a wrap. <laughs>